You know you Donald don't, Trump literally don't, just called again for a, for a ban on Muslims, you right? You can't go, you can't go. Oh, for no. sakes, Donald Trump, Jesus Christ, get out of your head, you I do gotta ask you something, CTV. What's that, buddy? You know, Vosh technically never lost the title. You literally yeah, said that, dude. You, you literally I'm said that, dude. You're a creep and a cheat. Week. No, dude, you're a creep and a cheat. No, week. you're a creep and a cheat. I'm the pimp on a blimp, but I no, just you're the creep and the cheat. You're the creep and the cheat. You're blimp, you, is, dude. You you swap your own blimp with your uh with your creepiness, dude. Let's be honest. What's this deal with reality? It's got nothing to do with my personal opinion. Young people. I can't hear anything. I would like to listen to Israel is gonna end like time. Tomorrow? Wait, wait, okay. The victor is... Okay, there we are. Oh, there okay, I go. can see Dylan. Where's everybody else? Uh, they are still... Well, it's just you, Kevin. You've won. You've won. It's just me. I've won. I've already won. I've already won. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. We already won. We already won. Is this okay? Well, we got Jake here. Oh, okay. We got Jake I see. here. So I guess Welcome, so both Jake of you guys. Uh, welcome you guys to the Hi. pre show. I appreciate you guys coming on today. We had some other guests uh, that were going to do pre show stuff, but they had to cancel. But they did record some message, so we're going to play that in a bit. Thank you both for coming on. You are both Hippy Dippy alumni, and Hippy Dippy's been gone for a while. So I wanted to make sure that if I brought it back, that I only had the the cutting edge of the what the platform had to offer when it came to uh, to this panel. So how how have you two been? How how have you been, Jake? Very good. Very good. I'm I'm glad to see that you're well and back, man. You're looking I, luscious, very luscious. Thank you. I appreciate it. I I try to be as luscious as I can be. Uh, Kevin Castle, how have you been? Uh, well, I've been busy as hell. I was just talking to Danibal and the crew backstage, basically about this. Like, I got 70 minutes of sleep in the last 24 hours. I'm a pretty busy, dude. Uh, I'm gonna get back into you know consistent content creation. Uh, so everybody make sure to go follow me on X, Kevin Castley, and oh. on YouTube, Superpower Broadcasting and Superpower Gaming. We had DEFCON video, uh, Nuclear War Simulator, it just hit 160,000 views. So that's pretty good. So let's try to get up to 500 subs on that channel. Let's go. Kevin Castley uh, is the best yeah. promoter. I didn't realize yeah. this was that that moment. Uh, I'm actually going to stream moment. Monday through Friday. No, no, only it. Kevin can only Kevin can do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, cool. You, the moment's gone. The moment's I, over. Self promo you, you, you can find okay. you can find Jake wherever corn is. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> that's right. You guys both have experience with hippy dippy, and mm -hmm. since you've both been on hippy dippy, you've both been in debates, and you've been in debates probably both good, and you've been in debates probably both bad. You've been in situations hippy dippy where you've done probably good, and situations where you'd be like, ah, maybe that isn't the best. I should have maybe rethought that. So my question to you guys is, what was the thing that surprised you most about these debate panels when you were first getting into them? Well, I'll go <laughs> first then. Okay. Sure. So here's the thing that surprised me most going into these is that uh, they are, uh, you know, I was I was into debates and stuff before Hippy Dippy, but I really kind of became a hip like a, a debate bro through the Hippy Dippy sort of thing. And that was a lot of fun. And you got to bring like consistent Hippy Dippy back down the road. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that that is what the people want to see. Twitch fell off bigly since Hippy Dippy has been done. And and a lot a lot of uh, a lot of online politics has fallen off. Basically, what I was uh, probably the most surprised about, I guess, was kind of uh, in a way the caliber that uh, people bring to it. I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, it's like an Internet space. They don't know what they're talking about or whatever. Uh, no, there's actually a lot of uh, knowledgeable folks you interact with there from different uh basically all sides of the political spectrum uh sure you have like some goobers who don't know what they're talking about but then you get a lot of people where it's like oh yeah no they're they're, they're formidable opponents so. that's true jake what are the deep political lessons you've taken away from your time on hippy dippy uh there aren't very many quality right wingers um at all uh there's uh, very few of them that can have a conversation without like freaking out and it's super fascinating when you get those the few occasions that I've had with the hippy dippy to give a glowing review uh, is that um, like one in eight, but that one out of eight, mm -hmm. we have a good conversation. It's kind of nice. I've had some nice conversations with right wingers. I wish they would be a little more hinged, but I mean, what can you? What can you? Do? What can you, what can you do? Would we have the content that we have had from the Hippy Dippy podcast? <laughs> that that's the thing. We were gonna have Hake on tonight, for goodness sake. Uh, one of the brightest <laughs> minds that we have in the space. And sadly, we're gonna we we were going to. He he sadly he dropped he he forgot he had a plane ride 
Uh, so he 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 couldn't be here today. We also lost some other brave souls. We lost American Nacho, <laughs> old time a member of the show, and we also lost Loner Box. He he pulled out uh, because he's a, a cuck bastard. That's all the reason he pulled out. I love Was Loner American Box. Nacho at January sixth. Was he at January a little bit? <laughs> Maybe a little bit as a joke. <laughs> You're trying to just, just kind of wander. You just kind of wander. Well, I was at January 6th, too. I stormed the Capitol. Out the wall. I was, chan- I was chanting that. Different. A little different. I was chanting sure. that. Bill- I was chanting that. Build the wall. I was storming. I was. I had the buffalo horns on. I was that guy. So, like it. How have you been, man? How have you been? It's been forever since, I- since I've talked to you one-on-one. It's been a hot minute, man. I've been doing well. Been doing well. Just uh, came back from a nice little Christmas break. Got a puppy on the way home, and uh, yeah, things are good. What type of puppy? Is it a Boston cute puppy or an ugly puppy? I mean, some people think Boston Terriers look like shit. I think they're the cutest dogs in the world, second tier French Bulldogs, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, Lycan, I uh, wanted to pose the same question to you. What surprised you most about debate panels when you first got into them? Um... I mean, I'd been around Twitch for so long that really, it, I don't think there was anything that surprised me. I think what, what surprised me is how, how popular they ended up being a little bit, like more so than just people coming to watch their favorite people. A lot of folks have blown up on smaller panels and whatnot. Um, so I guess the, the amount of value that people found in them, that was a little surprising, but overall, uh, nothing else. I mean, the, the fact that they're complete shit shows nine times out of 10. Yeah, that's, um, that is not surprising whatsoever, especially with the, the types of folks this space cultivates. Well, it's, yeah, been... but it's kind of fun though, right? It was funny it that you used be. the word value and then said they're shit shows. <laughs> Who gives They're the value, value out of a shit value. show? Same one. When you go to like a Man. wrestling match, you saw somebody thrown out the ring, thrown through a, through a table, everyone's cheering. You're getting some out of it. Okay, there's something. Uh, the wrestling thing. Not real competition sometimes, Dylan. Look, I the voting, <laughs> look, the voting system here is not is real. Respect, what do you mean not real? It's the most respectable no. known. It got look, better. It's all. It's it's the best. Everyone knows it's the best. We, we when, what name one scandal we've had with the voting system here at Hippy Dippy? Exactly. <laughs> you can't name one. Haven't had exactly. We've never had one. Scandal. Never had one. I don't know what you guys are talking anyway. about. Look, we, for those of you, since there's been some <laughs> questions, okay, from some libtards about the transparency process here when it comes to how the votes work, don't worry. <laughs> we have three well chosen, uh, unbiased judges who then take their votes and put it before a committee that send it over to a transition group, then put it before mm-hmm. a board, then tra- trans- uh, transition it over to a analyst group to go through the numbers, balance all the credit you know make sure that everything is above board before sending it to uh, another board before the dylan burns tv board of investors and then back to the three judges for review our process is clear it's transparent it's easy to understand everybody knows it no one is missing the fact that you're saying it to your investors so that they with the capitalist financial incentives can say well, we need this person to stay on because they've got the sob story. They're going to bring more. I don't numbers. know what you're talking about. Our, our investors right make through. brilliant decisions about is who is the smartest Soros? debate guy. They do not at all just look at who brings the most views at the exact moment and then choose they are the winners. They don't do that. Yeah, that's the finalist on Top Chef with the runny creme brulee with a burnt top getting to to win over the person who did a perfect. Uh, CTV was 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 analytically on point when he debated destiny okay and the judges were correct when they made the decision i think we all know that but besides us i forgot about that fucking nightmare massacre bullshit that cdv wrecked upon destiny i know it's kind of it's hard i think a lot of us suppressed it because it was almost traumatic in nature and that's what i wanted to bring over to the next question is what what was the uh, hippy dippy event that surprised you guys the most or left the biggest impression on you uh ctv whimpering into his uh moonshine jar and you were like i don't know should we do a wellness check that one he did fall out of his chair didn't he <laughs> it was pretty wild at the end of that one. well you know that just shows that he's a true man and any if, if you don't pass out drunk on stream once are you a true man uh like it what about yeah. you what was it what was your favorite hippie dippy or most surprising hippie dippy moment um, my most surprising, it, to make this about me, my most surprising was that I didn't get called out on a bunch of bullshit when I did that panel with Demon Mama and, um, oh, what's her name? Um, she do, Eldritch Mother, she changes her name all the time. I can't remember it off the top of I my head. I don't remember either. That one, that we were, there was some woke shit getting talked about, and I was, uh, 
and I was uh, going a little more, it was earlier in my progressive days, so I wasn't as woke as I am now, but the fact that I didn't get caught on that shit uh, surprised the hell out of me. But I think it was the cooking method, you know? I did the debate tactic gotcha. where I, I cooked a lobster and, uh, and no one knew what to say to me. Gotcha. So when Liking got away with his bigotry was his most surprising moment. Uh, Kevin, what was uh, your most surprising moment? What was the moment that left the biggest impression on you? Yeah, I would say I would say um, Alex Stein. Uh, Who's on tonight, knowing. by the way? Alex Stein is yeah, on tonight. He is on. He is on, and and he's a funny guy. I, I mean, you know, steak and shrimp on a blimp. He's got some good lines. I've I've watched some of his rap. He's he's a pretty funny guy. Uh, I, I would say you know I didn't know who he was when he came on the the panel, I, and that panel got over a million views across channels. It was kind of big at the time, and uh and i was i was flabbergasted when when he said uh are, are we in are we in nato with with russia kevin are we in nato with russia kevin and i'm just like nato is opposed to russia and he's like oh okay so we're in an alliance with russia and i'm just like dude are you are you stupid like what how, how what's even going on here so for me the the really the the sort of flabbergasted moment uh that stands out to me in the saga of hippy dippy uh which i was a part of at least was uh getting exposed that alex stein had thought that russia was in nato that's just that was just silly so so let's let's go through uh by the way if anybody's curious as to what was my favorite hippy dippy moment uh, my favorite uh trifecta of matches uh was the kevin cassidy rob nor matches because they just tore each other apart yelled at each other to, to, to high heaven um i also <laughs> uh the hippy dippy screw job of course is some of the deepest lore uh, that of of the political community of its era. But now I want to go through today's guests because a lot of you guys have had run-ins with some of these people. So I wanted to get you guys opinion on people. So Vosh is going to be on here tonight. Vosh, of course, being a veteran of the space. Do you think there's anybody on tonight's panel that could give him trouble, especially as a former hippy dippy champion who had his belt taken from him due to his inactivity and general laziness as a communist? <laughs> hmm, I think it's gonna be aircraft sparky. I think he's really gonna I think so too have a, <laughs> is a flu game type situation And he's gonna take some I don't know take some ben I think I think sparky is gonna hat man I unironically do think sparky might give people trouble tonight because <laughs> The problem is though when people come at you you ever see you ever see like uh, awkward fighters give like the best fighters in the business uh, like them give them trouble because they're throwing angles at them. They just never expected it and if car if aircraft sparky's down <laughs> yeah. there He might throw an yeah, angle at these guys never thought about before you know what I mean? Like what about yeah. JFK organize? You don't know what he might throw. I mean, Kev, he's a black swan event aircraft spark. Oh, yeah No, it, like we're, we're we're there's potential lizard people territory coming up there And I don't know if Vosh is necessarily prepared to handle that. I mean if Vosh is a you know a seasoned debater uh vosh you know he's got some good content i actually believe it or not I, a lot of people probably wouldn't kind of expect this of me i actually watch vosh mostly every day because he's a funny guy i watch conservatives i watch socialists etc as far as like left uh content creators go vosh is like he's up there in, in terms of uh caliber of his uh you know his wit and his debate skills but yeah. As you say, Dylan, you're right. Sparky, I've debated Sparky before. I, I debated Vosh too on one of the panels. Sparky's the kind of guy who he'll just say some stuff that like you don't even know. You don't even necessarily don't know, know how, how to, to process it because yeah. because you're like, wait, is this TOS? Is this how do I respond to this? <laughs> like because that's at least for me when he was debating me on my channel. I'm like, wait, do I pull this or do I respond? Because he was justifying a a genocide against every Afghan. He said that he wanted to bomb every Afghan village, uh, you know, after 9-11. Yeah, and I'm just he like, is, yeah. He is, yeah, he he pulled a Howard Stern after 9-11. And he I'm was, just he pulled like, and Stern. I'm just like. But people thought of me back in the day as like the most kind of super hawkish dude or whatever. I mean, you did say you and wanted I'm to like, nuke North Korea, Kevin. Uh, yeah, but that was specifically their nuclear site. He's talking about ah, yeah, firebombing, carpet bombing well, that's villages. More, that is much more reasonable. I hadn't considered that. So, and which, by the way, that's not even, I mean, we talked. That's not even my position anymore. But yeah, you're right. Back in the day. Yeah, I used to be a little bit more hawkish, but Sparky, bit. okay, Sparky's an isolationist, and he's more hawkish than I was when I was a neo. So he he so was he's the, so his position on God card. was fucking insane, and that's that's another thing I want to throw out there is. Uh, the first topic is not aid to Ukraine, okay? I know I'm here, so everybody thinks that's all it's gonna be, and that's what mostly it's gonna be because I'm here. But it's American foreign aid, 
And I, and this is something that I, that I'm curious about. There might be some disagreements about the people who are on the left wing side of this. I know Kraut uh, is very, very, very anti Hamas, uh, and I wonder what is they're Kraut left wing. Kraut would consider himself like a left wing liberal. Oh, yeah. Kraut's like a social democrat. Like, okay, he's, remember he's we're talking left, about. Let's talk let's let's keep it relative to aircraft Sparky here. Okay, let's remember. Uh, oh, then oh, he's okay. like an old well, definitely the last aircraft, aircraft Sparky. Round, we got aircraft that, Sparky. Sure. I think we got lecture fan. I think Redneck <laughs> is going to be on today as well. Actually, let's yeah. read Dude, the full. Why list. am I not in that shit box? Are you kidding me? Well, Holy <laughs> shit! What a group. Man, you want to be That's on fu any future events? No, I don't. I don't. No, 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 no. I want those three at some point at, in future. You want That's those fun. three specifically. Um, Dude, they're so unhit. Anyway, we've but, got, yeah. let me just read through today's guests so people realize how big of today an event today is going to be. We got Kraut, Vosh, Adam something, Alex Stein, Chud Logic, Pisco 95, Counterpoints, IRI, Pixel Smixer, Lectural Fan, Stardust, James from the Internet, American Nacho, sorry, he pulled out, Maddie Cakes, Anna Markey, Jeb Tan, Joe Lewis, Preacher 570, KF Logan, Sprouticus the Turk, More Perfect Union, Aircraft Sparky, Binks, Redneck, and Critically Thinking Veteran. What a fun, uh, what a lineup, man. CTV, baby. CTV. I think he's gonna take it's CTV, it. CTV, it's awesome. I think he's gonna you take it. You can't do hippy dippy without you can't CTV. Do, you can't do CTV. You can't. You know what he's doing these days on Twitch? Making Lego sets. <laughs> That's a good content, man. That, that is good fun. content. That is a good time. You Wait, does he do Lego fun? Fortnite? Because they just dropped that. I don't know. Like, I still gotta check out Lego Fortnite. You they know what? I haven't. I I don't know if he, you go talk to CTV. You guys become yeah. a. You guys go play Lego Fortnite. I think you guys Lego make Fortnite, a great. Yeah. <laughs> You guys would make a great tag team. Okay, go. so going forward, I want to ask you guys, knowing, seeing this big lineup, I mean, we got people like Adam something, Vosh, Kraut, who's going to be standing at the end of all of this? I think, oh. uh, you mean final, final? Yeah, who's going to be the final, final? Yeah, Ooh. I know who it is. Now, I let, let me give you guys some information about how voting is going to be working today. Because uh, due to the last second cancellations, it makes it more uh, difficult uh, because we did have a few last second cancellations. Um, how voting is going to work is we vote out the same person on one side as the other side. So two lefties, two righties in order to keep the conversation balanced so we don't have seven people all telling one righty why he's a moron or something. Or like seven righties telling one lefty that they're a moron after the righties dominate the panel as usual. Um, uh, point is we're going to be voting out like two people per round, sometimes four people, per, uh, two people each side per round. Sometimes it'll be six. Sometimes it'll be less. That's how the voting system works. So sometimes you'll come out six people gone, two left. Sometimes it'll just be four people gone. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, well, I mean, I think the bias is skewed against Kraut, but here's the thing about Kraut. I talked with Kraut. Kraut's a pretty educated guy. He's also pretty good at uh, debate. Uh, I think I think he's like kind of a dark horse going into this. I think uh, Adam something and Vosh are kind of known as you know very uh, you know generally informed debaters. Vosh would be on the, the traditional left, bet, wouldn't left. it? Oh, absolutely! Like Vosh is like the favorite going in, but I feel like on the merits of their argument and on the logic of their argument, regardless of your actual political morality, I feel like Kraut's going to kill it. But I also think he's probably not going to make it to the end because people are like going to call him a Zionist or something and, and say, no, no, we don't like him. So, well, the, gonna, the, the problem that Kraut and Adam something, a lot of people and, and, and their elk face is, sadly, uh, they were born with a dis uh, debilitating illness called European. And that means that their time <laughs> zones are very different. And that probably means they're going to also tap out early. So that is yeah, something that's, that's going to hurt them. They're gonna, even if they don't tap out early, they're going to get tired. Those guys want out early. Probably they don't want to stay for two and a half hours. So I, I, I'm betting against the Europeans personally. Yeah, like I think CTV is going to pull it in from the right, though. I think CTV is going to be the last. That's another man question. Also, we have people come in every round. And so that means the people who come in the last round have an unfair advantage. And I'm telling you guys now, that's that's why I put a lot of the bigger content creators at the start is because you know, you want to give them more opportunities to get eliminated because they have a natural advantage. Uh, but I mean, uh, I think there's a good chance we're going to see throughout this whole event. Bosch, another round, Vosh, another round, Vosh, another round. Uh, but I, I, I do, th I, I would bet towards Vosh. Um, and if I'm not betting towards Vosh, uh, the other person I, I would uh, bet towards, honestly, uh, and I'm looking at this list here and I'm thinking lecture fan. Honestly, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm thinking like because you fan. have to keep a righty. Me too. Uh -huh. <laughs> I listen. I think this is going to get upended by you know, uh, and I'm coming a little biased here because uh, I know the guy. I like the guy, 
but I'm going to say that Pisco is going to be the one. He's not been huge By the way, really I do need to throw out of... there, Pisco, Lectrofan, they're going to, uh, I think if Lectrofan can last long enough, they should be yeah. facing each other on the Colorado Trump case. Lawyer that should know. Be fucking I, I've glorious. debated Pisco one-on-one -on -one before. He's a competent debater. He's underrated. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. I would say Pisco. Electrofan has to survive least... to get there. And that's gonna that could be a challenge because that's that's like three rounds. He's gotta get through uh he's gotta get through what I think the war on Christmas, aid to Ukraine, and then make it to <laughs> the Colorado case. That's gonna is it, this is a tough uh task for Electrofan. Yeah, no, so, I think I think the audience is in for an absolute treat tonight. I think the roster is is it, it's 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 peak hippy dippy in that you've got the, this dippy. perfect it, yeah, yeah it's a, it's this archetypal hippy hippy dippy roster in the sense that you've got this blend of very competent, well read folks, and then also the blood sports mongers and everyone in between, and they're gonna yeah. duke it out, and we're gonna see who's left standing. But I, I think Kraut's gonna perform above average, and I think CTV's gonna do the same. I do also want to say though, this is an anniversary event. This isn't for any title. This is just to say you won. So I hope nobody takes it too seriously. I mean, there's only ten thousand dollars on the line, so I don't think anybody <laughs> should be uh, that uh, t terribly invested. Um, but uh, I, I do want to put forward: uh, Is there any predictions for tonight? Any predictions outside of who? Who you guys think are going to win? Is there anything that you're expecting to see tonight? Any talking points that are going to be yeah. dropped? Any, any, uh, anybody who's going to, uh, I don't want to use the word, what's a word for spaz that isn't spaz, that isn't ableist? What's well, a, uh, what, well, well, I guess I, it's in good faith, I guess. I'm asking, asking because I want to, I want to use it in the future. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think I think we're going to see, I'm just looking at the list. Here, here are some predictions. One, I think Chud is going to say something at, both yeah. racist and homophobic. I'm gonna probably. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I, I. I already yeah. have fifty dollars yeah. on that. Who wants to? Who wants to take my left back? or right? We put them on the left. Okay. So what happens when? <laughs> what happens when there's actual lefties up there and Chud Logic also? Does the vote swap? Uh, the vote does not swap, but they get to fight okay. each other. Fun. All right. Um, but because I, I think, think him and Lecture Family make good teammates. I think would. it would. So we actually have some call-in videos from some people who couldn't make it to today's event for any number of reasons. You know, they had livelihoods or wanted to keep their brain cells or whatever other stupid reasons. Maybe they have children, I don't know. Um, but they couldn't come to today's event, but they were kind enough to call in. Now, you guys won't, I'm not gonna be sharing screens, I'm just gonna be playing the audio for everyone. So if you guys wanna watch it, you have to check out the stream. But the first yeah. message is from everyone's favorite conservative, Rob Norm. Hey, Dylan, everyone on the Hippie Dippy, just wanted to wish you a happy new year. Thank you for the invite. Sorry, I couldn't make it. I have to go work. Uh, let me translate for your lefty audience. That's where you go do things that are of value to society and get paid money in our capitalist system. And then I also have to spend time with my family or to your lefty audience, your roommates that you still live in their basement. But I wish you well. I hope that you continue to remain safe if you head over to Ukraine. And it'll be fun destroying you lefties in the coming years, including this new one coming in 2024. Thanks so much. Have a great show. Wow, what a lovely mm. message from Rob Knorr. He truly knows that we're just dumb lefties ready to get wrecked. Uh, I think destroying he, us, but has a day us, job. Destroying very us wholesome. with a day job. It is, it is very wholesome. I just want to know what it's government good. building he's about to storm. Like, he's sitting in his car. <laughs> he's got his warm clothes on. You know, it is, it is December, almost, you know, January, right? Uh, so he's getting feisty. His time of year is coming around. Probably some, like, municipal building in New Hampshire. I don't know if he's in New Hampshire. I just know there's some very <laughs> radical libertarians out he, in New Hampshire. He so. walks into the police so. station with his phone camera already rolling, baby. He's ready to soft sit. <laughs> okay, okay. Sunglasses. One more <laughs> message from somebody who many consider scorned by the Hippie Dippy brand by an event known as the Hippie Dippy Screwjob, the content creator known as Demon Mama who has recorded a message, the first Hippie Dippy related message recorded for the public since the Hippie Dippy screw job done over a year ago when the rightful winner got the belt due to our legitimate and brilliant judges who make zero mistakes ever. Anyway, let me play you guys the message there at home. Angels and devils, debate bros and drama frogs, Bible thumpers and fedora tippers alike, my name, is Demon Mama, the first demon type streamer. 
But you already knew that, didn't you? Tonight, I am honored to welcome you all to the very first hippie, dippy, spectacular, a truly one of a kind mass throwdown designed just for those of you out there who miss the type of fireworks we all used to set off in this particular corner of the internet. My history with the show goes way back to the beginning, and real hippie dippy old heads will remember that as one of the first contestants ever on Hippie Dippy, I always brought the fire to Dylan's ring. But tonight, I will simply be lighting the fuse to the spectacular, explosive, incredible show that Dylan has prepared for you all after a much needed break, documenting an ongoing war. Anyway, it's been about a year and a half since the last Hippy Dippy event, but all that changes tonight. Since the old days of the show, you, viewers, have witnessed faces come and go, entire careers rise, fall, transform before your very eyes. The Hippy Dippy has always been a vibrant crossroads for talented folks from all over the streaming world. Tonight will be no different. Excitable newbies hungry for glory, returning contestants with a bone to pick. Winners fighting to hold on to their legacy. And there's so many questions. Will Vosh have the horsepower to be the head horse in a race with so many young and virile contestants? Did Destiny lose the championship belt in the divorce? Does CTV debate better drunk, high, or both? When is Sparky gonna bring back those puppets? Is Kraut better from a jar or a bag? Will anyone make it to the end at all? Or does Dylan McMahon Burns have a couple of tricks up his sleeve for all of you? That, lovely viewers, is for all of you to find out for yourselves tonight on the Hippie Dippy Spectacular. Now I wanna see some energy in chat. I wanna see some likes on this video. And most of all, I wanna see some donations flowing because tonight is going to be a truly fantastic show made all for you. That was a lovely message from Demon Mama. Oh my goodness, that was very nice. I hadn't seen it, I hadn't pre us. Uh, it, was, it was given to me right before. Uh, that was given to me like 30 minutes. What a lovely message. My goodness, it was, really. It was a trust fall and it worked. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it started. It started off kind of cringe, but then it ended kind of hype. So I, I, you know, I thought I it. I it. thought that was that was awesome. And, and and you know we haven't done this in over a year and a half, so you know there might be some bumps in the road. I am a little rusty, but I'm gonna do my best to keep everybody in line tonight. Any last messages you guys want to give out to the world? And again, thank you, Dean Mama, for the lovely message. It really did touch my heart. Any messages you guys want to give to everybody before we start the show? I just want to say that uh, we're glad to have you back, you know, from uh, the war zone, you know, that you're, uh, you've you got a whole new suitcase full of patches from your war tourism, and it's... Uh, I have, it's they're all on the wall right there, I swear. They're all Perfect. on the wall. And and it's good to have you back doing this content, man. It's been a year since the last Hippie Dippy podcast, and the, the world needs it now more than ever as we are gripped so, so you're saying that this should not be a one-off. This should be the the, the start of a, of a you glorious gotta return. Bring it. I, you got to bring it back. Like the people is, miss hippy dippy. The people really miss it. You. Yeah, the yes. people miss hippy dippy across communities, across politics. Uh, uh, Twitch wants hippy dippy back. X Jake, wants hippy Jake, dippy. Do you stream back. on Twitch? YouTube. Uh, I do. Wants do, you, back. do you do you believe that? Do, do you want bullshit? Do I believe that everybody wants hippy dippy back? I, don't I believe do not either. believe no, that. There are some no. people who are particularly yeah, hippy dippy. The people, the people, dippy, the people, the people have, want hippy dippy. Uh, I haven't always had a bad time with Hippie Dippy. In fact, I'd, I'd say personally, I have a good time when I'm on it, uh, when it's not a shit show. And it's most often not a shit show. You've gotten very, uh, a lot better at it over the years. And I think a year and a half break is exactly what you needed to get fresh again and to, uh, and to feel it again. People because, can see at the end uh, of it, I was, yeah. I was getting sick of it. I yeah. wasn't enjoying You're it. You're burning out on shit. Fuck it. I mean... I think this is. I think it was good for you, and uh, I'm also very glad to see that you're back and healthy and stuff, man. Awesome. And hey, yeah, and absolutely. I, I think it'll be easier if I, if I did it like a, maybe once a month. And I th think I should be able to manage it that way because we were doing it once a week for like two years. <laughs> that was a yeah. that was a bizarre schedule. Thank you everybody for coming on. We have Superpower Broadcasting, also known as Kevin Cassie, Lycan, also known as the best cook on Twitch, and Actual Jake, where you can find on both Twitch and YouTube. Anything else you guys want to shout out? Best quick? Cook. Enjoy the show, everybody.
Have awesome. a great time. Dippy with dippy floor, hike. Baby. Bye, yeah. everybody. Okay, Danabo, Bye. you can snatch them all out, or you guys can just leave. And Danabo, Bye. time to bring in all the first round. Let's bring them all in. Let's let's Later. get this shit on the road. Hello. Welcome in, everybody. Come on in. The water's fine. We got seats for everyone. We got seats for everyone. For some people, it's going to be a long night. For some people, it's going to be an awfully short night. So I hope you all are ready for a good interlocking of ideas uh, uh, taken with a light heart when it comes to the, uh, the uh, formation of the show. I just want to throw out there first that almost everybody's going to get kicked out at some point. Everybody's going to be thrown over the rope. Don't take it too personally. The format is mostly for shits and giggles and to include as many people and to enjoy the event. And I want to thank you all for participating in today's event. Just quickly, we'll go around the room, introduce everybody, let's introduce yourself quickly, and we'll get straight into it because we have a tight schedule today. So we're going to start with Adam something. Introduce yourself quickly. Hi, I am Adam something. Nice to see you all. Burns is in. Wow, that was I have perfect. A, I have that channel with those videos on YouTube. He does videos with trains, lots of trains. Aircraft Sparky. Hey everybody, I'm Aircraft Sparky. Um, yeah, here to pull out puppets, baby. We'll see. Corrupt awesome. Corrupt Fabian Liberty. Uh, yeah, I'm Fabian Liberty. Uh, Anarcho Capitalist. You can find me pretty much everywhere. Is Fabian Liberty. Fantastic. Kraut. Morally corrupt. Hey, morning. Um, Dylan's editor just woke me up. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Fantastic lecture fan. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm lecture fan. I'm a, I'm a lawyer, practicing lawyer. I stream on Twitch at night. I do politics. I'm conservative. Find me on X, uh, YouTube, you name it. Fantastic and Vouch, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm Vouch. I'm here to wrestle up some good discourse. Wrestle up them discourses. Uh, Anamarchy, how's it going? G'day, it is a very tired oh, Australian. I um Burns is I make history old. videos on YouTube and fight people on Twitter. Hello. Do you by chance have like a like a VTube avatar or something you can put up? Uh no, unfortunately I do not have a VTuber avatar. Okay, well I'll 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 forgive it because you're Australian and that's enough of a burden already. Um more perfect yep. union. Hey everybody, I'm the More Perfect Union. I sometimes stream on Twitch and other channels. Uh, I'm a constitutional conservative, um, bane of all leftist existence, and i um, glad to be here. Uh, by the way, it's nice to see that you managed to avoid getting shot. So, so far, at least. Okay, don't count me out yet. Uh, wow. So we've got uh, a great show lined don't up tonight. Jinx it. <laughs> as much as I fuck? as much as I disagree, Knock on wood, jackass. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I'll be I'll I'll be fine. No one's ever got hot, hurt in a war. So we're gonna get into the first topic. Uh, the first topic today, uh, speaking of war, has to do with American aid to allies and whether the United States should continue to provide aid to allies. Uh, this, of course, is being talked about a lot because of the over one hundred billion dollar aid package to, while primarily Ukraine, also includes aid to Israel, also includes aid to Taiwan and some security uh, investments in the Indo-Pacific region, primarily uh, uh, put there to counter uh, Chinese uh, naval expansion. And my question to all of you guys is, is, uh, is Ford aid a worthy investment from the United States? And you can talk about any of these aid packages or any parts of the recent aid packages that you want to when talking about it. But of course, remember, we have short amounts of time, so try to keep things punchy, okay? And we're going to leave it to the room. Who wants to go first? I'll do it. Fuck it. Okay, Sparky. All righty. Uh, plain and simple. We concern ourselves more with other countries' borders than our own. Until we take Burns care of our own borders, immoral, no one should get a dime. Corrupt, bankrupt man. Okay. Well, there you go. Anybody wants to take that? I think. Uh, I think foreign aid is where it meets <laughs> where you can immoral, where you can make it clearly defined um, alignment with with uh, our objectives and goals. Uh, as a nation protecting and projecting peace or democracies or fair trade, reasonable fair trade, I, I think that you can make a case for that. I think uh, the Ukraine issue, um, while I'm generally supportive of um, anybody who is against Russia, <laughs> um, I think the problem that a lot of people are starting to feel with Ukraine aid is that there's not enough um, oversight uh, the the chances and uh, the the amount of corruption that exists within their government structure is still pretty significant, and there hasn't been a good accounting for it. So, 
I think we need to have good controls over uh, the audit process, regardless of whoever we provide aid to. And we need to further, we need to make sure that we have a very finite defined mission objective before we give anybody money. Okay. Can we can we throw it to somebody who maybe takes a different perspective than these two? I don't want to just have all the same people agreeing one oh, over the other. Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Okay. Uh, no, no country is an island. We all benefit from global stability. International relations and diplomacy are a preferable substitute to war. There is no way to wall yourself off from the rest of the world. And so long as the rest of the world is a part of the one that we're on, we need to be concerned with its stability. Foreign aid is a great idea. We should do it. We should do lots of it. We should ingratiate countries to ourselves, make ourselves look strong, the shining city on the hill. It's good for America. It's good for everyone. Of course, you got to do it for the right reasons. I think Israel is making particularly poor use of our money right now. But generally speaking, yeah, there's no way to just wall yourself off. The world comes crumbling down due to instability. That hits us, too. So we got to be responsible stewards of the power we have, which is, at this moment, quite a bit. It's All right. very interesting. It's very interesting to see how socialists always have this same notion where conservatives or libertarians or limited government types um, don't want the government to do something. And so the claim always becomes that, you know, and, and, and this goes back, you know, Hayek noticed this, right? It's like, it's as if the socialist believes that we don't want to produce grain, right? The idea is, is, is a false dichotomy. It's a, it's a fallacious argument that Vosh is making. This idea that there is either we wall ourselves off from the world or we spend money that is completely wasted in inefficacious ways towards foreign aid, which is it, it, which can be done better via charity and private industry. And by, as you know, more perfect union stated, if you're going to have a minimalistic state, you can protect your trade routes and certain things of that nature. But this idea that we're going to spend hundreds of billions on corrupt nations that don't feed their people and we just kind of do it year over year over year or we're going to fund never-ending wars without any accountability or uh you know almost a complete lack of oversight to the tune of five hundred thousand dollars for every upper middle class family um is absurd and stupid in, okay. Europe, we, uh, in Europe, in Europe, we had something that we called the peace dividend, which was when the Cold War ended. We assumed there would never be a large land war in Europe ever again. As a consequence, almost all countries here cut the military budgets, and then we either invested the surplus money into social development, social programs, or we cut taxes. And now we all have egg on our face. There's only very few countries in Europe that didn't cut the military spending, like Greece, Norway, and Poland. They don't have egg on their face. The brutal reality that we in Europe face right now is that we have to build up our militaries and our defenses again, that we have to be able to face off an aggressor country that wants to divide up Europe into spheres of influence. And also, I'd moment, like to point something out here. Well, like for, to, can, like we, to... can, we, can we let Kraut finish his statement quick okay. and then we'll throw it over to Anna Markey? Okay. In, in this moment of crisis, we have no choice but to ask the Americans to send us weapons because we don't even have enough of our own because we neglected defense industry to such a point that it is become, it's proving difficult to gear up the factories again to make basic ammunitions. Mm. We're not just taking aid from the Americans, we're also taking from the Canadians, the Australians, the Japanese, the Koreans. The Koreans have been especially gracious, giving us a million artillery shells for the Ukrainians, which is, and I want to point this out, the aid isn't money it's literally physical shells it's guns it's tanks stuff like that and i the only counter proposal that i can make to those who criticize it is yes we're currently taking your aid but we will be gearing up our own defense again we will be coming back up under our two feet because it is very clear to us here now that the peace dividend is over Right, I'd like to jump in quickly into this. Some, well, some, quickly uh, though, Anamarchy, I did say Anamarchy oh, yeah, would go next, and then we'll right. see go what ahead. he says, and then maybe you. Okay, go. Okay, rather, I'm going to sort of be a, a bit testy. Maybe it's just because then I got gifted it's first thing in the morning. But I find it ironic Sorry, about being lectured on the, uh, del on the deliberate reliance on the government to do things, and how a self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist can't recognize what's called a good investment. You've completely defanged the largest geopolitical threat in Europe, or at least heavily damaged it. You've rendered it completely incapable of challenging the United States in, in the uh, world hegemon game, if you want to use the term, without a single American citizen who didn't volunteer for Ukraine directly dying, not a single active duty US military person beyond special operations who we don't know about being deployed. 
uh, and you've spent what amounts to just under 2% of your entire budget for one year. You've spent less than 20% of your discretionary defense budget to destroy um, something like 3,000 tanks, 5,000 APCs, kill 100,000 Russians, uh, and you've done basically nothing. You've, 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 you've done nothing. In fact, you've saved money. The other big issue for me is when you're talking about uh, aid to Ukraine in terms of material aid, a lot of the weapons and stuff that the United States has sent have been from their reserves and stockpiles. You are paying people to maintain these. You are paying private companies to maintain these using government money. They are no longer needed to be maintained in those boneyards and those storage facilities because guess what? They're out doing what they were built to do, which is kill Russians. Now, on the next side of things, you're going to need to replace that. Europe is going to need to replace all okay, the aid they I do want to say just do try to tend to wrap it up because we only have so many people okay, and so many time. Okay, okay, in which case, let me, let me put it this way. Long story short, all that money is going back to the private sector. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, they're going to make a killing. They're going to employ Americans. And those Americans are going to pay taxes. They're going to spend money. They're going to buy shit. And that's going to stimulate the American economy. This is a net benefit on every level for the Americans, even if you take out all the other factors. It's just an. It's after, just a win. After Adam something, may I respond to this? This absurd uh, retard uh, attempting to explain economics. Uh, you know, uh, Adam, I'm going to ask to you wait a moment. Have, have Fabian just directly respond yeah, to make sure. it easier. Okay. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, su super quick, right? So the the idea that you attack the idea of an ANCAP being anti-war to be pro-war for Lockheed Martin really shows that you don't know what ANCAP is, but. Setting all of that aside, the idea that it is a good investment, um, that, that, that we can look at how much money is spent and then calculate it afterwards is, you know, a very, a very, very poor misunderstanding of economic theory. Um, the market is the best way to, dis to, to allocate resources. The market is the one that has price control. Uh, the state cannot solve the economic calculation problem. The state is incapable of solving the local knowledge problem. And so that money is going to be wasted. And of course, it's going to end up in the coffers of fucking Lockheed Martin and no ANCAP or most Americans fucking want that. And the idea that, oh, well, don't worry, it'll create jobs. I mean, that might work. Job creation might work on fucking, you know, 1980s and 1990s conservatives that would vote for this dumb idea of like, it'll create jobs, but it doesn't work on me, buddy. Like, no. Private fuck, economy fuck, enjoy fuck when private corporations make profits. <laughs> okay, so Anamarchy, uh, if you wanted to respond to that, we can give you an opportunity to respond to that, or we can just throw it straight over to Adam something. State money. Like, shut up. Like, so stupid. No, it's, it's a straightforward calculation. It's a straightforward calculation. The United States is spending, proportion to what it has, nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's barely spending anything compared out of its total budget. Yep. And what it's generating, what it's generating in terms of a geopolitical result, you're getting your money's worth easily. Easily. And yeah, sure, you can talk you about the dubiousness. So, like, it's, just, it's on. We've got photographs. That. We've got photographs of. Can I, can I jump in on this? That that's that's not how basic economics works. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait a second. Okay, I, Adam, something. I love you, but I'm gonna have oh, that's Vosh quickly comment. Then I'm throwing it to you. It's just as part of the same. To my chain, handsome, right? my okay. handsome no friend Adam, hey, something to my seed. Every moment but this one. Um, if, if we're going to center the discussion, it should be on reality, not fantasy. Every country on the world has a state. Every country in the world's state manages its own resources, including war. The idea that the argument here would be about, oh, what if, um, what if the private sector did for it? Um, what, if, uh, what, if the private, what if the market decided? Shut up. The market decided. The system exists. We, we, we live in a global economy. It turns out corporations benefit from a state that protects yeah, them. That's not that an establishes argument. The like, system make an actual that argument. Defended. Yeah, the argument that I'm making is that you don't have one. You're, what is this? Like, can you point no, to any place in the world where the state has... Hold, 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 We only have so much time. Wait, 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 wait. We only have so much time. I'm going to let Vosh finish his question, and then I'll give you Fabian, and I'm sorry, like 10, 50 seconds to respond, then I have to throw it to Adam. He's just been waiting patiently. I'm just, I'm filling up my crystal ball right now, and I'm for seeing 57 questions that are answered but what if we let the private market do more in some abstract nebulous way that's never been done because it doesn't work i seed everything to adam something somebody with something interesting yeah. to say on the subject yeah, yeah, yeah. well thank no, you i right. seeded of course i seated yeah, of course of the way, conscious of course, move wait 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 wait, adam, wait, wait, wait 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 i said Take i would give yours. fabian 10 minutes 10 seconds to respond he gets 10 seconds to respond then adam 
Yeah, of course the socialist wants us to have more government. Of course the ANCAP wants us to have less government. Except I didn't make the argument Reading from a non-government anarchist column. perspective. You just randomly said dumb shit to attack ANCAP because you have no fucking argument. Okay, so Adam. Number three of seven. All right, so uh, so Fabian sounds a bit like those those like uh, Twitter tanky lefties who, but he just uses market instead of like a communist manifesto or something. It's pretty funny. Anyway, so uh, we we'll, make I'll, a fucking I'll, argument. I'll, I, I'm on it. Okay, so um, just be patient. So uh, the arguments uh, for supporting Ukraine, for example, uh, from the pre pure business perspective, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a no brainer, right? So one of the main export materials of the U.S. is security and stability, which which the U.S. accomplishes through its military, and uh, this, of course, has a number of. Uh, easy to see business, uh, positive business effects. Uh, peace and stability, it turns out, is good for a business. It is good for investment, right? Uh, this is a, a no-brainer. Uh, also, uh, the Ukraine war uh, just happens to be a great advertisement for uh, the U.S. weapons industry. You know, when you see those thousands of Russian hardware burning, uh, just like torched by, uh, not, 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 even, not even top much U.S. Uh, hardware, but like just like 20, 30-year-old stuff. Uh, that's that's great for uh, the U.S. economy. Now you might be salty about the fact that that uh, uh, I don't know Raytheon or whatever or, or like stay very heavily state adjacent slash these like mammoth corporations. But yeah, that's that's how, the, how that's how the economy works currently. That's how you achieve growth. You know, as, as so if you're not some like uh, unless you're some kind of degrowth uh, weirdo, then you should be happy about this, right? The other thing is no. weapon weapon aid. One second. Weapon aid. Uh, when we when they say okay, we sent Ukraine, you know, five billion dollars worth of aid. That's not five billion dollars. That's five billion dollars worth of aid calculated based on the stuff, the pre-existing stuff uh, that you guys send them, right? So if we send them like five hundred M113 uh, APCs or something, well, then that's calculated into a, into a into a dollar-based uh, number. Even though those vehicles, they have been used by the US military before, they've been retired, they, they have served their time, and now they're just passing them off to someone. That comes out, that comes out as, a, as a monetary item uh, on, a, on a budget sheet. Meanwhile, in reality, it doesn't really uh, mean an actual Is expense for the US. That? Okay, sorry, sorry, wait one second. Mm -hmm. I need to take a pro-business position as well. Uh, Hippy Dippy has made one change financially, and that is in between topics, the number one donor between topics will be able to ask the cast one question. Uh, you know, if I'm going to bring back Hippy Dippy and herd these cats, I'm going to make money. I'm demonetized, okay? Uh, continuing, I want to throw it over to, I, I'm sorry, Fabian, but you, you got a lot of back and forth. I want to make sure yeah, Lecture Fan gets on. to talk. Lecture Fan, and then yeah. uh, Kraut, and I have MPU written. Don't worry. Well, I, I mean, I think this whole discussion is kind of missing the main point. I mean, Vosh started off by saying, oh, foreign aid, good. It can be good. And it's like, well, yeah, every we've always done foreign aid. People always forget the, the entire reason we even have a federal government is to handle military foreign policy. But, of course, nobody addressed aircraft Sparky's perfectly reasonable point, more perfect unions, perfectly reasonable point. And so you're just glossing over these 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 points where it's like, oh, yeah, foreign aid, good. But it's like we're broke for one. We don't have any money. Number two, everybody sort of agrees with that, and and uh, the Australian guy Anna Markey was perfectly correct to say it's a drop in the bucket. We spent a hundred billion on Ukraine. We spend over six trillion dollars on a on a federal budget, so it is a drop in the bucket. But you've got a problem here where we're broke. Uh, there's inflation out of control. We don't have our own border secure. So you can say that foreign aid is good, and and I support foreign aid when it can be afforded, when we can pay for it, when it when it when it benefits United States national security, when foreign aid can be used to establish mm -hmm. and, and prolong American military dominance, economic dominance, cultural dominance. So foreign aid can absolutely be good. But you're simply not going to get it. Uh, with a with a GOP Congress, which we have right now, if you guys don't address the border and you left this, oh yeah, great, yeah, more foreign aid, more foreign aid, and let's just leave the border open and let's not do anything to try to balance the budget. That's a loser argument. How is the U.S. broke? Can you enlighten us, please? Um, yeah, we're thirty-four trillion dollars in debt and we're running two trillion dollar deficits every year, and Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are going bankrupt in eight years. If you didn't know, I just wanted right. to comment on the idea that we should let the markets decide which country deserves military aid and which one doesn't. There was a time in which that was actually legal and permitted before the First World War. Corporations, companies, you name it, could go out there into a conflict zone and decide, hey, we want to support this certain party in a war because we want that party to win. There's a very famous example of this, the British textile and cotton weaving industry 
water warship for the Confederacy, wanted the Confederacy to win the Civil War because slavery was very profitable for their industry and they wanted to keep the profits of that. Another example is not so famous. Yeah, and the French helped um, us in the revolution. Like, what the yeah, fuck is your a, point? A group, well, the French were a government and not a corporation. A group of Wall Street bankers gave huge war loans to the Japanese in the Japanese-Russian War because they wanted Korean railroads um, concessions. When you let a massive corporation, like, you ever read War is Hell by Smedley Butler? When you let, me, you you let to calm down, dude. When you let markets, you have to decide. calm down a bit, alright? Just when let, you let, let markets lift the wine a bit, dude. Holy the shit. decision to support a country, a conflict part of the war, is not like a market this. decision. It is a political decision. It is a decision based on values. A decision based on ideas, on ideals, on what you believe in. If you let the market decide which side in the war deserves support. They will pick the side where they can get money out of. Who's to say that the corporation would not support Russia in return for like oil drilling and mining concessions in Siberia? Also, wait, like, isn't isn't Russia supposed to be like the nightmare of fucking ANCAPs? Like Russia basically to, like stole hundreds of jets when the sanctions hit. Like they just like appropriated them. They appropriated I Western property like and they Russia. Hey, yeah, like, sure, sure. I, and I and so you guys, and, and you're now you and you're now knocking them. And we're now knocking them. Sounds like you just and we're now knocking them. We're now knocking them. We have only have so many few uh, so much time left in this round. So I want to make sure that uh, Adam something gets to finish his statement, and then we get to get anybody that has anything left they want to quickly get out. So. I I go sure. brush so, my teeth. So, all right, so, so Fabian, so Fabian has this that nice uh, plague behind him, saying property is liberty. Well, then Russia has violated the number one golden rule of, of ANCAPism, I guess. Property, they stole Western property. They they just appropriate everything. So yeah, now, I don't like it, Russia. Yeah, sure. yeah, good, good. So now, so therefore, you should be in support of sending Ukraine aid because then we're you're, so you, we are. No, it, it, it's not retarded, really. I mean, if you think that's retarded, I mean, the, prob the problem is in your device, dude. Uh, also, uh, one, one, th one, one thing... Not one liking thing, Russia doesn't thing... mean I have to support fucking stealing money from the American people. It's, and it's that's, 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 what I, that's what I want to... Well, what, that's what I want to bring up. One, one point that I want to address. The unaccountable weapon transfers and corruption. Like, guys, like, every fucking, th every fucking piece of equipment that gets sent to Ukraine is documented really, really uh, solidly, and we know where those are. Like, it's not just like you're sending stuff into Ukraine and it fucking disappears. It not, doesn't work like, like that, actually. And you if know, you actually I want, look... I want yeah, to add... Yeah. Okay, oh, quickly. Oh, well, I, like, I thought after, I'd be interrupting the other guys. I want to make Adam. sure. Um, I, I want to make sure after Vosh goes, we go MPU and Sparky because they've been waiting for a little bit. Island, can I can I go I, quickly and brush? I just want to say just, really, okay. really okay, quickly okay. with respect to okay, like. Okay, okay. Yes, you can it's, go. It's brush a your tough teeth. job, Dylan. Continue. Yeah, sorry, I was telling Crowdy can go brush his teeth. Continue. Um, right. The yeah, hall monitor pass. Um, yeah. With regards to the uh, like the previous topic, it's worth noting that the crisis we're currently having at our southern border is in large part a product of instability that we've either ignored or facilitated in Latin America. Our drug oh. policies and the policies that we've had since le lessening it have contributed to the rise and strength of the cartels, the instability oh. in Latin America, a large part of foreign intervention, or at the very least complacency on our part. Likewise, the refugee crisis in Syria, direct product of our meddling, everything that happened with Assad and his government and his predecessor, we had a a lot to do with that now that's not to say that yeah, we deserve so any that oh, hold your hold your horses no you're deal. learning the you're learning the wrong <laughs> lesson the correct lesson that wise people take from this is that the affairs of other countries and their well-being reflect on our well-being we're not an island so if countries near us are prosperous and wealthy we don't worry about refugees from canada do we so what we should be concerned with is global stability if we really are that great and i as a lover of America, I think we are, then we should try to see the world through, make it a better place than it was when we were founded, try to ensure for our sake, as well as theirs, that when changes are made, they're for everyone's betterment. Because if other things go poorly, if, 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 if other countries fall apart, we do pay a price for that, both in the stability of our markets, the stability of our borders, we need to be concerned with their well-being at least for selfish reasons. Now, humanitarian reasons, I think, are also pretty valid there. But if you're only concerned with the selfish ones, that's something that you should take in consideration. Global stability, good. We agree. Global stability is good. We can agree mm -hmm. on that. MPU, I believe you've been waiting for quite a while. Yeah, so um, I think Vosh would like to, you know, give the world a Coke and teach us all how to sing. Um, I don't like Coke. I well. He's the, I, um, guy. The, look, the problem, the problem with the southern border is that we have laws on the books that that regulate immigration those laws are being violated 
by non-government agencies who bring people across the border. They coach them on how to say that they have a credible fear uh, uh, or, or threat. They're economic migrants. And they're not, they're not asylees, right? They're not asylum seekers. They're not valid asylum claims. 98% plus of the people who come across the, border, the southern border um, who are from Latin American countries are not valid asylum seekers. And then on top of that, we have hundreds, if not thousands of people have come across the border who are, who are known, uh, uh, they're known to be affiliated with terror organizations. We have um, tens of thousands... Tens of, I don't know. I think there was a Hamas uh, person who tried to get, uh, who tried to come through the, the northern border, just like the last few uh, few days. Got to lock that one okay. down. There's um, the Chinese. The, there are Chinese. There are single Chinese men of military age. Okay, who are coming through the southern border? You basically just have to get. You just have to get to Mexico, and then you basically can get into the United States for free, right? And then there's a, uh, they're not even doing DNA Where testing. Are you these from? What? What does this Where have to do these with figures Ukraine? From? Like 98% are, 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 are economic migrants and not asylum. Like, where are you getting that, those figures? Did you get it from, did you get it from 90, Facebook or something? No, 98% of the people um, who are, who, who go through asylum, this is what the federal government puts out, okay? Um, yeah, but really are they either? Is there either such okay, a so giant I'm, crisis I'm gonna that have to put a pin on this. At all? I gotta put oh, a pin or, on. I gotta put a pin on this because exactly the, percentage. the time the time has ran out, and we do have a bunch of people waiting. Obviously, we're going through a bunch of people today, so I do need to do the two kicks, and I have gotten who is being uh, kicked this round. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna right, throw, it out, throw it out. Throw it. I'll throw it out there, and I'm very sorry, Anamarky. This round, the judges have decided that you have been eliminated, probably because of, of your Australianness. They are slightly bigoted. I am very sorry. Uh, I hope to see you next time. You have a good one, okay, man? Fair enough. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you. We're going to play Hell at Loose later. Bye. Okay. Be well. Uh, and, and the other one is Sparky. I'm very sorry, Sparky. You you were thrown over the top rope. So so Sparky made the best awesome. point. Spar Sparky, you made the best point of anybody on this ep on this t topic, by the way. And I got to talk the least. That's okay. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Okay, you have a good one, man. Balls are open. <laughs> yeah, he did right, have the balls right. open, and I do respect that. I do want to throw that out there. there. Yeah, no, that was that was good. That's by the way, I, that, apparently the judge told me it wasn't an easy decision. They liked everybody. Okay, so uh, we're bringing in two more people. Uh, it is going to be Chud Logic and Alex Stein. If any of you are familiar with Alex Stein from his AOC antics or his new show that he has. Um, uh, by the way, if anybody wants to get the mid portion questions, you donate now. Large donations will be coming up after the next break. We'll be asking the uh, host, the, uh, the, not the host, the guest today, those questions submitted by the viewers. Uh, now we're going to continue where we left off. Uh, who wants to pick us back up? Oh, same topic. Yeah, same topic, but quickly, I'll have okay. logic. I guess if you want okay, to Okay, let sure. me cut to the chase, okay? It's all fucking boring foreign policy shit, okay? Dylan, <laughs> right? Very rich that you come up with this topic, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it is. When, allegedly, mm -hmm. you went to Ukraine on the Ukrainian dime to run for a Ukrainian pussy. That Answer is true. To that. It was bussy, <laughs> actually. How many whores have you run oh, through? Progressive. Um, I lost count, of course. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Dylan's been running through those war widows like a goddamn racer. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry, uh, your house got blown up. Come around my place and you can stay here for a little bit. Don't worry about thank, it. Thank you, Chad Logic, for coming. And thank you, Alex Stein, for coming on today. Um, so who wants to actually pick us back up? No, I mean, I think that's a fair point, that foreign aid, foreign aid has only become a controversial topic because conservatives have pointed out how hypocritical and preposterous it is to spend hundreds of billions on other countries when we have a wide open border. That's the only reason this is controversial. The United States has utilized foreign aid for our benefit, to do what's best for America, to serve our interests, to promote American value. We've done that for decades, for centuries. It's been fine. The only reason it's a controversy now is because the Democrats and Joe Biden and all these leftist organizations have a wide open border and uh, more perfect union is 100% right. These are all fraudulent asylum claims that the system's being abused. Uh, these NGOs are training these people how to file fraudulent claims. Bra uh, Joe Biden's administration, the Democrats, literally just gave one of these fraudulent asylum claimants a court date in 2030, and they're not going to show up. And when they do show up, 98% of them get denied, and then they're here and they've got babies and everything else. That's the only reason this topic's even a, a controversial topic right now.
Hey, I've got a, a quick question, okay. by the way, lecture. No, sincere question, um, lecture. If it was possible, so we spend a lot of money protecting our southern border as it is. If it was possible to spend that amount of more, uh, that amount of money investing in a variety of Latin American countries, Mexico, Colombia, whatever else, and in the long term, say in five to 10 years, the money that we invest in foreign aid, that we give them in foreign aid, could contribute to the betterment of conditions in those countries to the point where they don't really have that many migrant trains coming up on North, you know? We could uh, make them want to live in their countries. If that could be done, would you prefer that? Do you think that'd be a good run forward? Sure, I just don't think that that, that can be done. I, I, that's been tried, we've been trying to help those countries. And it's not just the Latin American countries that are in these, we're, we have people from over 120 different countries crossing our border just this year alone. And so no, we're if popular. that was possible, if, if, if we could do that and we'd get a wonderful, wonderful result, then of, who wouldn't support it? It's a wonderful result. There's no more illegal I aliens. Won't. I just, result. I just have to throw in it. I, I like, won't. It's, it's really fucking, uh, really weird that like you guys, that like you're just two different socialists that want to spend the American dollar on different fucking things. How about we just end the fucking drug war and then the fucking cartels and so much of the crime that is that is that is a, in many of these South American countries. Well, well hold on, I want to end the drug war. Wait, 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 rights you don't have to spend a fucking dollar you can just stop violating people's rights and you'll save money and stabilize south america like can we just can we make make some money. Getting, we're without spending little, anybody's we're, money we're starting to go a little bit off topic but i am yeah. interested to, to see lecture fan respond to that just because i'm interested to see the two it's conservatives just, go at it over the yeah, drug war we're conservative well, Fabian, Fabian, on that side. No, Fabian's saying that I support a bunch of government spending. It's like, no, I believe in across the board, massive, massive spending cuts at the federal level, massive spending cuts to where we're running a, a surplus. You're and you're saying, oh, you you support you support the United States government doing the number one thing it's supposed to do, which is military and foreign policy. Oh, you're a socialist. How stupid. Okay, so I gotta I gotta throw okay. this over yeah. to there's big people I am waiting. Socialist. So first I'm yes, gonna throw it over support, to you. Support a portion I gotta, of the market stop, being sh, by the sh, state. Sh, please, socialist. Sorry, I just gotta I gotta make sure we have enough time for everybody. Kraut, uh, you've been waiting a bit. I also have Adam MPU and Alex. I put you on the list because you just haven't said anything yet. Okay, uh, Britain is currently going through a cost of living crisis, the worst since the 1970s, as well as a migration crisis as well. Poland went through a constitutional crisis in the last few years. Italy is going through a migration crisis. Lots of crises politically across Europe, cost of living crisis mainly, lots of issues to deal with. Yet still, despite these crises, we've all somehow found the political will to also provide military aid to Ukraine. When figures on the American far right say that they want to condition military aid to Ukraine upon something, something border, it just doesn't come across as sincere. It comes across like an excuse, as if they're just deliberately attaching something completely non-related to an issue. I, it sounds like an excuse. There's no, there's no, no American far right oh. representative. Please stop. I'm not well, talking if, about if, that. Are we talking about the border? So we're talking about the border crisis. Uh, we were talking about uh, how Ukraine is tied to the border. I, crisis, I also don't see. I also don't together. see how they're the same. Uh, is there like a, a Mexican army invading Texas, annexing people? No, guys. Listen, Eastern I live North? in Dallas. No, I live in Dallas, and, and what's going on is a lot of sex trafficking. I see a lot of children that are actually, their parents are paying money to the cartel so they can come over right. here. So this is this is a business. This is not like, oh, just fuddy-duddy, I'm a refuge, my country stinks. As a matter of fact, you can even go look up the trucks that are full of the, a lot of these people, because they come across the border with nothing, but they pay other coyotes to actually carry some of their belongings across the border. So this right. is a planned invasion by the cartel, the most powerful mafia group in the world. Here to destabilize America because look, Japan doesn't have this problem. North Korea doesn't have this problem. Japan's doing that... great right now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Model hey, economic hey, and hey, social success. Hey, yeah, if they let more immigrants in, they might actually. Why is there any behind this trafficking? Who's really behind the coyotes? We need everybody, please. The Japanese. They're trying to. They're angry. Well, it starts with the Japanese. I'm going to start muting people. Okay. That was the first one I muted. It was Chud. I'll start muting everyone else. I chose Chud um, first because I know he can take it. Okay. Alex, uh, I want to let you finish your point, and then we have people on a list to go to. I want to make sure we get to Adam and MPU, but uh, Alex, I want to make sure you get to finish your point uninterrupted. uninterrupted. 
Well, and just to Vosh real quick, I would just say that the culture in Japan and the safety and a country like uh, South Korea or North Korea, I believe, safe if you're not getting killed by a dictator. I'm just saying there's other countries that don't just allow every Nigerian uh, ex-rapist into their country. And if you think that's a joke, there are literally people here that have been convicted of rape that are coming across here that don't have to go through any sort of paperwork. Yet if I wanted to leave, I have to have my passport. I, have to, I just went out of the country to Mexico. I had to spend four hours in customs nearly. So I'm just saying, why do I have to do all that? They don't have to be vaccinated you know they're just held to a, a different standard than an american citizen so what's happening is a, a foreign invasion uh, uh wait, and I guess that's can, I, can i ask you alex quickly no, i didn't but I'm oh, just then saying, you don't have to what do you let no me, then what are you complaining about wait let me throw, a lot of people you're saying nobody lost their job or nobody couldn't travel without a vaccine well, you just said they don't have to be vaccinated like you were whining you had to and it turns out you haven't so like what's the issue be, are you're like a Mexican you immigrant in terms of your uh, Fauci outfit. Well, now we're arguing semantics. I'm just saying at one point, you know that it was, I, it was an obligation to. Now we're arguing be epidemiology, actually. It's calling you okay, a hypocrite. Before, well, can we, we don't have to argue vaccine. Can I'm just go? saying they don't, wait, have wait, to, they, they don't have to have a passport. Topic, Why do I have to have a passport? Let's 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 be clear. The, the topic is let's bring it back over to this being uh, tied to Ukraine. I wanted to throw this back to the people on the list. I want to throw it over to Adam. What do you think about the idea the topic of these? also was Israel, you know. Yeah, well, that was also. you can yeah, can we get into Israel? Can we get into Israel, you want, you Israel want, please? Can you tie it to Israel? Okay, I've got a really important wait, question Israel. to ask. Okay. This is important. 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 One second. This... All right. Okay. Ch 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 muted, so I'd like to mute him again because it's fun. Uh, Adam something. Uh, you're on right. the list. You've been waiting. Sure. I wanted to make sure you got a chance to speak. And then we're going to... We should move over to Israel and Gaza and talk about that a little bit. But of course, I made it Ukraine because it's I can. Uh, Adam? All right, sure. Thank you. So, Alex, first off, hey, how is, how is Russia doing in NATO? You know, I've heard you... <laughs> Well, they wanted to join a long time ago. And the first oh, of all, let me tell you something. I'm the smartest pimp on this panel. I'm the smartest pimp on this panel. So yes, yeah, yes well, I misspoke course, before. Yeah, well, I have misspoke yeah, well, before, but I'm course, still the biggest course, pimp here. Yes, I am the biggest pimp here. Do you also sex traffic? I am, yeah, I'm a pimp on a blimp. I got these clothes on deck. When, yes. he, when, when, when he said he saw all the trafficking in Dallas, like he was seeing it from like a first person, like he was actually doing it. As a customer, as a customer, right, so, working think? together to beat the cartel. Yeah. All right. Dude, so, I so, okay, so, so first of all, just, 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 just to address. We only have so much time. So Adam, uh, now that right, you're so, done dunking on him. Okay, so, ju so just, to, just to quickly address some points. So Japan is not a good example in terms of immigration or Korea. Both, both of those countries are dying as we speak, uh, right? So let's not bring it up. Also, oh my also, God, I, but uh, well, let it away, let it finish. Right. Sure. So anyway, and like I, I noticed that like our sort of opponents, like people on the right here, like uh, their arguments are basically just variations of distilled boomer Facebook posts. So that's that's a bit disappointing. Otherwise, uh, in terms of the immigration and the and the uh, southern southern border, and in terms of America, like as a European, I I just want to share like a few quick few lines of a banger song I've heard recently. It's, it goes, "Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched re refuse of your teeming shore. Send these homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift fly my lamp beside the golden door." I think it's a great song, but like. Uh, I, I I don't know I don't I know why took that Frenchy statue. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So like, I, I, and so like I. So this is the big contradiction for me from my perspective, because like America is all about land of the free, like, go there, you can make it. Meanwhile, conservatives are hell bent on turning uh, Amer America into this like little walled garden sort of uh, white so, majority sort no, of. So uh, uh, now we don't have. Wait, 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 wait. I want to make sure this goes to MPU because he wants to talk and he's been on the list for a while. And then I want right. to throw it over to Chud because Chud has started a protest movement in my chat about being muted. So I want to make sure he gets recognized as an oppressed person. So I'm Pete. Free Chud, hashtag free Chud. Yeah, how, how have I not been muted, but Chud has twice? Like, that's just not fair. So yeah, to, to kind of get to um, your point, America has probably the most generous immigration policy of any country on the world. If you step across the border without permission in Mexico, they lock you up, okay? There's just, that's it, you get locked up. OK, we have a, 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 over a million people entered this country through a legal process. And we have uh, under the Biden administration close to eight million thus far illegals that have crossed, many of whom are um, are convicted felons. They've been they've been deported once, twice, three or more times. 
okay and they're still coming across and the and the president or the current administration has done nothing to quell that tide they just simply make it easier they they made an app making it easier for people to come in and then they just simply change the terminology around so these people can have quote unquote legal status while they're waiting for up to 10 years as lecture fan put out uh, a few minutes ago we um the cartels this is not about the war on drugs, Fabian, with all due respect, I, I get where you come from uh, as a libertarian, that there's no real federal rule or federal control for gun uh, for drug policy uh, or they shouldn't. That's your that's your take. Right. But the problem is, is that the cartels are making as much or I more money. Varied analysis. I'm not I'm not a boomer con. I don't care. OK, the point is, is that the, the cartels are making uh, as much or more money trafficking in human bodies, OK, than they do in, in drug sales. Right. So uh, let's 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 just put it out there. We don't if we build up um, South America, oh, it's not going to keep do the people. Do you deny, do you deny the government that, because that the, the government problem would be lessened? Low. Do you deny that the problem would be lessened if we stop the war on drugs? Yes or no? I, no, I don't think it will. Okay. Well, so before we, before believe, we, wait, wait, before you, we you devolve into the, the war on drugs, will make the exact same amount of money. I, I, I just wanted to say, well, the we make more, everything more, except more except before, before, less before we, before, before we devolve into the war on drugs. The cartels. Have wait, wait. I'm, I'm asking you both to wait. We're delving into a totally separate topic now, uh, and I want to make sure we pull it back a little bit. And Shud has been waiting. He says he's oppressed. I want to give him a platform as a progressive. I, I give oppressed people platforms. Shud, what do you have to say? Yes. Well, I tried to make it about Ukraine, but Dylan wasn't interested in exploring. I thought you said it. Israel. Oh, I invite you to make your conclusions about that. When I asked you about what was going on in Ukraine, but that doesn't matter. The only thing I wanted to say, maybe this can kick off the Israel conversation. Why is it that America needs to give money to Israel? Because surely the Jews, sorry, the Zionists, the Zionists are, you know, more on top of that already, surely. Oh, that's an easy question, because Israel's well, the most, legit, most legitimate... <laughs> A country in the Middle East. They're oh, the we should get the cartels to give them our the money. They're our best ally. They the They've been the most wonderful ally. They help us fight terrorism. They're the they're the indigenous people of that land, subject to horrible, horrible, radical Islamic extremism. You've got Americans that were captured by H Hamas. Uh, I, Israel. Israel's our best ally. They're one of the greatest countries on earth. Full support for Israel. How the fuck do you maintain we shouldn't be giving money to Ukraine? But you, but did but, I say, but did then I you, say you lecture fans in favor of AD I have an idea. as well. The, okay, okay. So, I'm in, so I'm in favor of balancing. The, okay, all right. All right. I'm fair in enough, favor of balance. I'm in favor of balancing the budget, and then once you yeah, balance, no, no, no. balance that's, the that's budget, you, then you can send it to Ukraine. Okay, but but you don't need to do that first to send money to Israel, like Israel's it, special no. or something. I, I do think Israel's different from Ukraine, and I'm so proud of the Republicans and conservative movement. The conservative movement has come out strong in support of Israel, despite the despite the non-support for Ukraine. And I think there is a difference between Israel and Ukraine, and I'm so happy to see the Republicans and the conservatives full. It really support makes you Ukraine. wonder what if the uh, money referring to immigration thing was uh, was was actually not an issue, and it's just a way of avoiding the actual topic. You know, um, obviously, that's the yeah. reality. It's, it's, the reality well, it's, it's always if, if it's always it's always Congress, a proxy issue. It's like when they wait, say wait, like. Can, oh, well, we need can to... I can I ask that around the room? Do people think that the tying of immigration to the foreign aid bill is about solving immigration, or is it about killing the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, Israel, killing the Taiwan Ukraine bill? bill. Killing no. the aid. Killing, uh, killing, the bill. Bill. Killing, yeah. killing the bill. It's about, it's yeah. about neither. It's about Kill fucking bill. politicians and dumb fucking conservatives that follow their fucking coattails on Twitter instead of actually thinking for a goddamn moment. And politicians just want something to browbeat and beat their fucking chest about. Like it's the like, idea that like the idea that these two things are the same in this giant complex fucking budget is ludicrous. It's just it's a way to get to, to go. Why are we spending money over there when we should be spending money at home and it's like or we could just stop spending money on shit that makes the problem worse but i've actually no a nice a neat theory system. about this by the way uh, i've actually a nice neatly packaged theory uh, see uh, let's see what you think so uh, the gop uh, seems to support aid to israel uh, unconditionally basically and they seem to yep. drag their feet yep. on ukraine right they're tying it to the border stuff so 
since the GOP has been getting more and more far right, you know, so on one hand we have Israel, which is uh, working on, which is led by a far right government, uh, may, aiming to ethnically cleanse the Gaza Strip and create an ethno state, uh, and inside Israel, as it's as it's, as it's been happening on the West Bank, for example. And on the other hand, we have Ukraine, a liberal democracy, fighting against a similarly far right uh, invasion force, a traditional sort of very uh, far right, traditional conservative, conservative, etc., Christian fascist almost uh, government. Uh, Russia, right? And the GOP is not really in favor of supporting the U Ukrainians against that, right? So I, I see a kind of strange pattern here that like fascist invasion done by uh, like against the liberal democracy, we do not support liberal democracy, and then b uh, invasion and ethnic cleansing by a. But wait, Lex Chavan doesn't want to support, support Russia, does he? Lex right. Chavan doesn't want to give money to Russia. That would be the equivalent, surely. You need to find far right. You use far right Sorry? four times. It's when a person is bad. Yes, yes, right, right, right. So, wait, wait, wait. Multiple of course, people have asked some questions. Can we have one person? So first, can I, can I quickly respond to the? Oh, sorry. Do you want to do that question instead? Okay. No, no. Yeah, just, just like the, just, the random just, journalism just, slur. Like what the fuck? No, no. Just, just, right? just, just, yeah, just a quick response. Yes. Yeah, so far, right, would be Russia, for example, a uh, hyper nationalist sort of a very traditional uh, Christian What's an example. Uh, can you give a definition? Oh, far right, sure. So the far right is a sort of a also on the uh, is characterized. I can give you characteristics. So it's characterized by sort of hyper nationalism, sort of a, a very sort of hyper masculinized uh, culture and state ethos. It's sort of looking back to a to a greater to a great future and sort of eulogizing a great future and generally thinking that the degeneracy from certain sources, certain ethnic groups or is that Alex Stein? Is ruining. Is ruining. Is ruining. Are you saying Alex Stein is far right? Are you saying Alex Stein is far right? Right. Oh, well, I, I mean, I'm the only one here. He's, 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 he's a famous I mean, he's, Alex he's Stein is a, is a humble patriot, from what I've heard. Yeah. One hundred percent. But he first supports, of all, let me just he say supports this. cartel business. He can't be an American chauvinist. Oh, yeah. Exactly right, because I have to uh, I have to tip the strippers. I mean, and that's one thing that everybody needs to realize. Idolizing a politician is like thinking the stripper actually likes you. None of these politicians like us. They don't care about us. They're never going to solve our problems, Relax. especially Vladimir Zelensky. But or Joe Biden or even, believe it or not, you know, Donald Trump is not perfect, even though I love the man. And he you know, likes to grab him by the you know what, just like I do when I'm at the strip club with the sex trafficking victims. But my point is, I really don't like aid to either of them. I mean, I want to help out Israel, of course, but then also Israel kills three of their own hostages that are waving white flags that makes me kind of feel like maybe we should be shooting less guns at each other and maybe less innocent people will get shot so you know i mean i'm just i know that sounds crazy but i'm very yes, anti-war no, yes. wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Do you want a peace agreement Oh, of so course you, and you, i think that's what everybody you, wants you, but you, i don't you, understand you, why well, but this is the problem is it going to be a two states how is it going to be a two states i can't hear his well question. this is what we're they crowd. say let me hear crowd. what's your question with who do you want to make peace because all the well, people this is what they, say. They, they would say that it would be a two-state solution, but I don't well, know if that's do you make even possible. In Ukraine? How do you make peace in Ukraine? A another two-state solution. I mean, you guys have the Donbass region, yeah, and then you, you, you have Russia and Ukraine. Do you, know, do you know what the they should have just agreed with Vladimir Zelensky. You know, I mean, no, with, uh, no, Vladimir no. at the beginning. Do you know what the Russian position is? They the want Russian the Donbass region. Yeah, no, they still insist to this day. To this day, they still insist on all of Ukraine. They well, have let them no have it. Who gives a damn? Why Ukraine's fake True. anyway. No, 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 no. This is this is what garbage. Okay, Look listen. Russia's it. Russia's borders were assigned at birth in 1993. They signed a treatise. You will you will never have the Donbass. Like this idea that Russia can just change its borders, like uh, like uh, based on what you know, like uh, like a woke doctor. No, ridiculous. There are two states, Ukraine and Russia. They have tightly defined, biologically ordained borders. And what Russia has been doing lately is a ridiculous postmodern attempt at subverting the traditional Ukraine Russia border with this I don't know this 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 what like cry bullying ridiculous no I I fully support whatever aid is necessary to return Ukraine and Russia to their biologically ordained status well, to if a nine -year -old, let me say this let me say this if a you nine year old can necessary. biologically if a nine year old can biologically change her sex then I think Russia can biologically change but, her so, border so I mean, I when does the country get to Lockheed so how, do, how, how does the country get to against the nine how do you get to decide which country does get to exist and which one doesn't where well, it's simple you, you played a video decide? game have you ever played a video game before or a board so you game? want to live in a world of like whoever has more resources more rights. guns usually oh, wins. Do you really want to you really want to enter a dog eat dog world we're already in it we're already in it 
We're already in it, bud. He's already in it in Dallas. Years and, and sit we're in only in it if we allow it to happen. Trust me, we're you've been eaten by the dog already. You already got those cat ears. You've already been eaten. You know it's dog eat dog. I mean, that's just that's how it already is. So, so, you want you to, know, so you want to. We all need to run away to the beach at this point. Have, all the agreements, everything else, is just let everyone do whatever the fuck they want. Just invade, conflict, and everything. Well, no, of course, you know how much frozen conflict I don't want them yeah. to fight. I'm just saying, you know, it, it's it's a futile fight in the Ukraine, and we're just giving them money. They need futile? to come to an agreement. Why is it futile? Because they're not going to beat Russia in a war. It's going to be like Vietnam or the Why war in Iraq. Think Vietnam I don't know Russia if you can win modern day pause, Wait, pause for a second. I just wanted to, I, I'm curious for my own. Who's Vietnam in the Vietnam analogy? Well, I guess you'd say Russia's America in the Vietnam analogy, but you know they would just would they still be go Vietnam there. in the Vietnam analogy or <laughs> Vietnam won? Well, you can you show me I on know. a map where Vietnam is? What I'm sitting there, probably not. Honestly, I mean, I mean, what do I look like? A, a, you, know, you probably couldn't either, dude. I'm telling you, you, you get a map of fifty states. It takes you a couple of tries. Well, to you can name you can all. tell because and famously, America all. annexed the Donbass portion of Vietnam back in seventy three. <laughs> I'm just saying, regardless, guys, a modern day war doesn't have winners and losers. I mean, I guess you could say the Taliban beat America, but I guess that's just what they're they're just going to stay there. It's it's well, they'll just stay there and fight forever, but it's just, you know, it seems so true, Fabian. As America, people dying in war is bad. I can agree. It's right. It's the people that keep dying. It's the the Russian soldiers that get conscripted to go die in Ukraine, and it's the Ukrainians that are dying as we continuously fund it because. You know, we have some fucking ego about this n- vague notion of stability, as if America is this paragon of fucking stability. Is that any big fighting? The Ukrainians. Do you think that I can't hear anything? Do you think it's seventy fucking years? Okay, wait. If you all talk at the same time, I can't hear anything. I know Vosh wanted to talk, and I know Kraut wanted to talk. So, can I get it? And let sure I write your name down. Okay. Now, I just I just want to say it's it's always weird to me how what start out as like measured conversations on budgetary allowances for support of Ukraine turn into stuff like this nebulous notion of peace. It, everything degrades into talking like an anime villain. Like, yeah, I think if you asked your average Ukrainian whether or not they are more stable today or four years ago, they could give you a pretty clear answer. I think that global stability is actually a pretty understandable context or like concept. America, be- we are the global market. America benefits massively from the world running like a well-oiled clock uh you know as much as some corporations in america benefit from war and to be sure they do i'm not suggesting otherwise for the most part we benefit from the world being stable so does russia by the way it's not like the average russian citizen is doing fantastically right now ideally they would eventually you know upgrade to a liberal democracy or god willing a socialist one but you know that's one step at a time but in order for us to like facilitate that process we have to get our hands dirty with making difficult decisions when it comes to what we do or don't want to support The idea of like fully abdicating ourselves from global responsibility, it's a child's fantasy. It's like a kid not wanting to get involved in schoolyard drama. We can't help it. And we're the biggest country in the world in terms of power. There's no escaping the responsibility that comes with that. Again, you set up these false dichotomies of like where where the idea that we shouldn't be continuously funding a proxy war means that America is this like... 1910s isolationist country nation before the progressive era right like it it, it's very simple to say like you don't have to advocate one extreme over the other you can very easily say america should be doing everything it can to try and strong arm ukraine and russia into peace agreements and you could be saying the exact same thing about israel and hamas or any other conflict in which for whatever fucking reason we're funding multiple different sides and we're bleeding money that we shouldn't be spending and yeah you say well we're all about well, stability. we're not really well, spending money on ukraine and we should the be ukraine using, boy, it's not we should be using that power the to Ukraine, Ukraine to get is stability. Okay. We are the Ukraine 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 concept Ukraine. that you Ukraine can have I'm when it benefits you, and then that? you get to throw away when it is. Okay, the Ukraine, Ukraine war is not a proxy yes. war. The Ukraine war is not a proxy war. The Ukrainians are going to continue fighting even if you cut aid. It would be nice if you gave aid. It would be the right thing to do. But if you cut it, the Ukrainians will keep fighting, and the Europeans will keep shipping their aid to Ukraine. It is not a proxy war. I don't know why that always has to be fished. Can I, sorry, I can't hear the end of, I couldn't hear the end of crowd sentence. Could you say that one more time? I don't, wait, sorry. I don't know why this idea always has to be brought in that it is a proxy war, that somehow Russia is in some way benevolent here, that somehow misunderstood or something. What? No. Russia is not being misunderstood. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying Russia's benevolent. 
Okay. Well, it's uh, not a proxy war. It seems like these positions always kind of come adjacent. Because again, it's like you could say this isn't our business or whatever, but then a bunch of other stuff slips out, like vague notion of stability or proxy war. It's look, us funding an ally is not crazy. That's not some like wild new overextension of state power. Nations have been doing this since before the nation state even existed. The idea of our ally is under attack, we should help them, goes back as far as organized human civilization. I mean, this is pre-language so it's, it, not it, just about alliance. it's not just about alliance in the last 20 years russia has started nine wars or been involved right, in russia. nine wars all of them of aggression all of them like in moldova russia is a naughty boy transnistria bombing Nobody syria russia. etc they have been very aggressive and their goal is very clearly outlined they want to turn europe into a bunch of poker chips to be divided up into spheres of influence so, okay, so it's, it's wait, sorry, we gotta pause this we don't have much time left so i want to make sure the people have been waiting get to talk i know mpu has been waiting i've seen him trying to get in a few times so i want to make sure mpu gets to talk and lecture fan i put him on the list so i gotta give him time to talk i stick by my commitments and then we'll kick some people out Okay, so um, it is, the situation in Ukraine is a proxy war. The situation in Israel is a proxy war, um, because when we send our when we send our munitions or we send money over there, okay, to achieve an objective, we're letting them do the thing, but we're paying for the thing, okay. Um, <clears throat> And the problem isn't so much the problem isn't so much that we are sending military hardware. We're actually paying Ukrainian pensions. This is money that the Congress is uh, or not the Congress. Well, actually, the Congress and administration have sent to Ukraine to actually pay for pensions of government employees and military personnel. So it's not just like there's this clean, pure audit trail. Everybody knows this piece of equipment came in. This piece of equipment was expended. There is a lot of corruption in what's going on in Ukraine. And the people that are saying put a pause on it or put more restricted, uh, restriction in control, they just want to understand where everything is going and that it is reasonably accounted for. You can't account for everything. It's not that's not going to happen, right? You're not going to have a, a complete and total accounting. Who, who, who is we don't have bills, accounting. Who is paying the, the bills American, for, for the Ukrainian? The no, who's paying the bills for, for for Ukrainian state employees right now? The, the Ukrainian Dutch. government. Yeah, the, the Dutch. Ukrainian government. The Dutch. The Dutch. The Dutch, well, the Dutch government yeah, opened the Dutch its budget are, to the uh, Ukrainian the, government. Uh, yes, sir, sure. sure. So most, yeah. most, the Dutch, most, the Dutch most are literally expensive. paying right now for yeah. all the state employees. When we Ukrainian send billions of dollars, when we send billions of dollars of hardware, material, or money over there, yes, okay, hardware, it's the American. Tax in hardware rate. mostly in hardware mostly but so most most of the oh, yeah. money most transfers money. are done by the uh done, done from, coming from the eu so the functioning of the ukrainian state is held up by the eu uh, the eu taxpayers who support this by the way not the american taxpayers america mostly sends hardware which which is calculated as money but it's hardware uh, money is sent mostly by the eu right we're sending I, I, I want let to me answer that let me rebut that alex you have to wait because we're already we're already Hit the time, and lecture fan is sitting there waiting like a very polite. I want to hear what Alex is going to say. No, I, well, I just I, want to I, say I, it I, is money because the biggest industries in America, are Raytheon, Halliburton, is our military industrial complex. So we get to give them our old equipment so we can yes. build ourselves. Who runs those? Who runs those companies? companies? I'm, I'm asking I think, a lot of, I think a lot of what you see, a lot of what you see amongst the isolationists uh, on the panel is a result of Americans being wonderfully secure we've had total security we've had a great economy i love that that kraut started out this conversation by basically saying that trump was right that europe was never paying for their own defenses enough and now europe is having to ramp up trump was right more perfect union brings up a great point about the reason that ukraine is different from israel is because ukraine is corrupt and the bidens themselves were involved in corruption in ukraine and so that's why there's a whole bunch of questions about sending all of this money there that's that's the big issue here zelensky is actually related to biden it's like a long long con you know not a problem with netanyahu okay there's, some... there's one thing though there's one thing that i really want to add in here. Why that's funny. the americans mostly send equipment they don't send money to send equipment and the reason why so many of us in europe really want the equipment from america to keep going and keep coming second hand equipment I, yeah, and and this is I'm sad that like none of the Things military that we can YouTubers smell. like those are assets. Uh, what, like, it's like sad that like has Laser Pig or one of the military YouTubers is not here. One of the biggest surprises of this war is just how much superior American weapons are to Russian weapons. It's insane. Like 
Adam probably saw the videos them himself yeah, we've known we've known one that single Bradley taking out an entire column of twelve Russian armored vehicles and tanks. Yeah, it's pretty it's insane. Crazy. It's insane how much superior that equipment is. Yeah, and actually, in, in terms of selling, in, in terms of selling though, the fucking Twitter might get in, really mad in, at you. Using in terms of selling though, like lo those things have been sitting in storage for like 20, yeah, 30 years with no they're buyers. Yes, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but 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 they're still very useful against Russian hardware, which is shit. So uh, if there were buyers for that, I mean, there aren't really any buyers, at least not trustworthy buyers. You, you don't want like geopolitical enemies or untrustworthy countries buying your stuff because then they then they'll know their weakness, etc. Right. So and. Um, What's being, being, what's being transferred to Ukraine has been sitting in storage for 20, 30 years. And one point I quickly want to bring up, uh, when Quick, Ukraine hits quickly, one of the... We need to, we need yes. to kick people off. I already got uh, yeah. the people. Okay, 20, 20 seconds, all right? So when Ukraine hit that Russian forward helicopter base with the Atakams uh, missile, uh, then that, that missile was manufactured, manufactured in 1996. It was just time to decommission that missile, which costs money, which, you know, you, you have to pay technicians, etc. And instead of decommissioning it, you just ship it to Ukraine, have fun, use it, good luck, and then a bunch of Russian hardware gets smashed. Right. Right. And, then, and then the U.S. turns around, right? And then the military industrial complex says, well, we have to replenish all of this hardware that we gave away. And then the taxpayers of the United States end up having to pay the bill down the road again. With It was going to be decommissioned anyway. It was going to be decommissioned in months. It's okay, the same thing. So I got a uh, – we're going to be kicking people out. But first, I got a $100 donation. So they're, they get to ask a question because they donated money, and I'm a capitalist now, so I make the money. So this is a one hundred dollar question, and it's for and it, it seems to be for uh, lecture fan Alex Stein and NPU. Do you think that General Alden's plan would have been able to reduce loss of life and increase efficiency in the Ukraine Russia war? Not familiar with General Alden's plan, whatever the hell that is. Alex, no. MPO? <laughs> no. Okay. It's a very detailed, but it's a very good plan. Well, I well, guess we will have to do more research plan. then. Well, well, well you dollars. That was a great use yeah. of your money. You could have, I don't know, uh, saved like a few like very poor children in a third world country, but you did this instead. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyway, let's kick the people that are going to get kicked today. Uh, the people that are going to get kicked, and uh, this was... Oh, here's the list. <clears throat> I'm very sorry. Adam Kraut, Europeans kicked out of the conversation Whoa, sorry. Sleep. <laughs> kicked out thrown over the top rope i'm very sorry you guys go to bed now bye bye i love you both yeah. bye bye the I next two, farewell adam good luck the next two yep. uh that are uh kicked is to do, 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 do uh fabian and oh is this true ah, i can't believe it chud i'm very sorry one oh. round gutting <laughs> that's shit. Oh, more people are getting kicked it's a fucking yeah. massacre Oh no! People didn't like what I, I had to say about the Jays, clearly, but it's all good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye bye, bye bye, everybody. Bye. It's an uneven round this time because we have some people made cancellations, so we're, you know, we have to we have to change the voting system. We have a very transparent system here when we choose who gets kicked and who doesn't get kicked, based upon my interests and my interests very, alone. Yeah, it's a very DNC style. Um, it's a very good. It's a very yeah, good behind system. the scenes. Yeah, it's a very good system. We it's have, like, a, we have is a central like those committee that works with a board. It's very the democratic. Mail -in voting it's happens. very democrat. We all of our votes are digital, and I have them all on a hard drive that I keep around my uh, my neck. All of the votes are digital. You vote it's only by TikTok. Okay. Yeah, the voting drops appeared at the last moment. You know, completely yes. changed the yeah. Now we're gonna get into some serious topics. Now we just talked about a war, so we need to get into something actually serious. Okay, and that's the war on hey, Christmas. Swiss. The war on Christmas. Oh. It's been I think resumed. we should have a different war, and it's the war on this topic. The war on Christmas True. is intense, it's deadly, it's awful, and they're going after the good faith. So the question is for the room, is there actually a war on Christmas, or is it a blown out proportion just by like Fox News hosts and nonsense? There's <laughs> just a massive amount of religious bigotry on the left. Tons of religious bigotry and hatred on the left. In True, America. I agree. No, not enough, though. Oh, no. Um, okay. So if I, if I can, I'd like to say that, you know what? I do agree. There is a war on Christmas, and I think it's fucking based, all right? Um, I, uh, I think... I think we should, um, uh, you know, I think we should continue the war on Christmas. In fact, I think we should actually bring in like heavy artillery, um, shoot down any Christmas trees that we see. Um, we need to make this like a true secular utopia. 
Okay, right, the, 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 to, to, to link it back to link it back to the previous uh, topic, you're already funding the Iron Dome, so why the fuck didn't that shoot Santa down? That's what I want to know. What's it well, there for? Because um, bad boys and girls don't get presents, so he never had to visit there. Um, Ooh. Look, I, I, my my fucking contention here, and the thing that drives me up the wall, okay, is that there's a very obvious, there's a very clear way of handling this, okay, and it's that you should say Merry Christmas on Christmas. And when it's not Christmas, you say happy holidays. I don't get, like, this This seems so straightforward. What, like, I guess conservatives want us to live in a world where it's like December 17th Luke and you Dan go to the store and someone says Merry Christmas. No, the fuck it isn't. What are, what are you talking about? That's not for a week optimism, or more. Um, that, it's, it's insane to me. Economy. Happy holidays isn't even like, you know, oh, you're replacing Christmas or whatever. It's just not fucking Christmas yet. Um, anyway, yeah, the, the war on Christmas fucking talking point is really dialed down now. I guess it's just all trans people or whatever conservatives are obsessed with trans cock. I don't know. Um, because the, this like rush Limbaugh era of like American good old boy folksy town hero shit is dying because people won't say Merry Christmas on December 1st. I just haven't heard it in a while. Maybe it's cause Tucker Carlson's not currently with Fox. Maybe he'd be doing that bit if he was still with them. Well, I just want to say at this point, I was just in New York City, and I was so surprised by the hotel rooms were so much more expensive in December because I'd been there multiple times this year. And I thought, oh, well, it's because there's all these great Christmas lights. But literally, other than 30, 30 Rockefeller Center, there wasn't that many Christmas decorations in New York. And I always thought, like, I always envisioned the movie Home Alone, where it's just Christmas everywhere. But New York wasn't like that when I was there. So I do think Christmas is dying. But a lot of that is a Hanukkah envy because Hanukkah gets eight crazy nights and, you know, uh, Christmas only gets one. So you're going to you're going to obviously the Christians are going to be a little jealous about that, you know, and Jesus was a Jew. So they kind of like a lot of Jewish stuff. So, you know, I do think there is a, some sort of a war on Christmas. I think that there's less um, jolly uh, spirits during the holiday seasons. And for whatever reason, maybe because people are struggling financially. I don't know. But it does seem like there is less Christmas decorations and less Christmas joy around the holiday season here in America. Also, Protestants are godless, and this is also a big issue. Like, Catholics know how to throw a party, and Protestants, the only thing they can do to celebrate Christ is to, like, play the same three songs in every department store in America for one and a half say months. That, Bush, but, but the Protestants are acting very much like the Catholics in their need to feel oppressed. They, they, they need to be downtrodden by this. Certainly, they, and they've I, taken nothing but the best right. qualities, to be sure. I just, I can't stand the department store music, you know? Um, like, does anyone really think we're honoring Christ with the fucking, the, the Gaudi, like the nanosecond Thanksgiving ends? Or or before, they don't even care. They'll do it before fucking uh, Halloween these days, you know? Ridiculous. Jesus Christ would have wanted us to celebrate Halloween with everything decorated in black and orange. The idea of introducing Christmas stuff before then is just ungodly. That point. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, look, I, I, um, I agree. Um, I like, uh, I like Halloween. You know, it's very spooky. You know, and uh, you know, I like the spooky holidays. Um, but as far as like Christmas goes, like maybe everybody realized that, like, you know, uh, the, a fat dude sliding down your chimney, you know, ruin your fucking chimney is bringing down your property value. Maybe people don't like to encourage that amongst their children. I don't breaking know. Breaking you mean? Yeah. I think I also, people are getting. Who even has a chimney anymore? That's what the green agenda is True. all about. Getting rid of fireplaces was to stop Christmas. It was the ultimate war. You know what's Christmas. hilarious? Flex. It's half you motherfuckers bitch about Christmas. You don't even believe in Christmas. But then you want to try to make the, the, the right or the conservatives the cuck in the matter about Christmas. First off, I could give a fuck too less about any Zionist ideology about what Christmas is and their marketing ploy to keep making me spend my fucking hard-earned money. But you fucks especially you socialist fucks. How about you guys explain to me what Christmas means to you? No, no, so because, I mean, everything... Your money. No, no, he, no let, okay. Zion, let's, Zionist, let's let him finish. Zionist, he, he's, Zionist, he's, he's, he's Zionist have, have a role here. Zionists have created this model where they make the, the, these conservative Christians and Catholics all agree to their little approach to Jesus, who they plucked, right? We all know this. And then on the flip side, they're, everybody's like, oh, these fucking conservatives who love them some Jesus on the wall, they're the ones that are upset. I never believed in that white Jesus on the wall, never. But I'm still a conservative, right? I still believe that everybody has a right to their religion. Yeah, I, I agree that this is a whole bunch of fuckery. But just like I would say to Dylan before, and I'll say now, fuck Israel, fuck Ukraine. Don't give a fuck about any of it, including your holidays. I That's agree. what I'm saying. Y'all can quit arguing about it. 
Fuck Christmas. I have newly, Hit, fuck Christmas. Anybody who's down. complaining about yeah. Christmas becoming outdated is just uh, being a crybaby. Critical that's support that's for it. Israel and their war against Christmas. Like, uh, this is very much like an enemy of my enemy of my enemy. But, you know, like, if, if that's what it takes, then all right. I'm willing to allow the IDF to be deployed to American Macy's so they can stop playing that fucking music You're since, right. like, uh, the beginning uh, of November onward. Critical support for Israel is a very different tune than you used to have on Twitch. Yeah, J-Dams are the only oh. possible solution to um, non-stop Christmas tunes. Santa should be a black man with all the breaking and entering he does, and that's not a racial thing. That's just a statistical Oh, my thing. God. Alex, you can't say that. Good yes, God. you can Thanks. say that. I do think Santa would... He I'm has a lot of black characteristics. I'm going to your fucking house if you don't shut the fuck up, Alex. That, what did I tell that's you? Just, you know, not, well, I don't I think, think that's progressive. I'm a newly strong conservative woman actually love Christmas. I, I love Santa a holiday that celebrates like men giving presents to women. I love it. It's yeah. perfect. I love Christmas. That's great. Santa should be a gay man. He has sex with his elves in my fantasy. Wait, I thought you said you didn't want him to be gay. You need to be consistent on this. Do you? No, I want him to be a black be gay? gay. I want him to be like uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. I would like it are to you be fu RuPaul. Can I just say? Can I just RuPaul Alex, Santa you... would serve cunt to be sure. This isn't really relevant <laughs> to anything, but are, are you fucking AOC? Because that's the news, right? That's the. I wish I'm about to be back in DC. I'm about to go sniff AOC's office area and just see if i can smell if this is this is modern trad conservatism it's like it's it's like how when you go on twitter and they're all like gunner lollicons or whatever and it's like this is going to bring back the fourth reich it's like that in aoc you know it's why do you the, bring the, up lovely the, the, the right the right was the right was correctly isn't the right was correctly criticized for hyper fixating on aoc for years so now it's like all right well we might as well own it <laughs> <laughs> Modern I conservatism. Like oh, she, um, and Alex yeah. Stein. Two white it's boys hot. privileged talking all the shit. What the <laughs> fuck? Both of you cucks. Both of you. You are fucking oh, retarded. Right, both of you. Okay. okay you motherfuckers. Bald, so you both bald, are fucking so. retarded. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I don't wait. This, guy, this, guy's, this, guy's, this guy's cooking. Hold I'm on. Saying, I'm asking you to quiet yeah, down, please. Help me, help me moderate. Yeah, yeah. Help me moderate. I'm asking you guys to help me right now. I'm not prepared for no. this job. I'm asking you guys to help me moderate by quieting down. Okay? Help me. Shut up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this topic was supposed to be about Christmas and the holiday season. This is supposed to be the soft topic. It's a dumb topic. Everybody ho ho ho. You, oh, it's a dumb no, it's topic. A stupid fucking topic. Why is it yeah. stupid? It's, it's a dumb brilliant dumb. topic. We're talking about the war on Christmas. It's an important issue. I, I actually think there's a lot of yeah, interesting stuff to talk about real. with regard to like I don't know culture of um, yeah, okay, family. Okay, let, let me let me let me pull the room. Who believes the war on Christmas is real? Raise your hand. It's a proxy war. Okay, why is it real for the people who think it's real? Kevin, I want to examine the. G I want to ex examine other opinions, Kevin. In the well, who the fuck it. believes in it? Who the fuck believes in it, Dylan? I'm this is one of those stupid ass takes you put up. What you do you put mean? That shit up you just some... said, wait, 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 redneck. I, I said fuck it all. Redneck. I said fuck I Israel and fuck who Ukraine believes. completely. Okay, I'm asking. I'm gonna ask you to think. Wait, Dylan, did you did you do the uh, Orthodox uh, Christmas? Yeah, I only meant Orthodox Christmas, of course. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm actually like, well, you were in Ukraine. Did you do Orthodox Christmas? Or I didn't did you do Orthodox. No, I actually I celebrated Passover. When I was in Ukraine, really? Yeah, I, oh, I nice. met a wow. a nice uh, some some Ukrainian Jews, and they invited me over for Passover. This this supports the Israel is destroying Christmas theory that we were examining exactly. earlier. Wait, you Zelensky distracted me. My, my gonna, point, wait, 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 wait. Can we stop? Let me let me Alice leave the show here Christmas for a moment. Tree. I'm gonna do a. How do I do a server mute? Everybody, <laughs> okay. Alex Stein and Lecture Fan, you guys believe the war on Christmas is real to some capacity. I think MPO also semi raised a hand. Can you explain that? Because it seems like the rest of the room doesn't understand. It well, really, it, yeah. You go ahead. You go ahead. I, I think what it is is it's um, it's a stand-in for like just attacking Christianity generally, right? The 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 left can't stand the fact that you know people believe in a non-secular power that is you know greater than themselves, right? Um, and so they they come at anything that is Christian, whatever. And and to Redneck's point, right? It doesn't matter whether you support the Christmas holiday, the commercialism and stuff like that, which is it's way fucking overdone. I get that. Um, but really the message, the message for Christians is it's, it's about the birth of, of who they believe is the savior. Right. Um, and you can't attack anybody else's religion the way you can attack Christianity in this country. And it's fucked up. 
right? He's, you, he's don't, you, don't go you know, you know, you Donald don't, Trump literally just called again for, for a ban on Muslims, you right? You can't go. You can't. Go. Oh, for no fuck's no sakes! Fuck Donald Trump! Jesus fucking Christ! Get out of your head, you bitches! You can't, okay, he's only going to be president. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let, let's let, let's let MPU finish his thought, right? Let, let me let him finish his thought quick. Okay. Then let yeah. Redneck talk. Thought first. Ten seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. Um, if you went after Ramadan, okay, which is the Muslim High Holy Month, right? If you went at it with the same kind of ver of of verve that they go after Christmas or anything that's Christian related, there would be a fucking uproar. And I think that I think the hypocrisy of the left is just in fucking insane over it. Electra fan, you're yeah, so, also a fan yeah. of Jesus. Well, could you uh, chime well, in on this? Well, first of all, I do I do think that Vosh was correct when he said that the war on Christmas is not really a big political issue right now. I think that's largely because Trump was so successful in bringing it back, and people started saying Merry Christmas again. More perfect unions, right? That would you say that Trump Vosh won the war on Christmas? Vosh, Vosh, is, mm -hmm. Vosh admitted, yes. yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much did, yeah. Vosh admitted though that he's a religious bigot, and so this does come from not only not only a release of religious hatred and religious bigotry from the atheist left, but and it's not just Christmas. There's but a war. On all of our holidays, the Democrats and the left are trying to replace July Fourth with what? Juneteenth. They're trying to replace uh, the Christmas with Kwanzaa, which is a completely made up thing. So, and and that's all Democrats, designed to try to, Trump, to try to collapse. To try to collapse. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, that's all agreeing. designed to try to to try to destroy the foundations of our country and our holidays, whether it's July Fourth or Christmas. Then you collapse the society and try to replace it with socialism and screw Halloween. I, I won't celebrate what Halloween. Did, what did Whoa! Wait, 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 wait. The I war wanna, on Halloween wait, back too. Stop. So down. I, I love international relations theory, and so I wanted to ask it from that perspective. So would you say that the war on Christmas is a proxy war in the wider left's cultural uh, crusade against the holiday season generally, July, all the other holidays, Thanksgiving as well, of course? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's, it's absolutely part of the global, the globalist yeah. left. Absolutely, globalist left. Got you. Well, okay. I, was, there can we I, go. Can I say something? <laughs> I I feel like for for how much the right likes to talk about freedom of speech, freedom of speech, I should be able to say happy holidays whenever the fuck I want to. Why? Sure. It, why the uh, fuck are the why the fuck is the right of all people trying to police my fucking words coming out of my mouth? You can't do that shit. Don't ever. Think that you can talk to me and stop me from saying happy holidays. I will say happy holidays. You can say Merry Christmas back, so, and I won't fucking stop you. I'm not gonna put fucking tape over your mouth. It's only conservatives and 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 you know fucking right wingers who are ha like having a fucking meltdown over me saying happy holidays. So now, no, star. Star. So now star. Star. hold on. Star. Star. Can I give you? Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's have let's have one. I don't let's, fucking okay. Care. Okay, wait. I, who wanted to respond to Stardust's uh, I did, cogent points? I did. Okay, I'll let lecture fans respond, then we'll go over to Redneck. I just was, I was just gonna say real quick. Hilarious to hear Stardust and the left pretending to care about free speech. Ha! Yeah, right. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're talking? I'm literally the person who is like the most like I will talk to anybody and let them say you know crazy shit. And talk she has an OnlyFans. Stardust has no, an OnlyFans, so she's free speech. I do not have an OnlyFans. I do not yes. have an OnlyFans, okay, but I've been Star. on let, 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 let those Star. amongst Alex us. Knows, Star. Alex knows I'm pro free speech. So. Okay, red, red she next. is. She is. I thought she was not Star. Stardust is. the first time. Uh, this, this, is, this is strictly for Star. I'm so fucking proud of you. You were so good on that one. Keep yelling louder. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Are you simping for Stardust like that, Redneck? Look no, 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 that was a little bit of self. That was a little bit of self. It's a little bit of self. He's going to try to be big man, so he has to, like, patronize a woman to make his dick man. I'm going to show this over the Pixel. I saw Pixel. I saw, I saw, I don't know if anybody else saw Pixel's fantastic edit of the, uh, of the of the uh, promo for the uh, for the show, it had all of your uh, names replaced with the word men, and then her face plastered on the front. Of it. it was brilliant. It was beautiful. And so I want to yeah. throw it over to her because you haven't had much time to talk. I'm just so happy to be here today, so that you don't get cancelled for not having enough, you know, representation. Yes, like, thank you. Please help me, please. Among please. esteemed intellectuals, like I just, I love talking about this shit. I'm so happy you brought it back, and I'm just, yeah, really proud to be. Here. Do I not count as a woman now, Pixel? Is oh no. Around? Oh, no, your name's still on there. Oh, your name's still on there. Your name's still on there. I don't think your name is. You put Maddie Cake's name on there too, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, oh my God, no. Lift us all up. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. Right. Okay. Okay. So, God damn, I'm so, I'm so proud. Typical of women. There's two up. of them, and they start fighting. About time. About time. Alex, to put are balls you happy? We have so much female representation on the show. 
Yes, I started us and I are friends. So yeah, I'm, I love my girl Star. She's looking good. She's got the right camera angle, trying to get the, you know a few more clicks on the tits. I know what she's trying to do there. And then I, uh, Pixie, oh, come on, seriously, I I barely. Star, you're going clothes. cleavage. I've never yeah, seen you this I'm cleaved like, out. Okay, dude, I dress more conservatively than all of the female. Star, you can't win. Here. This you guy's a gooner. Even. You could. There's Star, nothing you could wear. You're showing it off tonight. No, I know what you're trying to do. You knew I was on the debate. You're not you knew I was on the you're debate. Winning the points in the point probably, system. Probably, so that's a fair fucking point, are. Alex. I'll give you that one. <laughs> you got her on that one. Star, this I guy probably, is a king for clothed women. You can't wait, win. There's nothing you could wear. Wait, one. I, I probably, I dress more conservatively 100% than on most conservative women, and I guarantee you, I probably live more conservatively than most conservative women. This guy has to wear a what condom on the subway gate? so he doesn't wear What about calendar trousers. gate? Wait, wait, Dylan, what about Calendar Gate? Are all those Republican women whores now? Because they, did, did you guys hear about you Calendar Gate? You never catch me on a calendar, by the way, like that, okay? Dylan, are you familiar with what I'm talking about, Calendar Gate, the conservative calendar that's no, making all that, the conservatives No, but that fight? sounds like something I need to buy. Yeah, look it up. Uh, Seth Weathers made a calendar of conservative women holding ultra-right beer, and all of the conservatives have been fighting each oh, other yeah. on Twitter all weekend because they say that it's softcore porn, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, the girls, I mean, have you seen that star? Are you familiar with it? I have seen that. Yeah. So um, a huge person leading the leading that is the Bryson guy, the rapper. Bryson um, Gray, Bryson, yes. Bryson Gray, and then um, a few other people are basically saying, oh, uh, this, you know, this is sacrilegious, this is satanic, you know they're they're um, <laughs> yeah. you know softcore yeah, they're, porn they're putting, yeah softcore porn and then there's a bunch of other women who are like well you know I, i'm just gonna dress how i want to dress we're just having fun with this you know so yeah so yeah but conservatives don't want women to dress how they want to dress they've, they've no interest it depends in that on the conservative it depends no, on which it, white yeah. women all conservatives to. want yeah. women to dress slutty they just want to complain that's about it that's not true no, Vash, that's not true. That's, you that's you have the, the, the you have that perception. Why do you, I've ever why, been do you on push, why do you push so many perceptions? Like that's the issue, right? That's why I told you, See, you the, and the fucking Alex are both the same motherfuckers. You're both motherfuckers of the same. You just need to look at the mirror. You motherfuckers are exactly well, we're, we're same. both cartels. You claim for different reasons. Uh, uh, that that bullshit. Wrong, you guys, you guys both sit online and talk off your asses without. You just say the stupidest of shit without ever. Actually thinking about how it applies to the actual people on the ground. Wait, what? What did I say? This, this is talking is... about what the hell are you talking okay, about? Okay, I can start. I mean, hold on, I can start. Alex, I Alex, 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 hold on, Alex. I'll be serious. No, no, no. I'll, I'll be serious. Alex, first off, wait, 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 wait. Everybody, quiet down. I'll give you a minute to do this, but then we got it. We're gonna. We only have six minutes left in a round, everybody. So I only need a minute to cook. That's it. Listen, Alex. I don't. I like your jokes. I think some of your shit's some of the most hilarious shit in the world. But you do say some racist shit. You come out of pocket from your mouth, and I'm telling you, from someone that's been on the streets. You better be careful because when you pop your mouth off the way you do online and some of the racist shit you do say, I'm surprised you were still walking with the fucking uh, a solid grill. Just being firm and telling you from a transracial racist here. And the you Black vouch Santa would all this shit out of him. All this, all this socialist bullshit that you talk and spouse, you never actually address who's in charge, though. You never address who's in power. Sure, it's all fun and games when everybody collectively helps each other. You know, I'm a redneck. I'm a fucking farmer. We're the original socialist, remember? But guess what? Guess what? You never address that. So you, all your points are always from a point of privilege. You and Alex are the both same white cucks in the world talking all this shit from opposite polar spectrums, and you're not looking at the people in the middle. That's the point I want to make. Too much of this, too much of this bullshit's happening these days, and I came out here to get this point across. Fuck Israel. Fuck Ukraine. All this war is about money. The trafficking that's happening down south is about kids so and their we're fucking talking lives. About the topic and is Christmas. You, I'm bringing it all together because I know I'm gonna get voted Christmas. off. Hey, fuck this. It's all about money, and the presents are to be. The presents need to be freedom and your humanity. The war on Ukraine, 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 Ukraine and Israel. Ukraine. 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 That was such a good soapbox. It was very Thanks good. It. Let me just rebut one thing that I make racial jokes. Of course I do, but I literally I hire and employ multiple black people. So to think that I would ever be racist. Motherfucker, I don't care if you hire. I don't give a fuck. They should punch your ass out for saying that shit in Minecraft. Look, dude, just point blank is this. Most people that make these comments. Why would I have so many African American employees? I wouldn't surround myself with them. Yeah, can I wait? Uh, a I fucking could, slave master had a whole bunch of black people around him, you dumbass. Oh, what the fuck are you trying to say? Okay, okay. Let's okay. reel it in, reel it in. I, I don't, we're, we're not, we're top, okay, we're, everybody, I'm going to ask everybody to quiet down because we're going towards kicking people. Uh, because it's the end of the round. We only got four minutes left. So since we only got four minutes left, everybody, why should you stay another round? I'm going to start with Kevin. 
I, I, well, I, I don't really give a fuck if I stay another round or not. I just want to point out that Vosh, being the dirty slut that he is, they were talking about cleavage, he gets his tits out straight away. Outrageous. <laughs> vote for me, don't vote for me. I couldn't give a fuck. Much love. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, Alex. Pimp on a blimp, always and forever, baby. Let me fly high tonight. Let's go. We're just getting started. We're just turning on. We're up to like four or five. We're going to try to get these things to 11 tonight. Okay. But what does 11 look like if this is four or five? Bad, Dylan. Bad to the bone. Ba -na 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 -na. I'm serious. It's going to get wicked and wild. Like a Will Smith song. Like your fan. Wild, wild West. Oh, I'm obviously the only rational one here, so. Okay, well, I, uh, that's a good point. A pixel. Um, can I stay because I'm pretty and I'm looking for a husband? Okay, that's this. It's an argument. Uh, redneck. Fuck you! Don't keep me. I hate all of you. I don't give a fuck. I'm done. I'm retired. <laughs> fuck. That's true. I agree. We, just, we did bring him out of retirement. Uh, Stardust. If you get rid of me, you are sexist and you're racist. Okay, so don't don't you think about it. If you think about it, you're a bigot. Two for one. I can use that camera angle. That is a good use of the camera angle. Yeah, that's a very good use. Oh, yeah. It's a, like it's like intentional. Am I fucking joking with you? Do you think this is a joke right now? Yes. Yes, I do. I swear to God, if you would have shown this much love on your own fucking show the other day, the last time we debated, you would have fucking done so much better. Star. Okay. God damn it. Where was this uh, fire? Red, uh, not Redneck, uh, Vosh. I'm also going to go for the pretty and looking for a husband angle. Thank you. <laughs> I'm right here, bitch. What? Let's go. Did you stabilize on one rate? Uh, is it one side now? Or is that for sure? Or is it just men? Or are we playing games? Because, I mean, if I get We're single, I, I could games. be looking... Okay, just redneck. Are you gay? Are you gay, redneck? I mean, I'm 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 a sexually active fifty three, almost fifty three year old man. That if anybody wants to hit on me and donate to my fucking fan book, if I have to have one, I'm at that. I'm almost at that point, right? I mean, there's a there's a viewer for everybody, and I I was told that I'm pretty good looking, so fuck it. I mean, I I'm yeah, not afraid of my sexuality, Alex. Anything that's so you're gay, gay. Is you're right. homosexual. Your last one. I think there's Why anything wrong with that. Around? Vosh, Vosh, why should you stay another round? Why should? Oh we... no, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm going for the um, pretty and looking for a husband angle. Okay, got you. So the other the the countenance of Pixel. Okay, well we we've got the the kicks here, and again, don't consider it personal. It's all for profit. Uh, we're first going to be kicking. <clears throat> okay, one second. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, Stardust, Kevin, MPU, and Red. Very sorry. Racist, racist, that is racist, racist. I gotta that is say, racist Stardust, I d we weren't gonna kick you. Then you said I can be racist and sexist, and then I had to. It's a two for one. Of course, of course. Thank of you. Course. So you, you uh, just got on the old ages. Yep. So. I'm kidding, of course. Thank you all for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, hippy dippy anniversary. The reason you guys were all invited is because I believe you guys are the heart and soul hippy dippy. Because you all have been part of hippy dippy for so long, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Dylan. Can I say one thing to you? What's that? Seriously. Thank you. Seriously. I hope you're safe and um, keep doing what you're doing because you're one of the only people on the left that I do respect because you go out and do what you say and you believe. That's all I ask from everybody. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Can Thank I you. just say one thing, which is uh, go and follow me at KFLogan1875. Yeah. That's true. On the fucking Sigma That's grind true. set, bitch. Let's go. And Stardust at Twitch. Star Stardust at Twitch or on YouTube. I prefer YouTube. But yeah, thank you. Uh, thank too. you for having me. Uh, and you guys are all racist, and I hate you. Oh, and MPU, you lasted for uh, one second. Uh, if you were one of the starters, so you lasted for an hour and a half. Well, you know, when you when you've been around as long as I have, you just kind of naturally drag through. So, um, Twitch.tv, the more perfect union. So, thanks very much, Alex. Nice to meet you here on this thing. Vosh, yes, I've not really had any inter interactions with you. Uh, I think I would like to have a conversation with you at some point. And lecture oh, fan, love you to death. And Pixels, keep singing because you do it so well. You guys have a good one. Dylan, stay safe. Thank you very much. Let's bring in the new fresh meat. Bring him in. Fresh meat, fresh meat. I have to wait for Danabo to do it.
There better not be any women in the next group of people because Wait. calling them fresh oh, you're is right. very misogynistic. Wait, are there any women? Oh, there oh are! Oh my god, I get to be a- No! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, well- uh -oh. Man, I was about to be a real pick-me. Now we've got some new guests. We've got Jeb Tam, we got Sprouticus, we have Maddie, and we've got Joe Lewis, who has a very interesting profile picture. Is that- who is that? Obama? Who, who is that? Spicy Obama. Uh, it's uh, Ice Spice Obama. Oh, it's Ice Spice Obama. It's Ice Spice Obama. Are you talking about me? Yeah, I was looking at your profile. I was trying to figure out who that was. You know, talking some shit while, it's, while my Discord's connecting. I'm trying to figure out what's your your profile image. Is that is that Ice Spice Obama? What is who, who what is that? What are you talking? You're saying about? you can't tell black people apart, Dylan. I can't. It's Obama. What are you talking about? It's one. It's one of the two. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't remember that hairstyle. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna get into the next topic. Uh, to do, do one second. I'm looking at the list here. I think it was uh, Colorado, wasn't it? It's the Trump Colorado decision. So Trump uh, got yeeted off the Colorado Republican primary ballot, and also since uh, we announced the topic, he also got yeeted off the main primary uh, ballot. Uh, so he's been yeeted off two primary okay. ballots, but this is not the only decision on this that's been uh, on this case like this. In other states, they've decided the exact opposite, that this is not allowed, that they don't agree with it for any number of reasons. And so I wanted to throw it around the room. What do you guys think of the Trump Colorado decision? I'm going to keep it as vague as possible so you guys can uh, grab, grab with it anywhere. And I'm going to go quickly around the room and make sure everybody gets a, a little bit of time to say something before everybody, you know, jumps into it because, you know, just you know new new we got a whole new four people so let's start with jeb tan yeah so i mean i'm a conservative i voted for trump in 2016 if he runs against biden again i would vote for him and i think that colorado was 100 percent correct to remove him from the ballot i think the 14th amendment is actually uh, absolutely relevant here um and the legal argument that it doesn't apply to president is just super weak um and i also have a serious problem with the fact that the dissent didn't even try to argue that he didn't commit or engage in insurrection um so i don't even think we need to argue on that here because they didn't even try to argue it so it seems as though the real argument for them is that it somehow doesn't apply to presidents which doesn't even pass the sniff test to me it just seems completely illogical stein it's criminal. They got to free my boy Trump. I mean, what they're trying to do to him is it's obviously they want to disqualify him because they are threatened by him. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a it's a total work. It's a criminal. I mean, everybody wants to say it was an insurrection, yet they are able to reconvene within three hours and still certify the election. So I don't know. I mean, I just I really I, I do not consider it an insurrection. So, yeah, I think it's it's absolutely criminal. And they need to free my boy Trump. But if Trump does go to jail, it might help him with the black vote or the Latino vote. So, like, I don't know. Maybe all this stuff is actually good that they're trying to kick him off about there because maybe it'll actually just pump him up more. You know, I think it might be um, counterproductive and actually, you know, help him in some sort of weird way. Hey, okay, we're going to go over to Joe Lewis now. That's crazy. I thought Alex, I, I thought everybody was just letting Alex just talk and he was just was muted. Nobody was saying shit. I had him muted since the last time we were on a panel together. That's crazy. Oh, you had me muted? I didn't even know what the fuck was happening. I was like, is he talking right now? And everybody's just like watching it happen. Like, oh shit. I'm you didn't up. miss oh, anything. Don't worry. Hey, he had you muted. No, shut up, boss. <laughs> sorry, I'm not talking about Lolly right now. I'm sorry. No, just uh, uh, patroning underage sex slaves from the cartel. Uh, so go on, Joe. Go on, Lewis. Yeah. It's been so long. I still had Alex server muted. That's crazy. What's up? Guys? Um, I disagree Welcome. with the decision um i don't think it's I, I i i don't know i just don't like the idea of refs deciding how the what the game is and broadly speaking beyond that i'm more of an all or nothing in this case so i really hope it does get challenged up to the supreme court for clarification because if it is the case that he's barred in these two states so far then it's all or nothing for me so he has to not exist on all the ballots or he has to exist on all i think when you have a situation where you're basically barring Republicans of deciding who the presidential candidate is. That's a, that's, I take an issue with that, regardless of political ideology and stuff like that. So I hope Republicans are ready to fight for something like this for the clarification. As long as we get the clarification, that's fantastic. And I understand the argument, 14th Amendment. Um, I just don't really agree with it on the principle. Okay. Lecture fan? 
Yeah, I actually I actually spent like an hour on the, the talk radio program that I guest hosted this morning talking about this. There's there's five or six major legal issues that you could talk about with this where it's completely wrong. Pretty obvious. Cl- clearly, clearly undemocratic. I saw that I saw that AOC ha- had tweeted out that the best way to protect democracy is to remove your political opponents from the ballot. The same way that Putin just did to, to several potential candidates, um, maybe 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 they the Democrats would maybe like to send Trump up to sure. a Arctic Circle prison, just like they uh, Putin has done to Alexei Navalny. But no, I mean you you could I could spend an hour talking about in depth all of the five or six main legal arguments about how wrong this is, but it, it's it's clearly outrageous. Clearly they're scared of Trump. Uh, you know, clear clear. I don't know if the Supreme Court will take it. It's just so wrong. And, and Trump is like 36 and one on all of these. And I think you're wrong, Dylan, that he's actually been booted off the ballot, I think, in both Colorado and in Maine. Both of those bodies that made that decision actually said, ah, we're going to we're going to put our own decision on hold. And actually, Trump is going to go on the ballot, even though we want to look cool at the cocktail parties and say, yeah, Trump was an insurrectionist, even though he clearly wasn't. All he did was challenge the election and have a constitutional legal theory under the Electoral Count Act about the power of the vice president when they count, which, by the way, Congress then went and clarified the Electoral Count Act afterwards, thus proving that there were valid legal arguments to be made. Pixel. I think American democracy is barely functioning at this point, but I think the decision in Colorado was legally sound. I think it will get challenged all the way to the Supreme Court, and I think that Trump will be on the ballot. And I I think that Trump potentially going to jail actually helps the white fan base because they want him to be such a fucking martyr. And I, I think that's where this is going, and they're going to be like, look, the establishment put him in jail. We gotta bring back our savior, and I literally think that that is what is gonna happen. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thanks, Dylan. So, so I'm gonna get this. to. I'm so Yeah, I'm gonna get to answering. I'm gonna get to answering the prompt. But I wanted to say, you know, I uh, I went out. I was on the pre-show. It was hype. I went and got some pizza. You know, shown and whatnot. And I, I came back here. I came back here. I had to come back here because I need to confront Alex before I get to this prompt here. You know, oh, I no. saw your AOC shit, dude. I just want to say, you know, you, you, bro, you ain't no pimp on a blimp. You're a creep in a Jeep. And it's a creeping <laughs> Christmas with Alex Stein. And dude, that AOC <laughs> shit, dude, dude, you got issues, man. You got issues. I do have so, issues. I, I, I yeah, no, I know you got issues. That's, issues. That's what yeah, I'm yeah. saying, dude. It's 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 really creepy. Like I don't know. It's like you're trying to make uh, you're you trying to make like creaking. You know, you know you're trying I'm to make like creaking. Hey, you're trying to awesome. make like creaking cool or whatever, but it, it ain't going anywhere, dude. So uh, get get to this actual prompt, right? Here's the thing. Maybe this is a little bit of a hot take. I know it's a hot take. I know it's a hot take on X. Every time I bring this up, uh, it gets like 80,000 impressions and people are like, oh my God, how can he like Trump and Biden? No, I got to keep it real. Donald Trump is the most progressive Republican uh, basically ever to become president. He's the most pro-LGBT president ever from the Republican side. Now, granted, it's a pretty low bar. Republican Party, eh, pretty reactionary, right? But... As far as reactionaries go, Trump is like the most progressive of them. And as far as Joe Biden, most progressive, most pro-labor president since FDR. Both of these guys are good by the American political standard. And guess what? The establishment, they don't really like either of them. They like Romney Clinton action. They don't like MAGA Biden action. In my view, you want to unite the country. Uh, here, here, maybe this is a radical take, but this would do a lot to bring down the tension in American politics. Joe Biden and Donald Trump come out, give joint press conference. They both announce that if they win, the other will be their VP candidate, and they will restore national greatness to America, bring the factories back, build the wall, and support union jobs. And so I got to say, the establishment, man, they are terrified of Donald Trump winning, so they're trying to get him off the ballot. And yeah, did what, what, did what he did co- uh, constitute an insurrection? No, because guess what? You have the right to challenge uh, any election, and then it goes through its process. Uh, did the dude with the horns in the Capitol, did, was he insurrectionary? Sure, okay, but that's not Trump. And here's the deal, right? Um, at the end of the day, they should work up. together. Yeah, they should work together. And so uh, let's uh, join together and uphold MAGA Bidenism thought.
Absolutely. Okay. Wait, what kind of autism do you have though with your speech pattern <laughs> like Dude, that? I'm not, the one, I'm not the one what, what bragging. Kind of well, I'm not the one bragging in front of like 2,000 people that you're gonna go creep up AOC's office, dude. Creep up uh, AOC. No, that's, what you said. You, that's what you said. You, you literally guys, said that, you, dude. You, you literally I'm said that, dude. You're a creep in a cheap. You no, know, dude. You're a creep in a cheap. No, you're a creep in a cheap. I'm the pimp on a blimp, but I no, you're the creep in the cheap. You're the creep in the cheap. You're blimp, dude. You swap your own blimp with. With your uh, with your creepiness, dude. Alex. Like, okay. you're okay. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. Dude, There's still like two people who haven't. Creeper. Stop, both of you. There's two people well, still haven't kind of gone. Are you I got it. Like, Alex. Alex. Kind of Alex. I'm asking you to stop. Bro, Alex. you're like the only Alex. person to like break a spray about bottle in a second. Assault, dude. Stop. It's not Stop. sexual. Stop. You're like you're like you're like Epstein Bill, so dude. Sorry, Dylan. Okay, yeah, they're both muted. They're both Dylan, they've Dylan, both been put I, in the doghouse. I'm I'm just what what, question. what what is it's a procedural? So okay, I'm gonna unmute it's, them, it's but stop. Question. Don't attack. Yes. So for Alex, though, low key would though, right? You would, right? Like given the opportunity. What do you only... mean? Come on, come on. He, well, he's already like come assaulted on. her. He's already harassed well, well, her. I, we we I, have, I, have I, the video. We have the video. He's a creep in the chain. We've got a topic. Can I answer it? I said that she's. We will talk about how much of a pussy you are. One big booty Latina. It's a legendary. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about, dude. You're like the creep in the chain. This is like chicken French, dude. Your deep sexual desires. But I want to hear. I want to hear. I saw the video. Ooh, this is good stuff, Dylan. Dude, everybody Dude, saw the video, this Alex. Okay, thank you. Sprout, can you go? Sprout, you muted yourself. Sprout, this is the Hippy Dippy, the world's <laughs> best gooner podcast. <laughs> okay, Vosh, never mind. Sprouticus can't hear me for yeah. some reason. Real, real mega conservatives. <laughs> I'm the pimp on a blimp. You're the, I don't even know who you are. Dude, you put the yeah, O in there. You have 80,000 impressions. I upload a fajita plate from a Taco Bell or something, and I get 80,000 impressions, son. So don't even come at the king, dude. Yeah, that's because, that's, because that's because you do speech right. fade. That's because you right. strong. Right. You guys have had your bed. Dude, 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 I have a bed. Can we please have some bed? You're like the Chris Shannon. Shuffle the bits, dude. Like like can you guys please, can you guys help me out? And reel it in just a bit so we can have the last two people give their opinions on the topic. Like, Sprouticus. Sorry, more more. Sprouticus, it's can okay. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you the whole time. I was just laying them run. Um, because so if you, I was going to try and talk behind them. Me. You were helping them and you were enabling no. them. So if I was, was going to talk behind them, if I was going to talk behind no, them, you enabled be their mess. behavior. That's negative 50 points in our <laughs> DNC system. You enabled their behavior. Uh, anyway, okay. continue. Well, that's this is Oh it's, man, it's, it's, a good thing I'm not the, it's a good thing I'm not. Wait one second. It's a good thing I'm not part of the DNC. Um, but I I voted for Trump in 2016. I voted for Trump in 2020. Um, and I agree with Joe Lewis. It has to be all or nothing. This does not hurt Trump at all to be kicked off the ballot in Colorado and in Maine. Trump was not going to win Colorado. Trump was not going to win Maine. The only states he's getting kicked off the ballot in are the states he was for sure not going to win. Uh, Michigan and uh, I believe Minnesota are two of the states that put this up uh, for to try and enact this and kick Trump off the ballot. But it was denied by both states. Those are the states that would have mattered. Um, these two states that have done it don't truly matter in the long term, in the long run of things. Um, but ultimately, it has to be it has to be all of them or none of them. And ultimately, it's got to go to Supreme Court. The way the Supreme Court's leaning right now is they're going to side with Trump, and that's how that's how procedurally it's going to work. Now, do I agree that Trump should be kicked off the ballot? Um, potentially, yes, but it would take a guilty verdict um, by the court. And anyone in this, anyone inside the United States is considered innocent until proven guilty. It would take a guilty verdict by the court of something that would uh, allude to insurrection or the harboring of such insurrectionists. Uh, now, the last person is Vosh. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with that and, and with what Joe said to an extent. Um, so Donald Trump 
did it. He deserves to be kicked off the ballot, but it needs to be done at a national level. I mean, ideally, this should be a criminal thing. He should die in prison. Um, but, you know, we don't live in a perfect world and there's no such thing as impartial uh, judicial activity. So, you know, the only states that are actually going to rule correctly on this, even if they decided to make a national issue of it, would be blue states. He wasn't going to win anyway. In a fair system, this would be a fair and fine ruling. But in the current one, I think it's just going to fuel the persecution complex of, you know, uh, Trump supporters, though that hasn't really been working out that well for them. You know, like Donald Trump is currently saddled with half a dozen, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, trial cases he's running between. And I mean, conservative media is barely even picking up on them anymore. I mean, you know that fully like 50 to 70 percent of Donald Trump's waking days are spent listening to lawyers tell him how fucked he is or how he's out of money. And um, given that environment, I don't know if another railing from the criminal justice system is going to lead to that much of a persecution complex. Like, how much can you oversaturate that pot? Eventually you run out of shits to give. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I don't really care that much. The Supreme Court's going to overturn it unless for some reason they do a wacky game or move and don't, in which case I care about it very much. Yo, I got right, a question. Yo, I got a question for all the orange man bad people here though. I just got a quick question. Would you rather uh, would you rather Ron DeSantis then come in and do all of his reactionary BS and basically wage, you know, transgenocide, etc.? Uh, or would you rather have Donald Trump, who is, as I said, the most now, progressive? Now, I, I would, I would, I would, I would wait, stop for a moment. Well, I would, wait, wait, stop. I'm asking you guys to stop for a moment because this is actually a later subtopic. It's, uh, are there better candidates in the Republican primary? Who's the best of the bunch, right? So that is actually a question later. So I'm going to put that on hold. Okay. Sorry. So Somebody anyway, else? one of the things I want to touch on is this idea of like it being sort of morally wrong, regardless of the law, we should probably just not do it because it's going to fuel his success. It's it's bullshit. It shouldn't matter. As conservatives, we should agree it shouldn't matter because guess what? Trump's bitching and whining about how it's undemocratic. Who are the guys for the past decade? We've been telling people we don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. The purpose of the Constitution is to provide limitations and a foundation for democracy. If Donald Trump broke the Constitution, you conservatives should step the fuck up, get his cock out of your mouth, and say he shouldn't be able to run for president because he if the Democrats the were found out tomorrow to have colluded against Donald Trump in a court of law, you would immediately be crying, none of these fuckers should be able to run for president. But all of a sudden, because it's Trump, well, maybe the presidency doesn't count, and maybe this little subtext, you know, officers of the state, it's a little bit of, I don't know, stopping a pussy. He's not a conservative. He did the thing that the Constitution Base. says not to do. And if you're a constitutional conservative, that should outrage you quite a bit. So in terms of he should we nothing. let Ron DeSantis do transgenocide? I don't give a fuck. It should not matter about anything other than did Donald Trump break the law? No, this is like did, institutional cringe so, right now, yeah, dude. Uh, not, uh, you not just not admitted that Donald wait, Trump wait, wait, is, one, is, one, is one, one at a time, please, Kevin. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like conservatism is is it's pretty cringe and as i said donald trump is again as far as republican politicians go elected a presidency most progressive in history for the u.s now granted you're right um, yeah he's and, way and, more and, than and than you can say it's a little bar but what i'm saying is all progressive minded people okay, should have more at a time i can't hear all, anything all progressive minded people should have critical support to donald trump over Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Chris Christie, and all these other goons who, guess what? If you took Trump off the ballot and you just said he can't run, one, uh, that wouldn't go over too well. And he has like 70 million loyal supporters that would say, no, we want to be able to vote for him. But even if you could, even if you could just say, no, he can't run, or, oh, he's in jail. By the way, if he goes to jail, he still probably has a 45% chance of winning. But let's just say he can't run. Okay, so then what do you wind up you with? You wind up with the dude from Florida who wants to basically genocide all the trans people in you the country. Up you wind up, you wind up with Nikki Haley. You wind up with Nikki Haley Trump who basically it. who basically I mean, wants to go and... Wait, 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 you gotta calm down. Sure so, or, or you wind up with Chris, or you, or you wind up with Chris Christie, who's the biggest shell for the dismantling and, and national dilapidation Fuck of the United yeah. States well, and the interest yeah. of the corporate establishment. Yeah, okay, okay, so, okay, 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 Kevin, Kevin, I gotta ask you. Yeah. You said that 
if Trump goes to prison, I don't know. Let's say he went to prison all for the classified documents thing, or who knows what it would yeah, be. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter to, if what If he went is. to prison, you said that he has a basically like a 50% chance of winning? No, no, I don't. I don't. I think Biden has the advantage. And I think if he went to jail, Biden would still have the advantage. But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't Do you be think surprised. that would help or hurt him with independence if he went to prison? I wouldn't be surprised if nine times out of 20, you ran that simulation and Donald Trump gets inaugurated but from prison. So Money he has to get then. inaugurated by nine a proxy. Nine times out of 10, he, he could get no, inaugurated. Nine times out of 20, I said 45. I said 45%. I think Biden has the advantage. By the way, if you ask me, who would I rather have, Biden or Trump? I'd rather have Biden, but I also okay. rather have Trump as his VP. Okay, okay. I'd rather have Trump as his VP than Kamala Harris. Got you. So you're so, kind of loud. He's got to get rid of Harris. So man. you're like, that Batman guy, Two Face, right you? now. Is that that's what's going on? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. They're, they're, they're very similar. They're fundamentally oh, yeah. both Kevin, protect how much is very this? Crazy. No, 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 this, is, this is absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar. They're both so, progressive minded uh, people. They're both well, for the self reliance of the American. Alphas could share the platform. Trump's like, bravest like soldier has now yeah. said conservatism is cringe and that Trump is the same as Biden. So enjoy your comrade. Boys. Yeah, well, I'm not a conservative. Jeff, I'm Jeff, a progressive Jeff, nationalist, Jeff, dude. Okay. Jeff, well, let's. Jeff, he even said it doesn't matter. He even said it doesn't matter what. It, it doesn't matter what crime yeah. Trump goes to jail for, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah. If Trump goes, if Trump goes to jail for it, it's just dating the reality. I let you talk the entire time. I let you talk the entire time. If Trump goes to jail for an insurrection related charge the 14th amendment is directly implied if he goes to jail for an a, a insurrection related charge then he is disqualified for running for office point yeah, blank it's a there's no questions yeah, about it's a that. political thing right it's a no, political it's thing political dude thing. he, he says, do they, one it, it says that they he did this and he's been found ten. guilty of it then he is not allowed to run for office he's not eligible yeah, for but- office yeah, but he then you look at you look at his though. opponents. You look at his opponents. You look at Clintons, for example. So Guess what? They weren't even they weren't even prosecuted. You know why? Because it's a fundamentally political prosecution. Hey, even Sprout, if he's guilty, does that the reason join? why. No? Yeah, okay. the reason why the reason why I say it's political isn't even a statement about guilt or innocence. I think I think you would have to make a really good case that he personally did the insurrection there. I think you could make you maybe an argue he personally did the no, 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 but what I'm saying Osama is just the, fact, didn't personally just the fact attack that the it's States. him, just the fact that it's him and none of the establishment figures that they're investigating goes to show that even if he's guilty, that doesn't change the fact that the system is still mm. set out against outsiders and reformists. And the fact okay, of the matter so is I've it's kind a of a miracle. That it would it's be kind of a miracle if he went to jail. Joe Biden managed to become... The, uh, okay. the Democrat, You've got like 10 minute talking um, points, okay. and I would Kevin, love for you to be the only person that talks, but Kevin, there's other people here. I do have so, to ask you to um, th- let him talk. So there is, th- there, is, there is this, right? So you, you stated that it, it doesn't matter if Trump goes to jail for an insurrection-related charge because they'd have to prove that it's him. So underneath that logic, you would then – then Osama bin Laden would be innocent of attacking the United States because he personally didn't attack the United States. He just sent people to do it. No, you, 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 would have, you would have to then no. follow up with that. Yes. No, yes. no this is crazy. You're missing the point of my argument. Me. My is argument is that Trump's voters are... don't okay. care whatever you find him guilty of. They don't care. And they're still going to go out and vote for him. Is Actually, what I, mean. I would agree with you. Trump's, Trump's voters do not care about the Constitution. I think that's been proven. Okay, I would the agree Constitution, with you on that. Yeah, but the Constitution is aloof to the struggles of the masses, dude. Your constitution's largely problematic. I mean, you had to amend it like what, however many dozen times already. That's so, a feature, not a so, bug. So, so you can amend it. Reminder, a reminder to everyone: way stop dusting the portraits of the politicians. I'm asking. Shh, for anyone who's confused, Kevin is Canadian, so he's a little slow when it comes to our constitution. You need to respect that. Okay. Wait, no, you're, oh my god. Lecture fan, I saw you were shaking your head when when you were hearing Sprout talk. Could you do you want to express well, a just, disagreement with that? Well, there, there's just there's just tons of obviously uninformed and ignorant people talking about things they really haven't looked into and really haven't researched here. And so I've just kind of been sitting here uh listening to the nonsense. Uh I don't know who the the guy in the Steelers had is that said Trump violated the constitution. I'd I'd ask him, "What the hell are you talking about, dude?" Sure, let me answer that. Constitu- so, what provision um, of the constitution and how and what court found? By the way, Trump so, has never been charged with the insurrection. Sure, sure. Throw that out there. Let me let me I let me answer Yeah, your we, we really got to get on that. Amendment, yeah, the 14th Amendment 
Amendment, Section 3, says anybody who is engaged in insurrection or provided oh, okay, aid or comfort, okay, yeah, hold on, stop, true. stop, stop, or provided aid or comfort is ineligible to serve as an officer of the United States, and it does not require a criminal conviction, just like impeachment doesn't require a criminal conviction. The Supreme Court could tomorrow say Congress gets to decide and Congress could get to decide. I agree the Supreme Court should clarify exactly by what means he could be ruled ineligible, but I agree, in essence, that he did give aid and comfort or okay, engage I thought, I thought in an insurrection. I thought you were talking about something else. I, th I thought you were talking about something else. If you're actually saying he engaged in a, in instruction, that's laughable. All right, got it. No, I mean, is it laughable? I don't, like, because like I, said, I don't think I don't think wait, it's wait, can I can laughable. I can I can I ask no. you, lecture fan? Why is it why is it laughable? God damn it! Okay. Because because it's absurd. Because challenging an election result is not an insurrection. Donald Trump had a legal theory about what Mike Pence could do under the Electoral Count Act and under the Constitution. Uh, again, that's not an instruction. If if simply burglars have a legal theory on what they can do to your house, separate electors or objecting to electors or doing, don't then like lots like of it. Democrats Wait, would be guilty of finished. that too. I mean, I we could go, I could go on and on. There, sure. There's a whole is, bunch of different is reasons. Is purposefully interrupting a legal process that, if delayed or or interrupted like completely and not able to happen, would violate multiple state and federal laws in terms no, of the in regard to the peaceful transfer of power? Is that not an insurrection? Purposefully no, delaying not. or um, no, the other, here's, I mean, here, the here's the other power. here's the other thing that you you know okay, after by, by the way after when you're fan we're gonna have joe yeah, lewis yeah. he's been waiting okay Hell yeah. there, there's there's something there's something called united states supreme court precedent about how to interpret constitutional provisions sure and one of those says what you do is you actually look to the original intent of the drafters and the original intent mm -hmm. of the drafters of the 14th amendment was to prohibit people that had <laughs> that had served in the u.s government and taken an oath to uphold the constitution and then fought for the confederacy in the civil war and so I mean, when you actually when you actually go to interpret a, a provision like that and i know you don't know this so let me explain no, it to you. i do so when you go to when you go to interpret a provision like that that says insurrection or rebellion you go back in history to what the original drafters meant and what they meant was something akin to the civil war and so by you saying that that what donald trump did on january 6th by telling people to peacefully protest and then making constitutional and statutory legal arguments under the constitution and the electoral count act about the vice president's power sure. you're basically saying that's that's the same thing and that's on par with the american no civil so war, you're saying is, they've they've never, hold on let me finish hold on let me finish hold on let me finish let me finish my point Shut up, dude. Let me finish my point. We can, I, wait, 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 can, stop. I everybody, can you guys Passing. give me give me a second? Okay, we only have a few more minutes left. So lecture fan, finish your point. You got like 15 <laughs> seconds, but you gotta make it quick. Then we have to have Jeb Tan respond very quickly. 10 15 seconds. Yeah. Then we're gonna go to Joe because Joe's been waiting. We gotta get through this quick. And I think Pixel, have you been waiting to say something too? No? Okay, then we'll go with that I'm and then we're gonna listening. wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> go go ahead. It's it's just classic for for liberals and leftists to interrupt me like that because they what? can't handle the truth. Leftist. Was that me? I I was just yeah. trying no, to give you. the guy in the okay, Steelers hat. You. Whoever okay. that leftist is. Uh, I'm not a leftist. I'm actually a conservative, and so I want someone who doesn't, doesn't you know, sound like it, man. Doesn't, doesn't sound. Yeah, like and it. this is and this is what I'm trying to point out. So you're saying the Fourteenth Amendment has never been invoked in times other than the uh, other than the Civil War. It had to rise to another civil war. Or has it been used since in cases where not very many people died and yeah. they just committed a rebellion against the United States the in a limited sense? Has, the, the insurrection clause has never been used to disqualify somebody from the ballot. Yeah, it hasn't been used to disqualify exactly somebody from the president. We used, ballot, we used yeah. to build things in this country. We used to do new things in this country. Now it's all, oh, we can't do this. Oh, we can't do that. If we can, if we can get Trump on this, you know what? Right. I say we can. Why do you doubt America? But my base point here is okay, your idea up, that it, the joke, sure, sure. Yeah, your idea the that it can only be, Trump, oh. your idea that it can only be used in literally the Civil War lecture fan is the same logic no, that progressive. No, lecture let fan. Let let finish. Finish. Let I know you finish. We don't have I any time. Finish. You gave up your time, dude. Is the same logic progressives have been using to say that the Second Amendment only protects muskets. We say that if the Constitution leaves something vague, you need to assume that it is protected, not that it isn't, or is included, not that it isn't. So when the officers of the United States are included, or insurrection or rebellion is included in the language, and they don't specify it needs to be as bad as the Civil War, then we need to assume that it includes things that aren't as bad as the Civil War, not that it excludes things, just like we need to assume that the Second Amendment includes AR-15s and doesn't exclude them, because we assume that the Constitution is broad, not narrow in its protections. You don't know what you're talking about. but Okay, okay. Uh, sure. Joe Lewis, uh, wrap us up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say if we bar Jefferson Davis, we should probably bar Donald Trump. But I think that's the argument for the lawyers to make in this case.
right? Like, I kind of agree with what your fans kind of saying a little bit, but I do think that, again, and Deb agrees with this too, that it should probably be clarified by the Supreme Court so they can kind of squash this in the bud. I think it's a beholden of Republicans to bring forth that argument, though. I think they should advocate for the Supreme Court. It's a matter of, like, clarifying that it's a social and social political institution. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I mean, this should be clarified. Okay. But again, also, too, I just want to say, I just want to say, fuck this... Jimmy Carter, that piece of shit cuck for actually pardoning that nigga. It's crazy to think that Jimmy fucking Carter pardoned Jefferson Davis. It's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, Joe, nice look, this guy. is my Joe Lewis haircut. My Joe Lewis haircut. You like this? Oh, wow. Um, oh, it's too oh, white oh, for oh me. I'm sorry. God. Oh my God. Hold on, wait. It's an yeah, Alex yeah, moment. Is it gooning or racism? Wait, I'm I'm not I, looking at the screen. The Reaper, Is it gooning the or racism? Reaper calls, the Reaper calls. Um I don't know. I didn't take my DEI pills today. So I have the tell. people that were kicking. Uh, all well, I decided. have to go. Kick me. Are you well, kicking me? I yeah, you're on the list, actually, Stein. No, I can show you the list. You want to see the list? Well, first of all, you're lucky to have me. I'm the pimp on a blimp. Everybody needs to watch my Blaze TV show on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, it's always a blast. I hope we do this more. Uh, you know, if I didn't have such a busy schedule, because, you know, oftentimes I'm about to go on the campaign trail with Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm about to go on Tim Pool January 8th. You're I'm campaigning uh, with Vivek? Yes, I am in oh, Iowa. Lord and so, you. damn. Yeah, no room so, on the Trump campaign, I guess. Well, actually, I just was the keynote speaker and MC at the New York Young Republicans Club where Trump was the, uh, you know, whatever, the person of honor. So I was just with Trump. I love Trump, but I mean, I'm going to go help my boy Vivek. He's a 9-11 truther like me. So uh, him and I are vibing on a lot of different levels. But that's neither here nor there. I just want to say thank you. I'm on the rise. I'm the pip on a blimp. Bosh, I know you brought up Lolly a bunch. That's kind of a weird deal, but I'm going to let you just do you uh, because, you know, right, you, get, you, get you. Get back to your second monitor and whatever you have on there, man. Go and, for well, it. Well, I'm about to go no eat some Chinese you. food. But I just want to say I love you all, Joe Lewis. I think you got the most swag on the panel. I hope you stay all night. Uh, the guy at the Hello, bottom. I actually like your autism, and I am the creep in the Jeep <laughs> Cherokee with the Bose system, 22-inch rims. I love Jeep. It's a great car brand. It's been one of the best, most popular car brands. So if I'm the creep in the Jeep, as long as I'm getting some dome, you know, I'm causing pain in the turning lane. That's just how I am on the pimp on a blimp. So I love you guys. This has been a pleasure, and uh, I'll speak to you again very soon, I'm sure, Dylan. And stay safe. You're in Maryland. You're not in uh, yeah, Ukraine I, anymore. I, I got back for a bit. I'm going to be here for a few months. I think Baltimore is more dangerous than the Ukraine. All right, I'm I love you guys. Baltimore more, actually. <laughs> Damn, this man is really Bring your bulletproof like, vest. Oh, I'll be fine. Oh, man. See you later, man. You have a good one. Uh, next is Kevin, man. Sorry. People didn't, yeah. did, people didn't, they didn't what vibe the with your Marxism, uh, I mean, your uh, Bidenism, Trumpism. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, they'll come around in time. So let's uphold uh, MAGA Bidenism. Institutionalism is aloof to the struggles of the masses. And go follow me over on X at Kevin Gasly, YouTube Superpower Broadcasting, and Twitch Superpower Broadcasting. Peace. Okay, Sprout, you were thrown out. I'm very sorry, my good friend. Yeah, what the fuck? You, 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 are this, you are old soul hippy dippy, and I'm happy that you came here, and I'm really uh, happy I got to get you on. Oh, you're good. Uh, feels like a cheap shot. Um, I don't know if it's the same judges as last time, but, you know, uh, you know someone has my name. The DNC, name. The DNC has, I mean, the Dylan Burns TV shoot, uh, judge system is very fair, I can assure you. Okay. Well, as, as, long, as long as the system says the system is fair, I think yes. that's, I think that's, what, I think that's uh, beneficial. Um, but no, I appreciate you. Appreciate the invite. Uh, look forward to the next conversation. Uh, I apologize the chat. Uh, this conversation was kind of short. Um, but yeah, look forward to next time. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, I tell you, our judge system is great. Judge system is fantastic. It's wonderful. Oh, also, uh, before I, I kick the last two people, somebody donated twenty five dollars, and as we, as everybody knows now, I take money to ask people questions because I exploit my guests viciously. Uh, what do you guys think of the new Argentinian president? That was a question. A thumbs up or a thumbs down from He's the crowd? Awesome. You like him, like your awesome. fan? Oh, love didn't it. Didn't that nigga backpedal on like half the shit he advocated for? I'm very excited you... to see what happens. Is all I'll say. Very excited is, to see what happens. I'm enthused about him. I I lean toward liking him. I just want to make sure he, like Joe Lewis said, I want to make sure he does things before mm -hmm. I say Yeah, I, I love agree. Him. Considering libertarianism isn't a real ideology, it will be very fun to get an actual real life example of everything immediately crumbling to dust the moment one of them gets their hands on power, which what has already started happening. What did Scott say? What did, what did, did Scott say? Does that have bears? 
Well, huh? Va Vosh, all of the South Americans are fleeing the socialist governments. You realize that, right? Look at Venezuela. They're all trying to flee because that's what happens with socialism. Yeah, and people are pouring into Argentina right now. That's true. Um, the uh, Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. I actually feel really bad. I have like, well, I have fans everywhere, but Argentina fans or whatever. And I feel like... <laughs> Damn. I feel like I, I feel like their chat messages are like the last gasps of a man drowning as his face bubbles above water for a second. It's it's pretty rough out there. Okay, well that's a, that's a that's a dreary image. Uh sorry for the last two. Joe and Pixel, very sorry. You have been you've been booted out by our by our, our oh, democracy. No. That's all good. Hey, listen. That's if so you replace sad. me, I was listen, I'm just gonna say this though, okay? If you replace me with an Asian person, I'm gonna be really pissed at you, okay? It's right Kenny Zhu! <laughs> no, I'm kidding, it's not Kenny, God it's not Kenny. It. He's running for Congress now, actually. I know. Really? Yeah, oh, wait, yes. which, which Kenny uh, Zhu state? was, uh, I, there's, I, I only know one way to explain to people who he is, and I don't know if I wanna bring it That's up. That's the white guy, right? Yeah, it's the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the white guy, yeah, 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 you get it. <laughs> See, everybody's been saying it except me. I just wanna say I've been dodging the allegations very well for two years, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, I hope this Fanatic continues white, on so a lot after this panel, Dylan, because like listening it? to men. Oh, yeah, listening to men talk over each other can't fulfills ever, a very specific I need of mine. Ever, so, I like, can never tell if, if Pixel has a good time on my show or not. I do. I have, a, do. I have a wonderful time. Yeah, it's absolutely great. And um, yeah, I hope it keeps going because, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thanks so you like you like the one off? You like the the comeback? You want it more? I mean, I I, I mean, for sure, I want it more. And it mm. would be really good to actually like you know get to say a few more things on it we should have we should have this I rumble gotcha. except with just women i know it would just be stardust and pixel talking does, but i think it'd be very yeah, just just know rumble? any more women well actually no how about this you you try to see how much money you can throw at aristocracy's patreon till she shows her face i think you should do that all right she did a face reveal and she's cocking her whole audience Is wait she did, she did a face reveal she did a face she's reveal but i think it's a good opportunity Okay, okay, we got a schedule. Social we social got a face. schedule. We're talking about aristocracy face reveals now. Okay, come on. I just want to see Zionist shoulder fascist face. That's all. All right, I'm gonna go let now before I come into trouble. Bye. On the way out, the, the Bye. let me out. On the punches Bye. on the way out. Okay, Danabo, bring in the new people. Bring in the bring in the new wave of fresh meat. Wait, before we but before we do that, you three, did you expect to get to this point? We're we're getting close to the to the finals now. Jebtan, you're probably the underdog underdog here. I'm I'm surprised you got through last round. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, lecture I'm not, fan. I'm you've been, you've been holding in since the start too. Since always, the very I start. Do. I Dude, I was glad all the way back to Raj Royale. Yeah, I was glad that it wasn't about the war on Christmas. Still, by the time I came in, that's the one I thought I wasn't <laughs> going to survive because I could not give less of a fuck about a war on Christmas. And Vosh, can you believe topic. you made this far as an up and coming streamer? Um, yeah, with uh, with the shirt that I'm wearing now, it was never a surprise to me. That's um, true. I, I came in with the post and I knew I was here for. Uh, for uh for the whole time fantastic well welcome everybody turk old soul of the show for the conservative side he was our regular you know in every in every wrestling card there are the people who go out and do the matches and keep the industry up uh turk was one of them and i appreciate that greatly counterpoints another one of them and somebody who respects the panel game very much very happy to have him on here and i liked his hippy dippy uh, uh shoot off series i don't know if anybody saw those but he did a shoot off hippy dippy independent independent version of it almost like a like what, what what would you call it? Uh, uh what would you call it? Offshoot copyright yeah, infringement. That's what I would call IP, it. Yeah, IP, ah, that's a good point. I didn't think about it. Hey, Pisco, we should talk later. We got the conversation. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And of course, I haven't talked to James in forever. We got James on the show. James from the internet. Happy to have you on again. We haven't talked in forever. Happy to have you on. Mellow greetings, Dylan. I hope you are well. Thank you. Would be a thing. Yeah. Um, I just want to because everybody heard earlier. Uh, I was very sad to see that Alex Stein once again fleed uh, from me. And I'm very sad that I didn't get to ask him what Marjorie Taylor Greene tastes like. So I'm pretty sad going into this part of the uh, debate now, but I'm gonna try to pull it together for you and give you a time. Yeah, I Dylan, did, you need, you need more rumors. fat ass Latinas uh, next time to, to keep him in the, the whole while. I, he'll keep Vivek waiting if you like have the right bait laid out. Dude, and we, they are the, they are a match made in hell. Those two. I love that Alex Stein attached himself to the worst performing GOP presidential <laughs> candidate. Dude, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw uh, Vivek just like a few days ago. He announced he's canceling all ads in Iowa and New Hampshire. So yeah, he, heard Alex, he heard Alex Stein was advertising on his behalf, so he knew he didn't need any commercials. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I arrive. Dylan, Dylan, Happy to have. Vivek. Wait, wait. Let me finish quick. Vivek, I'm sorry. Hate no, to do Vivek. that. Vivek. I R I I R I. Vivek. Happy to have you. He's gonna be done with this campaign before you know how to pronounce it. Happy to have you. I R I. Yes, yes. Glad to be here. Yes. Okay. So um, we're gonna continue with the topic. Who wants to pick us up? Uh, Pisco. I know that you think about legal things every once in a while. Oh yeah. So do you have any thoughts on the topic of Trump's uh, Colorado Absolutely. Uh, removal? Yeah, so I think that the opinion by the Colorado Supreme Court was absolutely well executed and correct on the law and correct on app application of the facts. Um, and I think that we should all agree that regardless of how uncomfortable it makes us, we need to enforce the Constitution. If the Constitution requires that Trump is disqualified, we have to follow that. And so the arguments about, you know, is it prudent? Um, will, it, will it lead to bad results? Will it lead to good results? Those are almost not relevant, right? We would never say that of the Second Amendment. We would never say, will it lead to good results or bad results if we protect the individual right to to have firearms and the same thing for the first amendment or any other provision of the constitution that's mandatory the only question should be does the law require it and so i'm sure lecture fan will have a lot of reasons why he disagrees about what section three means but we shouldn't be sort of tied down in these arguments about outcomes and is it good for the country is it good for the democrats because those in my opinion are totally irrelevant well, I, I like what you say here, Pisco, because you're actually wanting us to follow through the law and go through the proper process, as opposed to, Jeb, you have no room to talk here, dude. You're saying we just need to go for it, They're, you know, have the risk and just throw them out, dude. We well, are a nation of laws. The Supreme Court uh, needs no. to clarify a process for disqualifying. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear him say that. He and did I, say it, and I mentioned it in the chat. Dude, you totally wanted us to risk it as Republicans and not follow the letter of the law and go through the due process, dude. What so do you Jeb, mean? I said you're talking Supreme out of both sides of your mouth, to, man. I said the Supreme Court needs to clarify the method for disqualifying him and the method no, for determining No, and then you said as Republicans, we need to just risk it and go for it. No, what you go what? all in or all out. That's what you were saying earlier. No, I was, I was not the one saying it's all or nothing. No, that was the two dudes here and here that were saying it's all or nothing. I was saying the Supreme Court needs to clarify how they're determining he committed insurrection. And if he did, the Supreme Court needs to uphold the fact that he's not eligible to be president. Turk, just not to tell us, I've heard him. Go ahead. Sorry, Lex, fan. No, I was just going to say, it, it's literally not the job of the Supreme Court to do that. What the what the 14th Amendment says is that Congress has the power to implement that provision. It's not up to the Supreme Court. Sure. It's certainly not up to the state Supreme Court. How how preposterous is it to think that, let's say it's 1870, and you're going to ask the Alabama you're going to ask the Alabama Supreme Court to make a decision about whether somebody's qualified for the how stupid they it's never know oh, this should be done no, by they, they have to court. what do you mean the, the they're, they're in charge of hold their on can you guys shut up for a second let, can you shut up for a second let them finish can they shut up and let me finish okay the, it, it, it's, it's literally the dumbest idea ever to think that the, the the drafters of the 14th wanted the Alabama Supreme Court to make a decision on insurrectionists in 1870s which is why they put in there that it's Congress has the the power to implement that legislation, which they have not done. They're, if Congress wanted to, they could have set forth an entire framework for how you, can, you you criminally convict somebody of an insurrection. They get a jury trial. They get full due process. They can be sentenced. They can be removed from a ballot after that type of process. Congress hasn't done that. And the idea that you just let any random Supreme Court or any random you know unitary solitary Secretary of State is is op preposterous. <laughs> Lex Fan is just dead wrong on the law. All right. So oh, every right. state state. state Courts, state courts in the states are assumed to be capable of enforcing federal law. That is black letter law. And in this particular amendment, the 14th Amendment, there are other provisions of it which no one disputes, notwithstanding uh, uh, the, the, the fifth uh, section of, of the 14th Amendment, which gives a permit grant of authority for Congress, no one disputes the fitness of the state courts to enforce the Equal Protection Clause. To enforce the due yes, process they, clause. Hold, hold enforce, on, but no, they do not. No, no, they, they, they do, do not. Their they, equal they, protection they, clause heard no. in state courts all the time. You're talking about it, the it, principle, just, not the application. No, 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 no. I'm talking about state courts enforcing constitutional provisions. Lecture fan will support me on this particular thing because he knows state courts enforce the equal protection clause. He knows that state courts enforce, if they had to, they would be able to enforce the 13th Amendment banning slavery. No one sits here and thinks that on, you know Congress needed to pass a law in order to to have slavery, uh, the, 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 the 
abolition of slavery be affected. The 13th Amendment also gives a permissive grant of additional authority for Congress to enact legislation pursuant so to the 13th go. Amendment. But so the, the 13th I Amendment, I just want to finish this. The 13th Amendment uh, is self-executing, and everyone understood it to be at the time. Lecture fans point about it. It's so ridiculous that these, they could have thought that state courts enforce this. It's not ridiculous at all. It's an assumed part of the structure of our government. None of the federal courts are assumed uh, to be in existence. They're all a, a, a matter of grace of Congress. And uh, what's more is, as a, just a matter of practicality, uh, Republicans were implemented in a lot of these positions uh, by the by the conquering armies of the Union. And so just as a matter of practical practicality in the immediate aftermath, that's that's what occurred. In lecture fans' okay, defense, so, he isn't so, American, so he might not know a lot of this. Okay, so what I want to hear you say is that the a state, a state court, which I heard you say they're just as good as federal courts, they interpret federal law all the time, they interpret the court they constitution do. all the time. Okay, so they should make a determination about whether or not Donald Trump committed the act of insurrection in a jurist a crime in a jurisdiction in not which they don't have insurrection isn't a crime. It absolutely as is the a crime. so one hundred percent a crime. We don't have to determine. I, I mean, a crime. Right, so, 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 the 14th Amendment. Let, let's be clear. It's I almost mean, like they should go through a jury trial and actually right. determine if it was. So this is right. not, or so, even an impeachment by Congress, which they failed to do after is the election. It, it, Trump is Trump is a high crime and, wait, let's be clear. Is a Trump high crime and misdemeanor? Acquitted. Is a high crime and misdemeanor under the impeachment clause of the Constitution? Is that a crime? I'm sorry. So no. say it again, just so I can so, answer it honestly. So, as you're aware. The impeachment clause of the Constitution specifies certain things that are that make one uh, liable for the impeachment process, and that is high crimes and misdemeanors. It says high crimes and misdemeanors. When you go through an impeachment process, is that a criminal process? No, no, it's not. It's point. a political okay. process. In this particular case, the, just like in with fraud, there's civil point. fraud, there's criminal that, fraud. They, these concepts have different meanings in different contexts. That threshold. My well, point they, is they haven't even they have that threshold. Okay, so so first you're just uh, just right now, and I don't know if you want to do this. You are right uh, now currently um, saying and agreeing with me that criminal process is not required. So can we all agree on that? The criminal process is not no. required. No, okay, so that's not. okay. So I want some textual saying, basis to support the contention that this is a criminal process. The penalty here is disqualification. It's not incarceration. It's not a criminal fine. It's disqualification. What textual anything do you have to support the notion that this is a criminal sanction? Yeah, when you say so the word insurrection, the... that's a crime. The, the insurrection was a crime then, and it, it is now. Look in Title 18 of the U.S. Code. Well, wait, it yeah, wasn't, and it, it in wasn't those again. titles, there are punishments listed with the things that are being said. So yes, these this Congress says cannot stuff. Congress cannot pass a criminal statute and change what the, the Constitution says. You guys the really think you have it's in the U.S. Code? That'll it's make already Lecture there. Fan not be wrong on this. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I, I just want to be clear. Not that so wrong. so let's Congress could Congress could. One second. Okay. Whoever and let's and literally every court. That's looked at it has agreed with me. Besides wait, Colorado, by the way, we're thirty-five. And wait, no, 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 no. That, that is not true. So I, I yeah, want to no. make sure everybody gets a chance to talk. Does anybody in particular want to talk? I just want to make a list, make sure I know who wants to. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have one thing to say, so, and that's all I have everybody. to say. On this. Okay, one second. Keep your hand up until I tell you to put them down. So I write them all down. Jeez. Good job, Connor. Okay, you guys can put them down. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, letting Pisco finish his point. Then I'm gonna go down the list. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, so it, Congress can't retroactively change the Constitution by passing an insurrection statute that criminalizes insurrection. Uh, it's totally in harmony with Section 3 as understood by the Colorado Supreme Court. Uh, Section 3 disqualifies for someone who engages in insurrection, and the, the particular part of Title 18 that you're referencing criminalizes that conduct. It's absurd to think that what the framers of Section 3 intended was for every single person who engaged in insurrection uh, in the South to have gone through a criminal trial. That's not what was intended. They couldn't have wanted to flood. And, and who was going to do it? Federal courts? That totally cut, gets, uh, sort of undermines your point on that, that Congress has to do it. You wanted Congress to, to get federal courts involved in all of these criminal procedures? It's absurd, and there's no textual basis. The reason why people are arguing that this is required is because it's outcome-driven, because they don't want Trump to be disqualified, even though that's what the Constitution requires. Turk. 
Yeah, so code 1851, let me get the numbers for you, 1512, tampering with a witness, blah, blah, blah. Subsection C, whoever corruptly, section two, otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding or attempts to do so, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. So there is already a criminal statute in place in U.S. code. Now we need to go through Doesn't the matter. legal process of actually executing that and finding him either guilty or not guilty of the crime and then executing on that. As it goes to the scope of section three, you'll notice that there's certain titles and types of people that are listed in it. It's not everyone under the sun that does this thing that is uh, a, a, applicable to section three. It's the people in section three. So what you just said about the courts would be plugged up is not the case. Are you going to offer, okay. the, are you going to argue that the president's not an officer in the United States or the presidency is an officer under the United States or the presidency doesn't, president That's doesn't swear an oath to support the constitution? something that should actually be litigated and should be just I, talked the about. The Supreme Court may overturn the Colorado Supreme Court. You can go to the bank. They are not going to rule that the president isn't an officer in the United States. You can take it to the bank. I've, I've seen they the reports wear, wear and that well should be life. something that should be argued and tried on Absolutely. both sides. Yeah, okay. because because the because the constitutional amendment is very it was clear. It lists, it lists out Supreme senators Court. and representatives. It doesn't list out. It okay. lists okay. because well, well, there was a meeting. We have when a you list. say officer, I want to go. Sorry. I want to go to Jeb. Right. Jeb has been waiting very patiently. I want to go down the list. Yeah. So anyway, I'll do one thing and then logic also, test. So chat, the whole ten minutes left. If you want to donate for a question, now would be the time. Continue, Jeb. Yeah. So the idea that it requires a criminal conviction that Turk was saying and reading off that code, it's bullshit. That code, that criminal code was passed in 1982. The 17th or the 14th Amendment was passed far before that. So it wasn't a crime at the time. So obviously they it's were not going to require a, crime a criminal in a conviction. Code. Sure. In to this you can't change the Constitution on yeah. something that passed, was passed afterwards. Exactly. Yes. No, it, was it was a crime before afterwards. then, too. No, okay, but this particular crime. incarnation is a modern anyway, version of that. Now, two very quick logic tests. The first one, this idea that the state Supreme Courts just have no just like shouldn't have any business litigating this. I hard disagree. Obviously, we want them to be able to do this. And here's the law. And here's the logic as to why the state Supreme Court should rule on this and should be able to remove someone from the primary ballot. Say Trump wins in Colorado, and then he is found by the Supreme Court or by Congress to be ineligible. We don't have a process in place for finding who the next best candidate or who the Republican candidate is going to be. So obviously, you want state Supreme Courts to be able to make a proactive ruling where Congress has failed to, which they did. They took it to a trial. They had a discovery process. They had Trump's lawyers defend them. They did argue the idea that you're talking about with the officers of the United States that should be litigated. It was, and it failed to meet the standard of the Colorado. Colorado Supreme Court, and so they removed him from is the he, primary is ballot. He off the ballot now to protect. No, now no, they, they stayed their own him. order. Yeah. Oh, it's so almost like it's in the process of litigation. Yeah, but yeah. they're, they're they acknowledging that they want the Supreme Court to weigh in on this. But you're exactly. the ones saying Supreme Which, Court shouldn't even weigh in on this. That's exactly. not what I said. That's Which what lecture fans do. said. And one sec. So again, for the second logic test, let's okay. Test but after the, logic. the second logic test, we got to yes, go back down the list. Thank you. Yeah, second logic test. How much does it make sense that the president wouldn't be included in officers of the United States, and that this idea that it needs to be a criminal conviction in order to be found guilty of engaging in insurrection in terms of the Fourteenth Amendment? when you're exempting the guy who can pardon the federal charge of insurrection for all of his friends who committed it with him. So right. you're basically That's handing this person who committed insurrection the power to overturn all the criminal convictions and thereby make sure nobody who committed insurrection with him ever is disqualified from any form of office. And it's Congress is the only one who's... Con no, 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 no. James? Um, well, sitting here trying to argue the Constitution with a lawyer and then a whole room of people who aren't lawyers but read the constitution who i'm assuming six weeks ago were experts right. on you know how how women get pregnant and 12 weeks ago they were experts on sharia law and six months ago True. they were experts on on you know uh is breaking a window at the u.s capitol building a federal offense uh the bottom line is uh what happened in maine what happened in colorado what may or may not happen in other states um, it it's pointless other than if you want to be a legal political wonk and discuss placing mechanisms like this into the system in case a future event happens, because at the end of the day, all these state proceedings, all they're doing is is they're attempting to take Trump off the ballot for the primary, which he's going to win by like fucking 68 percent anyway. And the states that took him off the ballot, the RNC can just fast track their own rule changes in their own rules committee and change it to a caucus 
or, or a fucking rock throwing contest. Like, it's irrelevant. Either way, Donald Trump's going to end up on the primary, regardless of if it's three states, five states, or seven states that try to remove him. And the Supreme Court's going to be the ultimate decider on this anyway. So it's literally fucking irrelevant. Okay, next is going to be Connor. Okay. So you asked me what I would think would be the thing impeding the process of removing Trump from the ballot. I would say due process. You're saying that the state of Colorado walked through this entire thing. They had Trump's lawyers there, et cetera, et cetera. I'm saying that they're investigating something that they don't have jurisdiction or holding or whatever the fuck it is in order to go ahead and take a look at. So that's kind of bullshit off of the gate. Second, the other one was a hearing from a Democrat state attorney in a different state, like I think it was Maine, where you had a single point of contact who was able to remove that person from the ballot. Is that the kind of precedent that we want to set where we say, so for instance, we could do this to all the BLM people. Like, like as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead right. and find a bunch of state level people who, pro who went into BLM protests. Let's say that this was a de facto level of insurrection. Uh, it doesn't require a criminal trial. It doesn't require civil trial we think that they're in contempt of the government of the united states in violation of their previous oaths therefore they're prohibited from taking state office let's go ahead and set this precedent seems like a beautiful road to walk down no no now but, here's oh, the, hold on peace go i no. i would like to finish i'll be happy to hear you get it or address it in a second so I said that he hasn't been convicted of a crime. You said that he doesn't need to meet that threshold. Then we talked about the impeachment process. I'll concede that that's not a criminal process either. But my whole point there is that he hasn't even been through a civil process yet to establish the fact that he did an insurrection. By the way, real quick, I think that Donald Trump has a lot to lose in that civil and criminal process. I think he could be convicted or could be found guilty of insurrection. What I'm saying is you need to go through that process first. And by the way, the only time that this law has ever been invoked was against a socialist who was convicted of previous crimes and who was voted by a greater than two thirds margin in Congress for his seat to be vacated. That is the only previous time that this part of the constitution has ever been used. And now you're trying to use it against the former president of the United States in a way that's way more loose. Uh, this is not true on the facts of the history you just cited. The section three has been invoked more than Hold once on, in our history. Don't you need to go to IRI um, here? Don't you need to go to IRI here? Okay. Oh. Because I got shut down last time I tried to talk. Um, I, I, I was trying to uh, do an unfair system. I just wanted to give him an opportunity to respond to that. I, I just, I'll, I'll be well, happy. Uh, I'll be happy to hear the other times that Section Three was invoked. Yeah. So in invoked 2022, directly uh, after the Civil War, well, listen, listen. I, I, I'll, I'll defer to the the, the, the moderator was from Congress as a result because well, they passed legislation to allow them to go and seek office. Okay, we have we have three minutes left, so I guess we'll, if if we're diverting to me, then I'm just going to keep going, uh, and I'm going to throw it over to IRI. Well, actually, eight people have been disqualified due to that, and none of them were charged with the crime of insurrection. So I guess, lecture fan, you would have an issue with all eight of those people being uh, disqualified. And also, you mentioned that Congress should be the one who determines if someone is disqualified, but then why do they have the waiver rule there that they get to overturn it? So are they gonna overturn themselves? I, I don't know, I must have missed that if you discussed no, Congress, that earlier. No, Congress Congress isn't the one that gets to decide in an individual case whether somebody's uh, c cannot be on the ballot. What Congress is supposed to do is do implementing legislation, which is typically what you see when you have an amendment like this that has a provision and then it'll say, Congress can implement this. If they want, Can't, Congress hasn't done it. And the issue of, oh, some some other, you know, clearly, obviously, like Confederates, the Confederate people that fought for the Confederate army. Oh, they were. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't allowed on the ballots. Like, OK, obviously the whole thing about the but they weren't charged. Was, was, it, was it lawful or not? Was it lawful they were or not? That, that, was that, that, is there an obviousness exception for insurrection in Section three? Right. Well, I'm just saying that's one argument of like five or six that totally destroy this, which is why almost every court are we textualists or not? There's no <laughs> looked at this has rejected it. Pisco, give me a second to to okay. talk about this. Moving the goalposts. Th there, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of unanswered questions on this issue, and and you've got oh, there was this has happened one time before, eight times before. Look, there's about five or six major major legal flaws with this. Uh, no congressional implementing legislation doesn't apply to the president. Does the Thirteenth uh, Amendment need implementing legislation? There, there's there's not a the not a state. There's this is not supposed to be a state supreme court decision or state secretary's uh, state decision for good reason. There was nothing uh, akin to a civil war that that Do Donald Trump did. Donald Trump would never did an insurrection by by telling people. That's the merits. You're, you're, you're questioning by, the, by, the by jurisdiction the here. You're and questioning again, even jurisdiction. So again, there's there's a whole bunch of arguments and and 
there's a reason that they've all lost. You guys so let's have deal lost with almost them. every time well, you've well, let's, let's deal with them. D I just listed just... them all off. Okay, so let's talk about them. I was, I was, I was trying to respond to Connor, and I'll respond to you as well. So number one is what you were doing. So, so Connor said that there's no procedure. A tr last time I checked, a trial is a civil procedure. You say there's no procedure. A trial is a procedure. Let's separate in our heads due process and uh, jurisdiction. On the due process front, Trump had access to absolutely uh to, for cross-examination of witnesses he if he wanted to he uh, could have put on whoever witness he wanted he had expert <clears throat> testimony there it was a, a trial that lasted a week um it, he rested early there's he has never put on the record anyone else he would have deposed or anything else he just these nebulous ideas about who he, he wants to depose what all the fbi and all the people who stoked the actual insurrection on on the or like antifa or something uh that's on the due process from plenty of due process here election cases are by their necessity fast than other cases everyone understands this and bush v gore we all understood it was like a month to decide that case but no one's here sitting and being like huh where do due process rights vindicated well in a certain case you have to speed things up there's an election coming and uh and yep. due process recognizes that on the question of jurisdiction it's not even close and i'll ask lecture fan just straight up does the 13th amendment require congressional implementing legislation yes or no uh, i haven't read the 13th amendment in a while you haven't read the 13th amendment I have not. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, I just recently read the Fourteenth Amendment. <laughs> I, it's been a while since I've read the. 13th well, Amendment. well, I'll, I'll let you know. The Thirteenth Amendment has has a explicit grant of permissive congressional the same language as the as section five of the 14th amendment is in section two of the 13th amendment, which says Congress may by appropriate legislation. So I fill it in the blanks there. So. If That's not the, what the Fourteenth Amendment says. That the Fourteenth Amendment says Congress has the power to implement this. Procedure. It also it has the same language in section in the Thirteenth Amendment in the implementing authorization granted to Congress as part of the Thirteenth okay, Amendment. And Congress and Congress yes. implemented it. Okay, so are you saying much. that if Congress gets rid of the law against slavery, that they could undo the Thirteenth Amendment? No. Of, of course not, because it's self-executing, and we understand it to be, and we understand the other provisions of the 14th have... Amendment to be self-executing as well. The Equal Protection Clause doesn't require implementing legislation. The Due Process Clause doesn't require implementing legislation. It just is. The Due Process well, Clause is what these words mean. Thank uh, God 35 courts have disagreed with you and, and agreed no, with No, no, and you're mischaracterizing the other courts, too. Most of the other courts that haven't heard it, like you're Michigan or Minnesota, right uh, uh, or Mi Michigan or Minnesota, the, those cases were not decided on the merits. What they said is... Yes, we you know we can't hear this case because in primary ballots you could nominate a chair and we have no jurisdiction to review that decision under state procedural law. But that's not been a merits decision about the jurisdiction of states generally to hear it or the merits of what insurrection means or engage in or any of the issues we're talking about now. It's purely a matter of state procedural law uh, for the most part. There's been one or two states have said it's a political question. They're obviously wrong about that, and uh, I, th I don't think the Supreme Court's going to say it's a political yeah, question. Yeah, and say, and this is the reason why. Say the, Supreme Court, say the Supreme Court agrees with Colorado and Trump is ineligible to be president. The reason why these states need to be able to rule this on their own is so we don't throw a bunch of votes to nominate a candidate that then becomes ineligible. Like you guys have mentioned, if the Supreme Court doesn't agree, we have fail safes. The RNC can go to a caucus. The RNC can put Trump up to win, even if he's not on the primary ballot. We don't have those protective measures if the Supreme Court does agree. We don't have a process if he is ruled ineligible after we nominate him. And so state Supreme Courts need to be able to intervene before that point and allow people a more clear idea of what they have ruled in terms of presidential Look, eligibility. You guys are just so short. Wait, this is never going to end. I know it's never going to end. Yeah. Bosh, you are actually the last person on my list that uh, raised his hand to talk. Yeah, oh, it's really look, people say there's the right way, the wrong way to interpret the Constitution. It's this is all bullshit. OK, the Constitution is terribly written. Many legal documents are whether or not you rule one way or the other will be based on your personal bias. I think that a sensible and level headed uh, assessment of the 14th Amendment would indicate that Colorado's ruling was sensible and fair. Um, conservatives will think otherwise. You know, there's no there's no getting around the fact that the right people are going to think one thing and the wrong people are going to think the other thing. And there's no like a objective factual way of saying well actually the constitutional interpretation that the founding fathers would have gone with was that like that's so the thing that bothers me here is this like argument from proceduralism if you're going to argue like okay leaving aside whether it's good or bad is it procedurally correct 
that he be barred from running. I think that there are many good arguments for saying yes. I think that what Lecture Fan is doing is a very typical conservative tactic where he pretends to care about the procedural when he only actually cares about the outcome. A truly principled study, uh, student of law would support outcomes that don't politically favor them because they care about the actual process of the law being uh, litigated. But that's obviously not the environment that we live in. So we're dealing with outcomes first and foremost. And if we're going to talk outcomes, we should just talk outcomes here. Would it be good or bad for Trump to be barred from running? You know, that earlier was what we were talking about. But this proceduralist stuff, it's not like it matters. You know, that is a it's not like for another day, though. It's not. And to be clear, it's not like people like fucking Thomas or Scalia are being lawyers when they rule on these decisions or judges or whatever. It's not like they're taking from their decades of studious examination of the law. They have their biases. They have their, they have their donors. They have their biases. They have their donors. There's a reason why conservative appointed judges consistently rule what conservatives want and the other way around, in fairness. Um, I just, this is a, a classic tenet of something that you all need to read up a little bit more on, which is critical race theory. A rejection of the idea that law can be imposed impartially or without bias. There will always be bias and it's in interpretation and its execution okay. here more than most i think okay so i'm gonna like yeah. connor said he wanted to respond to it and i know we're supposed to move on but you know out of respect for the fact that connor did a a, a shoot off show and he asked my permission to do it and my advice he gets to respond. I give him special permission. This Thank is a bias you. system. Okay, no, this this is bullshit. Acting like this is all wit, like words and wind, and it doesn't really matter who says what, when, where, why, or whatever. This is bullshit as well. The rules that we write down absolutely impact people's lives, and not only impact people's lives, social constructions, this is like the lefty fucking thing, is just because it's created doesn't mean that it doesn't have impact or objective resonance with some level of reality. And whether or not people pretend or try to be as objective as possible is important. So when you're saying that everybody in this situation, lecture fan, me, Pisco, IRI, yourself, we're all just biased towards our own outcomes and all that kind of bullshit, what you're saying is that we're just primitive fucking apes who should ignore every single basis of a foundational republic. And by the way, you might the be reading a little why... bit into my statement that wasn't present there. We do uh, all act well, out of bias, though, of course, especially when it comes down to interpretation. Of course we all act out of bias. But at the same time, like, you can't tell me that, like, you basically say that, like, oh, everybody is biased in a certain direction. As a result, this doesn't matter, which, by the way, I'm talking your points right back to you. I'm not Please saying it doesn't matter. OK, so then explain to me how we can make sense of the morass of biases in the situation to arrive at a relatively correct conclusion. And relatively can... correct is the is the sort of name of the game there there's no objectively correct way to interpret the constitution i think you can make arguments of probability if or I like what you have to stretch people your... alive with a potato peeler am i fo am i following the constitution or am i breaking the constitution i don't know if you're engaging with what i'm saying in good faith there okay, i mean so it, let, it, it genuinely it. I, guess, I mean if you want i guess you could contrive an example where that could be allowed but it would take some pretty big stretches yeah Okay, in in what in what scenario would I be allowed to torture human beings to death with a I don't know, and I'm not interested the... in your weird impromptu uh, example. I'd rather just talk about what we are talking about, which is okay. you know, I'm the taking 14th your Amendment. statement and I'm putting it to the extreme. There so are you, definitions. You, there are objections. Do you yeah, agree that the Constitution was deliberately written vaguely so it could be a living document that could be interpreted in new ways moving forward? depending on which clause and sentence, but there's plenty of ones that are actually very specific and that there's tens of thousands of words written on after the fact by the people who wrote those sentences on how it should be interpreted by the people coming You guys are both them. right to some extent. I mean, it's true that what Vash is saying is that there's some values inherent in the Constitution, like cruel and unusual, that are subject to change in society. And well, that's been a, but, a, a but health position of the Supreme Court. But, but, but Connor is always, but Connor, Connor is also... Connor is also correct that there are some things which uh, among reasonable people, like every term, right? Like any gender term, political, whatever you want to say, they're always subject to human interpretation. I mean, to, to Vosh's well, I, point, I guess, to some extent, but there's, there's reasonable interpretations and there's unreasonable interpretations. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't the disagree procedural, with that. The, the procedural problem. process in jurisprudence is to make sure and limit the idea of exactly from judges just right. doing whatever they want. So again, yeah, because it's not okay, one, say, wait, I don't, I don't wait, understand sorry, I what's happened to my judges. I heard the word. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, heard, I'm being misinterpreted the... here in a way that I find very confusing. Um, I have never well, said you know, it doesn't. Well, if you matter, can, well, then, then, then I want you to. 
to pray that you don't get voted out so you'll be able I, to respond I, to this undue attack on Vosh's character. A, a, a clever gambit. I, I, this is a gambit you have to make, okay? A gambit. So let's see who the judges have decided to kick. Apparently, it's only one person from each side. Oh boy. <clears throat> it's going to be Jeb. I'm very sorry. Jeb. Thrown over the top rope. And the other one is. Sorry, it's a very long name. It's hard to read. It's very difficult to process in my in my big old brain here. Uh, their name is uh, is Pisco. I'm very sorry. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No Damn, problem. I just fucking hate you, Pisco. What the fuck? Yeah. It's all good. Wait, no, that was two I, people I appreciate... on one side. I thought. I, I, I think we're on the same side with the judges. Yeah. Oh, no, they I, are I putting aside the, uh... their bias counter to what Vosh was saying. No, I'm I'm flipping back over to Vosh's side. There's clearly some bias going on here. I don't know what, what you're fuck? talking about. <laughs> just a little. I don't know what you're talking about. We just we have a very uh -huh. everybody knows the clear, transparent, happy to be system. Uh, we have oh. our judges. We have our boards. We then mm. have the investment board. Then we have the political review board. Then we have the uh, you know it's it's a whole process, but it's very it looks out for the interests of the little man. Like it's, it's a living it's like a living Pisco. process. Well, listen, no, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I I really like talking to all these people. Turk, lecture fan, these are classic political contributors. Uh, all of you guys, and and so thank you so much, Dylan, and, and others for having me on the show, and and hopefully you'll you'll do more of this, Dylan, because I think this is this is fun. Pisco, I'm really happy I had you on. Uh, immediately when I knew we were going to talk about this topic, I wanted to have you on for this topic. So I'm really happy I got to have you on. Okay, Appreciate it. Thanks See you later, so guys. You have a good one. And yep, Jeptan, you lasted one more round than I thought you would. And I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Wow. I appreciate the high expectations. Thanks. It was really fun. You should do another one off, do a two off. Um, and I just want you to know, I did quote tweet this with, I am going to win this. And you're really embarrassing me right now. So, but I mean, Hey, I wait, this happy. is like, Hey, this is close to winning. It's you are, you are in the almost uh, last group of people. Yeah. It's about the friends you made along the way. Yeah. Really. When people so, take like the, the, the shot of like the finalists, you'll be the guy in the background walking away. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'll be there. See you yeah. guys. Bye bye. Okay, we've got two more people, and then that's that. Then that's that. Then that's it's been that. a long road. It's been a long road to get to these finals. Who are the last two people? Does anyone know? Oh yeah. Who the last two people are? Is that Maddie Cakes? I see right there. I think that is Maddie Cakes. I think that is one of the last two people. And who is that um, other person? Is that a what is that other profile image? I can't see. Is that who I think it is? Is that the critically thinking veteran? CCTV. Oh, it is Welcome. one of six nice. possible CTV. participants. Dylan Burns, it is great to see you and this beautiful audience we have. I don't know why the fuck Voss showed up tonight looking like fucking Saturday Night Fever, but how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing right? great. Always good. We Much got a lecture now that you're here. Of course you are. The fucking champion is reigning. That is right? true. Last the, the, he that, was he was the hippy dippy champion. Was still is. He beat be destiny. Language. Remember? That you heard me is. Yeah. Is 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 is. Let's go. So we've been we've been having a good conversation so far, and we got we're waiting on Maddie here. Yeah, we are waiting to... on Maddie here, but we can we Always. can extend the conversation because we're gonna stop talking about the legalese now that Pisco's gone. Who cares about now? Oh, I gotta gone. clarify my point. You promised. I will let you clarify your ah. point, but let me let me pitch the next topic. The next topic is quickly. Uh, it's going to be out of all of the Republican candidates, right? Who's the best and who's the worst of the bunch of the ones that are still there and could become president if Trump just was decided to be a criminal and thrown in a, in a cell, which is a real conversation we have to have. Um, uh, but Vosh, what was your thing you wanted to clarify? Oh, just to be clear, I'm not down on proceduralism as a concept. We need it for rule of law to function. The issue is that the Constitution is so goddamn vague that oftentimes it really does seem like where a person settles on an issue will just be a byproduct of what their political bias is going into it. And I think sometimes it's important to accept that and argue the merits morally of the outcome rather than to like, because it's like, is is the president an officer? A, um, yes. B, can uh, this be done without any like... Um, 
previous uh, judicial, you know, like like without going through a criminal procedure, probably yes. But that's the only issue at hand, right? Like that, with with very few exceptions, like that's what people are talking about when it comes to whether or not this is valid. So past that, it's like, okay, what are we really talking about? Do people care about procedure this much, or are people using it as a proxy? And if they are, we probably should also talk about what people actually care about. You know, people don't really care about matters of constitutional fact in their day to day, but then all of a sudden it you know affects them in some way, and they they come out for it. We got to know why. I mean, it's obvious why in this case, but with, may I respond? Be... Quickly, well, sure. like if, ten if to five seconds, but then we have to, to move on to the next okay. topic. So, so as somebody who cares about the republic and the due process of law and the respect of the the rule of law, that's the reason why I'm appealing to going to the utmost level of proceduralism when it comes to something as important as barring somebody from the office of the president of the United States. I don't think this should be done half-assed. I don't think this should be done by a state attorney by themselves in a single state. I don't think it should be done by a single state legislature or judiciary. I think it should be done by the highest courts in our office. But that's not being pro-procedural. That's what? just you being pro yeah. delaying the vote. There could be a procedural not... answer to the state uh, Supreme Court being the final say on this. That's a know. procedural it's, It seems to me that like the entire basis of our system is innocent until proven guilty, right? So that's, that has nothing to do That has nothing that to has do with, everything to do with well, it. If you have no idea. Come, the ability blood to blood walked into the wrong that, theater. Vosh. Come on. Motherfuckers good eating point. beans. That's a good point, Vosh. Come on. Dylan. So what deal with it. How are you just going to gonna tell word. somebody that they can't be in a civil office whenever they haven't been convicted of a crime? No, okay. Well, the Constitution. Now, well since no That's one wants to respond stupid. to this great point by CDB, Call let's the move on to the next. Stupid. Let's move on to the next question, which is of the other Republican candidates. Trump is in the slammer, where Trump fell over and bumped his head, and he didn't get, and, they, and all of his men couldn't get him back together again. Whatever it is, he's no longer able to be president. Out of the ones that are left, who's the worst and who's the best? Hey, Maddie's muted. Maddie, are you muted? Discord not, muted. It's, I think they've Discord uh, muted. Um, I'm not muted. I don't have them muted. No, she no, muted I'm herself. Not oh, muted. Gotcha. There she okay. is. Sorry, there was just such a good discussion before. I, of course, didn't want to interrupt. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, there's some de I wish there were more decent um, candidates like who? that I could talk about. But who would you recommend? I, oh, God, let's not let's not label it recommend. Um, let's label it like just isn't on like the Trump train. I was going to, I would normally say like, okay, maybe Nikki Haley sort of, but then she um, played the game of like, how can I say slavery without saving, saying slavery? And it's like, well, that's a real bummer. Or are you kind of um, saying it's like a, a tarot card, right? Like if you had to choose the, the best possible tarot card to get that you'd be like, okay, I have to settle with this one. Is that a better analogy? I don't. Then, then you would want uh, the guy from no. New Jersey, Because she's right? a woman. I get it. <laughs> No, I no think it's so. because Maddie and I have actually done the tarot card thing before, Vosh. Okay, thanks well, for throwing in your two cents. You're welcome. We, we have. I, the I'm worst more is probably um, Vivek, just because he's a joke. Of two and, like, cents. You would pick Vivek out of, out of all the candidates. It's Vivek. I just don't like, no, I'd say he's a, he Vivek. probably is the one that I take the least seriously. Oh, you don't like the most. Um, yeah, because gotcha. he he's a joke and like makes no sense. Um, at least with someone like Nikki Haley or even, I can't believe I'm saying this, Chris Christie. Um, you have some sort of idea of what their platform would be and where their their stances actually are versus being just generally reactionary and trying to uh, frame yourself as Trump light because that seems to be the approach well, for a lot of He's not exactly these guys. trying to be Trump light. He's trying to be like Trump. So he he is much more trying to be pushing on his. <laughs> Uh, standards and, and his, you know, vision of things. What I don't like about Vivek is his actual standings on different types of policies and how in his previous life he hasn't been consistent with those policies. I would much more prefer someone like DeSantis, who has been put through the ringer through national media, local state politics and all that, because he's got stuff to stand on. And I think he has a better chance of actually doing the conservative Republican thing. Oh, okay, we're talking about what he has to around. stand on. Well, I, I was just going to say, if we can't have a female president, we should at least have a president who wears high heels. So, yeah, 
the yeah, same. Yeah, more that's fair. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, v, Vivek is only like in it for a book deal. I think uh, he's got no or chance of any position, kind of yeah. or or Lady yeah something. Ballers. He's he's looking for a concession. Um, there's no way like at all. Um, I think he's mainly just cribbing off attention that he's getting because uh, Donald Trump isn't present to the debate, so he can be kind of like the stand-in Trump. Uh, in terms of who could be the least harmful if they won, probably I want to say Chris Christie mostly because he'd spend most of his um, presidency arguing with the rest of the GOP uh, because his neocon tendencies would like anger the more far right mega crowd. I mean, they'd be too unproductive to do anything like actually damaging. I don't really know. The Nikki Haley slavery bit was pretty funny, though. I, I thought she was doing the more moderate bit, but I guess like you know, you, you, you can take the you can take the radical out of the GOP, but you can't take the slavery apology. They always have to throw in one for the Confederate base. So, yeah, I don't really know. I, I, and she's South I Carolina, really too. Do. I mean, she's South Carolina Republican Party. She ain't just I, any Republican Party. Don't 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 forget. It was the Democrats that actually fought for slavery. It was the Republicans and Abraham Lincoln that ended slavery. And then it was no, it was the Republicans. Wait, 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 pause, pause, question. <laughs> If if it was the Democrats who fought for slavery, that means Civil War was over slavery. Then yes, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So I'm yeah, happy. Oh, we yeah. have, I, I understand. There's consensus. multiple consensus. issues. Good. There's multiple issues that were definitely in place. Slavery was definitely one of them. The other one was from the legal point, the states' rights issue, right? So states' yeah, rights. One, one well. issue okay. at one time. You know what? States just like, just like most, <laughs> most people do throughout their day, they're multitasking of the fucking ideas. I don't know why most people think that as soon as you get on the internet, you can only singularly understand one idea, and then we're just going to paint it this one fucking way, and then like, boom, next thing you know, motherfucking lady ballers is all over Daily Wire. I don't know. Hold on. Hold what, on. lady I, ballers? I, would like to, I don't I, <laughs> Okay. I, I would like to suggest here that either. slavery, that slavery is one of six possibilities as to why there was a civil war. And as to your as to your question, uh, the best possible Republican candidate who's left, if uh, you're a hog, is Ron DeSantis, because he'll just keep spewing out all the stupid fucking culture war shit while doing absolutely nothing. And if you're a Democrat, then I would definitely say that Ron DeSantis is also your your best candidate, because if you're a Democrat, you don't have to worry about Ron DeSantis actually enacting any kind of legislation at a federal level that'll have any meaningful fucking problems with your life because everything that he's done in Florida, he's only been able to do because he uses weird ass localized hillbilly strong arm tactics with motherfucking heads of HOAs and like the chief of school boards in the middle of Suwanee. And once he got into a federal, like a federal position, he literally has nobody who's going to back his play. And he's going to be alone on an island just getting martyred for four years with everybody screaming, why aren't you Trump? I don't know. DeSantis has been doing a pretty good job can of supporting. I, can I quickly ask? The, yeah, the the Vivek, so you don't know what's move, happening. Wait, before, before we move on with Vivek, I was just curious. Does anybody in this room like Vivek? I do. I, I like some of I what like he says, but I, I just he's not consistent enough in what he actually does for me. I was supporting Vivek for a well, while there. I'm just supporting DeSantis now. The only two I don't like are Nikki Haley because she said she believes in man-made global warming. How st how stupid! You cannot you cannot be not, a presidential candidate either. in this country. You if can't you believe make in man -made global, global warming. warming. Man-made global warming is one of the biggest hoaxes of all time. The fact that anybody would say they believes in that is the dumbest thing ever. So huh. she disqualified herself. I, I apologize for lecture fan here. <laughs> It's, I mean, lecture, yeah. lecture fan is basically like the median voter, right, uh, for, for the GOP. So if anything, it's kind of like representative. We're getting like a little over, crack into the... Over, He's definitely more hey, on the Trump train. Over, over yeah. half of America doesn't believe in the, the that we're all going to die in 10 years from global warming, like Al Gore said 20 But that doesn't ago. also uh, reinforce your claim that man-made global warming isn't real. It's it's a it's a it's a complete political movement. It has been. There's no point in talking about him to anything. Started. He manufactures mm -hmm. these points live to we disagree with whoever's nuclear, right. Peepaw, it's nice getting coping late. mechanism, Vouch. Nice coping mechanism. I like I I've I I've done a fair number of these, and I think um it's it really is like he's like the ultimate Dark Souls boss, you know, where you like ram your head against wow. the wall. Um, no, it's like losing. Matrix yeah. Resurrections. Right, I just exactly. watched that fucking yesterday. Okay, we're on fucking repeat here. It's the same shit. We were talking about Trump four years ago, right? We were talking about Trump four years before that. We're going into the same shit this time, except we're, this time we're trying to move on. TV. We're trying to say Ron DeSantis is, is our best bet. 
It's like uh, it's like yeah. lady ballers. No, like it that. really <laughs> is like what needs to happen is that first we need to get four more years of Trump to get shit heading in the right direction, and then we need eight more years of fucking DeSantis to bedrock the shit in. That's what we fucking need. Amen. There's a whole bunch of dumbasses in government that don't understand legislation and and legal procedural fucking law. Right, the very simplest really bedrock of the American fucking out. value, which is innocent until proven fucking guilty. It's like the bedrock. If you ain't got proven that, then fucking... it ain't fucking America. Well, let me right? let me I... let me ask you, uh, CTV. Do you think Biden is uh, committed corruption? Man, I tell you what, no it's question. like it's like whenever you are looking at somebody that. Oh my God! You the answer know. is yes. God. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's definitely yeah, yeah right? I was going to tell you a clever okay. story, but if you want to hear the clever fucking story, we can skip all through to the next the shit, answer. right? And we don't even have to worry about a special fucking story. So, so what's right? more, I thought this what's was more, more true. true? I gotta apologize. What's... Excuse the fuck out of me for trying to entertain you sons of bitches for a few fucking minutes. Damn it! You're fucking excused. So, so what's all more right. true, Biden's corruption or man-made global warming? All right. That's the that's Biden's the real question. Cor Biden's corruption by a long shot. Definitely, definitely minute, Biden's minute, corruption. Well, I hear okay, what Biden I've been was doing for a while in, in order to do my little he, two he cents. So I'm going to do my two cents on to the manufacture topic. pro global warming. Uh, True, it propaganda. was with the natural gas company. Absolutely. So, anyways, so who is the best Republican standing? It's going to be uh, if you're a centrist, it's going to be Chris Christie. He's from the Northeast. He's kind of progressive on some issues, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that my boy autist Ron is the best <laughs> Republican out of all that's left standing. I think he needs to lean into the Homelander memes. I think he needs to have a whole bunch of Zoomers photoshopping him as Homelander, chewing his teeth in a very weird way, as if he's on stimulants. I think he needs to lean into the fact that he's autistic and just be a policy wonk. I think he needs to lean into that. So that is- But he's I not a policy wonk, really. I think we could talk about that. We could That's why he said he, lean he, into it. Well, I mean, he had, so right now he's leaning away from it. He'd have to like move towards it in any fashion. All he does is culture war shit. He yeah, like, they got, mm. they got trounced in what? the midterms. Um, Are you crazy? Ron DeSantis dominated in the midterms. He won by twenty points. No, in the, swing the, Repu state. the Republican Party got trounced in the midterms in no, large DeSantis part because did, all they had was um, culture war talking points. They did like uh, exit polls afterwards. Republican voters don't give a shit about the whole trans, non-binary, school this, that, the other. But that's all Ron DeSantis has marketed himself as in a national whoa, level. Whoa, 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 whoa! If you okay. think so, you're saying like that the Republican all the other parents Repub don't give a fuck about that agenda, you are not paying fucking uh, hey, attention. Listen, well, hey, then your get, fan get him. Mad, get mad at them. They're the one who filled out the exit poll. They're the one who showed that they don't care as much about it as other issues. That like was the economy. that was. I literally that, flipped that districts was based that was, based on that, showing like this is what your leaders actually are like running on, and people are fucking horrified. That's why we were able to flip as many districts as we all have in battleground states. Yeah, I guess okay. whining about that trans was, people doesn't actually wait, wait, appeal wait, much to the lived experience of the American. I'm going to start doing a fanatic please. thing real quick. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So that was during my intro, so I'm going to continue. And uh, basically, I disagree. I, I think that his policies during COVID made him popular uh, during uh, in Florida based off of that. I think that he can lean into that. His uh, policy of genociding the old people was very popular in the state of Florida. Also, when it comes to education, uh, prohibiting like giga progressive education and all that kind of stuff is also popular in the state of Florida, which leans purple, not blue. And then I would say that my least favorite and uh, I think probably the most incompetent would have been Vivek ramaswamy i don't i think he has a tech bro solution to public issues where he's like let's just withdraw from you know nato and let's withdraw from you know the far east and let's give taiwan to you know china that way they like us more and blah and let's just manufacture microchips at home and so he has like a very like tech bro analysis of the world but i think that would be disastrous as international policy and so as a result he is my least favorite republican i'll shut up now I will say wow. that how we can, do. Need, how how we do can need... none of you guys pronounce his fucking name for the love of God? Vivek no. Ramaswamy. The fake. For it's the love, the fake. Of... no fuck his last name. None of you can pronounce his first name. This it's is uh, America. We're Thank Republican. You. I know We're of... racist. Vivek. I know of Vivek. Sorry. It's Vivek. Vivek. It was his name. Me and I are right. 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 name. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If he wanted to be called Vivek, he should have put an A and an E in there instead of just the E. It's no, very which one of these guys are we talking about? Tell me which one we're talking about here. 
The Indian Vivek. one. Vivek. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah. It's I didn't even bother Vivek learning his either. name. I'm going to be honest. I'm a Swami. I, all right. Why don't you have a Vivek, Vivek uh, sticker in your background, man? With the right These pronunciation. Are all... These are all Democrats. I would well, not you, you put gotta, that. You got to propagate Republican the pronunciations, all... right? You got to propagate that information, man. Uh, look, I'm going to be honest. I didn't bother learning any of the rest of them because Trump's going to get reelected. That's what's going to happen, right? I want True. you to fucking wrap your mind around this fucking idea. Trump's going to be here. president. It exactly. doesn't matter what the fuck it is that any of these legislatures decide that oh, there are these fucking baby. corrupt judges are trying to do. Trump's going to be president, okay? Amen. Get your hands around it. And I don't know what the fuck it is anybody else is going to be talking about because all of this is just going to be what I'll tell you what, if they keep continuing down this course, you will actually have people pick up their fucking pitchforks and head down to buildings in a real fucking way. If they keep up this bullshit, guys, we've guys, been watching you base this direction. Now watch yourself or we'll do an years. insurrection. Bullshit. <laughs> why? Why do you what do you base this off? You guys have lost in the midterms. You lost the elections a month ago in Virginia, in Kentucky, Ohio. Everything is not on your just side. Watch I'm going to lecture on this one. Except for the recent polling that puts him Joe above Biden. Biden, Biden is going to kick ass. You guys are all going to be weeping. It's sad. Like, I don't understand, Joe man. Joe Biden cannot even function. He can't even talk. So, so, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, you see that motherfucker trying to walk upstairs? It's like, it's like it wasn't right, right. Cognitive speeches. levels are irrelevant here. Uh, Joe Biden did mean, better in the 2022 it's, it's midterm in large part because of mobilized young people, and no young people are going to mm. come out for a fucking genocide supporter. Oh he my god, gosh, no one's going to care about Gaza That is, that is a people genuinely racist. Out, that, no, people here. Really, right. people like, unironically, like, who gives a fuck if minorities die in the tens of thousands? This is reality. No. I'm not saying me. I'll still care. Wait, you think I'm saying you, American you people are not going to care over abortion, over the economy, over the southern border? Let's be honest. Let's just deal with reality. It's young got nothing people, to do with my personal opinion. Young people Whoa, care a lot. Young people are 100% going to be damned prior to it. I can't, I can't hear anything. About that. I would you like to wait, 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 Israel is going to end like tomorrow? Wanna, wait, wait. Okay. I want to have this back and forth just for a moment, and then we're going to wrap it up because it feels like we're going to another topic unless you guys want to carry this on. Um, but um, I, I want to have uh, IRI be able to clearly say his position because there was a few people talking over him. Well, I'm just saying that people have short memories and the Israel story is not going to be in the news as it is today, which is just normal. People have already, it's already started to fade from the news. I'm sure, Vosh, you're not covering it as much as like everybody is. And so let's just be honest. The reality is that this is not going to be a big issue and young people are going to care more about domestic issues just like everybody, abortion, the economy, the southern border, and these issues are going to dominate. There may be a small impact from what happened in Gaza a year earlier, but it's going to be minimal. I, I, I'm not trying to be a dick. It's not my personal opinion. It's just the reality of politics. So like, who's like, dominating? This, isn't, this isn't this isn't going well. Away. It kind of is your and, personal and, opinion, wait, wait, and that's let's, the let's, reality. Let's, 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 and I agree with it. But... For a second, I want to have Vox like, respond to this quickly. He was trying to respond earlier. News coverage will decline, sure, that happens with everything, including Ukraine, but Ukraine's still a pretty big talking point, the current, you know, political climate. The problem is, is like the average Democrat probably isn't going to remember or care that much, but two main groups will, Arabs, obviously, and also um, young people. And like young people, young people don't even need a good reason to get perpetually angry at the DNC. But now enshrined in the minds of a bunch of people who were previously energized maybe by the success of the Bernie campaign or Biden doing better on unions is the knowledge that for all the good Biden did for the brief time that he had in his first term before this happened, then he just went ahead and supported the exact same genocidal shit that we imagined Trump would have in the same position. That will hey, dampen young people's support genocide. for Biden. I, I, I got to agree. Is, you like, can't it, even it, it, contest it, it, the... I yes. just I don't think that like if you go back to the beginning of Biden's presidency, we have the, the botched pullout out of Afghanistan that kind of headed it up to begin with. We haven't really seen any like strong leader characteristics out of this guy. What we've seen is, is mm. you know, people around him giving him bad ideas, assuming he's even the one making the decision at all. I think from day fucking one, the guy's been getting handed a set of instructions and be being told what to say, and he doesn't have any real ideas of his own. If he did, then he wouldn't have been caught lying back in the fucking 80s when he ran for president then. Why so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Of he's just a piece of shit and should be in fucking office, but we're sitting here having to deal with this shit. So get ready for Trump 2024, baby. That's all we got to say. This was like white yeah. noise when you're tuning a radio Raw station. Time. Now I'm like retuning oh, back to the radio. It's great. I know, what right? I said. All right. Maybe to be clear, to yeah. be clear, I want 
Biden to win over Trump. This is not sure, like, right? a, oh, people, sure and I've advocated people vote for Biden in spite of everything. But like, holy shit, you know, way to way to kill momentum with a with a demographic. And, well, and also to kill a Biden demographic. Reschedule, that Biden's just gonna, he's going to reschedule marijuana or take steps oh, towards not. it. And that's going to distract everybody like shiny keys over here. I know people get upset when I say this, but You're, I, you the thing is, this democracy. is a conflict on the other side of the globe that we are not directly involved in. This is not Iraq 2003. No, even, this is not going to impact our, the outcome of the election in 2024. I'm sorry. Even so, in so our internal party, I don't think it's the world. I think Wait, they're it? giving the rescheduling a little bit more weight than what it's actually going to be able to pull because you're assuming that, say, conservative voters are going to give a fuck about that, and they're not. Frankly, the only one that's going to give a fuck is liberal voters. So, like, well, that, I, I, well, also, really I just more Americans swing, maybe, support but Israel's position. It's not going to be I enough. To well, CTV, that, that's kind of what I was joking when Vosh and I arrived. This entire topic was supposed to be about, like, good and bad Republican candidates, but we had progressives and liberals fighting over whether or not Biden is a viable candidate. So what I'm saying is Republicans just need to shut the fuck up and let lefties fight, and they'll fucking rip each other to shreds because it's what they're good at. Turn, and, this and isn't – well, wait. True. This isn't a lefty liberal. I agree. Liberal. Okay, you I want to throw this over just to quick. He's been that. waiting. And then, Vosh? It, uh, yeah, and that goes to what I wanted to ask IRI because, you know, I haven't tuned into the news for about past week. The three items you said of local domestic issues, the border, the economy, and contraception or abortion, abortion who's leading the polls in those three different topics? National. The Democrats. And aggregate. The Democrats. Well, the Massively. Democrats are winning in the elections. I think the polls are bullshit. No, what are these today. Polls? At, they don't if mean you anything. put Biden versus Trump versus uh, the other Republican candidate, who's winning? Well, in the Trump polls or in election? In the polls. Polls mean shit at the, this point. The polls don't mean jack shit. Uh, you guys okay. keep losing with yeah. polls. Well, you guys keep losing with the but polls. We're trying, yeah, mid, we're trying to term polling no, didn't really work out. So, so we're well trying to gauge the current sentiment of the nation, right? And you had three different topics. If you ask and your, voters, your side's not even winning in those three different their sides opinion right now. On yes, those we are. Issues, the Democrat version of those issues went out. Biden is unpopular for a number of reasons. It doesn't change the fact that the average American wants free and legal contraception, wants the right to an abortion. Um, you know, how like about if you, the border if, then? Um, well, it depends on how you phrase the question. Okay. If you ask how about somebody, the economy? If Wait, what? No, we didn't. We didn't even get to the border question. If you ask somebody like, "Do you think you had the border a really good answer, safe, sweet answer?" Then everyone. Well, you, you, you can't people, tell me to be quiet. If you ask people, yes, I, mean, I can. He definitely if can. You ask people, right? And he definitely okay, just did. If you, wait, if okay, you wait, wait, ask wait, wait. people, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Vosh. Hey, wait, 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 this is like basic methodology. We're so close to the end, so let's keep it. I was talking to IRI, Vosh. You didn't have to butt into conversation there, man. You have no right to dictate who you talk to. I'm gonna. We're gonna. And you don't have any right to interrupt me, man. Slow down. We're gonna let Turk finish. Because I want to hear, I want to hear IRI's and uh, then analysis, and then, and then we'll have Vosh go, and then we're gonna wrap it up. James, did you want to go too? I I just want to be the the person to point out that IRI saying that this will just have a minimal impact, the whole like Biden thing, and you know him like actively supporting a genocide, how it's going to have a very minimal effect. I'd like to point out that like. Donald Trump literally ran against this fucking gooey brain chuckle fuck four years ago and literally won by what, 42,000 votes? So when you turn around and say, it's not going to have a whole lot of effect, he literally yeah, we won. We ain't got COVID this time, votes. asshole. Some million, million dollars ain't going to be happening. million registered voters. James, I'm just saying every election is argument. close, James. Every election is close and always comes down to a couple of thousand here or there. So it's not a great argument. Okay, we're gonna. You throw said it. it would have very little impact. Forty-two thousand out of two hundred and eighty million yes. is very. So what little do you impact. think? Okay, first of all, I could argue like Michigan, Biden won by one hundred fifty thousand, where most of the 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 biggest Arab population is. Two hundred thousand Arabs are registered to vote. Arab Americans are registered to vote in Michigan, if I recall. So it's the, not all mostly. those people are going to vote against Biden, right? These people are not a monolith. Most of them are Americans first, and they're going to vote for domestic issues, just like all of us. So Americans it might have a small impact. Yeah, Americans well, okay, small impact. Do you care about it? First of first of all. I'm not going to debate the genocide thing. I'm just saying you should. The, the Arab American vote is not going to impact the outcome of the election in 2024. That might upset some people to hear that. And it's not saying we well, don't what care do you think? about they're not what they're saying. Come out and vote? Is that what you're saying? No, they will come I out and vote. And most of them will vote for Democrats because they know they stand for. Wait, Democratic wait, wait, wait. Policy. You think they're going to vote for I Democrats? I just, it, it just comes to. Wait, hold on really quickly. I just want to say, IRI, like, 
You know I me think well. That the culture wait, 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 that has please, women still please, wearing human, veils is probably wait, hold more on. conservative. Humans are talking. Please dial it down, okay? You're not Let the us, moderator, Bosh. Come on, um, man. Yeah, the, you're really not the moderator, the, like, Saturday when, Night Fever, when, but you know. When people criticize, De all right, you you know me well enough to know that I'm not like a crazy Twitter let, like I just say whatever, like I try to think, you know? Like when, right. when you say that, you're reminding me of stereotypes of arrogant like East Coast Democrats, the oh, we don't care what they think. We don't need their vote. Like winning, winning, winning in winning in an environment like this. Winning in an environment, winning in an environment like this. I mean, we're not exactly dealing with really expansive margins. It matters that we get every vote. And when you say stuff like, well, who cares? There aren't that many Arab Americans. It really comes across like I don't know the worst possible uh, stereotype stereotype of how a Democrat could act when they're doing something unpopular. Well, I, I, I appreciate your thoughts on it, but I'm just dealing out the reality of the situation. So if it's coming off as callous, then that's subjective and in your interpretation of it. I'm just dealing with the facts of the situation. It's not my personal thoughts. I'm not saying who gives a shit about the Arab Americans. Their vote doesn't matter. I'm just saying oh. the numbers aren't there. The math doesn't add up for this argument that, oh, well, he's going to lose because these demographics are going to take him down. That's all I'm pushing back on. Can Mostly we, can young people. Okay, so can we, well, uh, well, before you get on an election fan, Turk has been waiting very patiently, and I want to give oh, him a chance to speak. I already said my piece. I oh, okay, asked I, IRI I, for his opinions fan, on the you're three gonna, things. Then you go, and then we're going to wrap it up because it is okay, past the end time. Just, just, just real quick, the Vosh's position is preposterous because I, I think 70, 80 percent of Americans have very, very strong support for yeah. Israel. So Joe Biden actually right now is running. Take a look at the ceasefire losing, polling. Losing more votes, losing more mm -hmm. votes because he's not supporting Israel enough. He's then trying to look into what Israel ceasefire actually means. Campaign. So I think, he's just I, saying I, think stuff. I think Joe Biden. Biden is going to I think Joe Biden is actually losing votes because he's not giving Israel enough support. That's his real problem. I agree. Well, well more okay. and with that and with that agreement, we're now going to wrap it up. And now we're going to go around and this is the last round. But only one of you will be named a winner by our independent voting system of democracy that everyone loves. And so I want to go around the room and give everybody a chance to say quickly why they're better than everyone else. and Everybody else should be throwing a volcano and they should win. So we're going to start with Connor. Yeah, I'm a Burkean centrist asshole. I try to see the worst and best in everybody. I try to describe that to you as quickly as possible. I respect and love the amount of effort that it takes to go into panels because I tried to follow in Dylan's footsteps and his shoes were too big to fill. It was tough out there getting trying to fucking herd cats. So um, yeah, I, I wish that the community was more like this. I wish we could have more fights like this. Uh, so uh, please love me. And I'll love you back forever. And why should the other people not win? Because uh, they're all smug assholes. You know, I'm definitely not a smug asshole. They're <laughs> all smug assholes. They're all arrogant and narcissistic and egotistical, not me. I'm the least egotistical and the least arrogant out of all of these people. CTV, uh, current reigning WWE champion. Uh, what do you have to say about you why you should win and other people should lose? I I think that's, you know, champion privilege to go last, but I'll definitely insert a good 15 seconds if you want in between. You know what? I'll give you the champion privilege. I'll allow CTV, the good, brilliant CTV, to go last. And let's move over to IRI then. <laughs> um, what's the question? Why should I win and why should the others lose? Yes. Is that what it is? That is the good question. Well, I, I think I should win because I'm willing to tell people the truth and I believe Joe Biden can win and I've got the facts to back it up and it seems to upset people very much to hear it. Um, as far as why these guys should lose, uh, I don't know. I hate to see anybody lose, but um, I don't know. I, I like all these guys. I don't want them to lose. No. Oh, okay. James? Uh, why should I win? Because... You've historically never, ever, ever, ever put over anybody to the left of, you know, fucking Joe Biden's corpse. I mean, I know he's not dead. Wasn't yet, Vosh but, champion? You know, still have the belt. He still has a belt. <laughs> right behind me. Now, all we're oh, seeing is, now is, is Vosh on the right of I, Joe Biden. Is that what you're claiming, James? Yeah, I'm totally expecting well, for there Joe to be Biden's a belt corpse. on the way. Ah, his corpse. His so, corpse. It, it expects where it falls. Um... 
Uh, why me? I don't, I don't know. I, uh, cause everybody hates me, including all the leftists. And you would literally get to piss off every single Highlander leftist on social media because they all loathe me. Mm. Um, and that would be a win-win for everybody because all the conservatives can laugh and, uh, mm. all the leftists can cope and seethe. And this would make me incredibly fucking happy. This is a very compelling argument. I have to say. I have to say, I do like picking somebody that will piss everyone off. Lecture fan, what do you have to say? I will literally piss everyone off. Well, I, I, I was just, I was actually going to say, like, I think I should win because if you actually look at Dylan's chat, I'm clearly the one that triggered the most of those snowflakes and hurt their little snowflake feelings by spitting <laughs> truth that they've never heard before. And then finally, they're exposed to it and they see somebody that's smart and articulate spewing the truth on Dylan Burns's channel and they can't handle it and t Dylan's chat just going off the chains mad at lecture fan it's classic and why should nobody else win? why should you win over the other people well any of these leftists that 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 haven't recognized the actual racism and anti-semitism that's infected the democrat party i pray that iri will someday realize that he needs to leave the democrat party because they are so racist and anti-semitic it's a disgusting party they're a history of slavery and 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 civil rights violations and so that's why all these nope. leftists should lose you Matt, won me over bro Matt, <laughs> maddie what do you have to say well I mean, considering, Dylan, that you had said that you really like options that piss people off, what pisses off people more than when a woman wins? So I'm just saying, like, by your own definition of what you are looking for, there's really only one clear winner. And you're looking at her. So yeah, piss people off uh let let women win just this one time just this one time then we can go back to normal <laughs> just this one time it makes up for everything yeah everything. oh big time okay. absolutely so, yeah no we had a yeah, meeting good to and know. We, we good decided. to know okay yeah. good, good to know this turk yeah so i like to replicate what uh, connor said we need more conversations like these i think having actual conversation and not just the blood sports is a good thing because kind of like what lecture said uh we need to have actually exposure to other types of opinions on all people's platforms and i think that's a good thing i hope that i've been a logical human being and i've actually not been uh, a deranged republican like many of your viewers would think and that, you know, including me in Republican conversations would be a good thing for the community. So why these other people shouldn't win, you know, maybe because, you know, that chest hair is weak, dude. You need to grow some better chest hair. <laughs> and Mr. Chest Hair. Uh, just this once, uh, I think that a man should win. Uh, <laughs> my, my fellow gamers, uh, they, they tell you about male privilege. Do you feel it? When the Stacy does not say hi to you, I, I ask you, support me. And, and, and finally, <laughs> let the guys have something for once. Um, and uh, other people should lose. Um, uh, they won't lose. It's a false dichotomy. Uh, a man winning f will make everyone win. Uh, finally, a man in charge. That's my slogan. Finally. Hmm. Hmm. A man in charge. Now that's unusual. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna throw it to the judges now, and we're, and we're gonna make whoa, a decision. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, oh, you did promise him the last. I did Champion promise. Champion goes last. That is true. Hold the fucking hold the fucking phone. Judges, hold your judgment. You have heavy words to hear. What do you have to All say? All right, so let's go. Let, let's go back through the list here. Vosh over here apologizing and then trying to claim gamer status as if he knows what fucking gamers are like. Gamers are fucking hardcore, son. You want to come at gamers? Let's fucking go. Don't give me some apologetic fucking bullshit if you're trying to represent gamers. First fucking off, right? Turk, great sentiment, bro. But you know what? I, I love you. Gotta bring that fucking energy. Maddie, great sentiment. You wanna talk about last time women won? Isn't there a fucking woman vice president? Give me a fucking break. We're progressing through society. You don't deserve shit just because you're a fucking woman, right? So that's just how that fucking cookie crumbles. Lecture fan, great fucking arguments. You're exactly right. Very articulate, but I gotta be honest with you, brother. Right? Even you yourself got caught up in the CTV charisma tonight. I and did. you know I it's did. true. You know I it's did. true, James. James, 
You did as well. I saw you nodding your head. You're like, you know what? If there's a motherfucker in this room that's carrying the conversation along, it's CTV. IRI. Nothing but love for you ever, man. Regardless of whatever the past shit was, I really don't give a fuck. Right? So great to have you here. And counterpoints, you know, brother, right here, living in the same area, seeing the same politics, understand the country the same way. That's just kind of how it is. But again, energy level, charisma. And that's exactly why CTV, the reigning hippie dippy champion, motherfucking brought it to end the show up tonight because we all know that bringing the energy at the end of the show is always the hardest fucking spot to fill. And that's exactly why CTV needs to win this hippy dippy rumble. Hmm. You know. I do gotta ask you something, CTV. What's that, buddy? You know, Vosh technically never lost the title in a match. Mm. Yeah, ever think I about can't help it. If you did, if you didn't count the one between him and Destiny as a match, then that only I think uh, speaks to the quality of the characters interacting in that moment. If you didn't call that a match. So if you're actually saying that Vosh never won a real one, that the no, one what, that what was no, lost, no, no, you don't understand, CT. But what I'm saying is, when he lost, ahead. he lost it because he just he he was too lazy because he's a socialist and didn't want to do the matches because of his terrible libtard values. And yeah, that happens. What, where you're a workhorse. If I give you a match tonight, you you do it and you and you tap him out. And so what I'm saying I mean, that's is, kind of what how we do. can you really say you're undisputed, though, when Vosh never lost? I didn't say I was undisputed. I said I was okay. reigning. So you would say you are disputed? Oh, I would say that everybody on the left would definitely have their fucking heyday going, Oh, CTV does not so But they didn't put in the fucking work, did they? And that's exactly why they're not reigning. Hello? That's just how it is. Vosh, what do you think about this dilemma? I, I think that... Dilemma? I think... I think that his legal personhood is of dubious status, and I think that every second I spend talking to him is an insult to me and my entire lineage. Um, that being said, I respect Damn, you and what words. you do. So well, it willing, definitely goes all the way back to the 70s and John Travolta. I'm, I'm willing to debase myself uh, in, in, in the way you're implying, uh, wow. for your sake. My goodness. You hear, you, you hear what he's saying, CTV. I, I see what I what I hear saying, right, is that if there's going to be an attempt on any type of challenge, then both challengers need to possess said same belt so that there's not any type of dispute as to whether or not both are recognized as the same. Yeah. That's what I see. Well, mm. Why don't you show us your belt, CTV? Oh, I don't have one. Isn't that a fucking oh. deal? It's been over a fucking mm. year. And Dylan hasn't fucking done his work. Ooh, Amazing. That's curious. Well, look. All, all I'm gonna say is that you say possession is half of hippy dippy championship, you know. Oh my goodness! Uh, it's like ninety percent. Oh my goodness! Ninety like percent. My goodness, that is a complication, a legal it's complication. Like you still have the process. It's, it's, it's have really the only a complication when no, it comes to the level of work that someone was putting in before they headed over to Ukraine and and no, started exploring yo, yo, more yo, personal Travolta's ventures. Got the strap, dog. Travolta's got the strap. Look at that! Wow. Is that thing oh, pretty? Ooh. That thing is pretty. There we go. Uh, yeah, it debate, is real pretty. Con. This needs to happen at debate. You know con, what? Man. If we, when we do hippie, if we, if we ever relaunch hippie dippy championship, you will Life. get the belt, and you will In be person. the first champion. Okay, when we start In the matches person. again. Anyway, well made. Real. Who were you talking to? I was talking to you. But moving on. Just, just so we're making sure it's on the record, because mm -hmm. that could have been left open right later down the road. I know how motherfuckers like to edit shit. That was right? on the record, so, okay? So, okay. So see, we're, we're watching CGI right now. Moving on, and that is a beautiful belt. Uh, moving on. I don't know. It looks we're second gonna... rate, considering it's the first edition, if I'm being honest. Well, isn't that making it more valuable? No, it actually makes it less valuable, because look at who's it actually on. Would you say a first edition? Right? I mean, you say I mean the guy did, or... you're saying that the guy didn't like even a, properly like a, defend a, it. A There's first, no respect a first, there. Yeah, but then that makes it even more special. It's like a defective first edition. That's no, like two, it makes it less like special like because a, it was a worse imagine defending. A, a defective Duh. first edition Superman comic? Oh, my God. How valuable would that be? Moving on, the judges have come in with their decision, and I have to say that the decision surprised me. You know, the, the, I, you know sometimes I get lost in the bureaucracy mess here of the hippie dippy judging pool of of 100 to 10,000 judges that uh, review these types of debates and decide who wins and loses but what I didn't expect was this victor 
the victor is lecture fan the lawyer from montana oh uh, baby the legal giant. out outdone well yet again well deserved well, well deserved. deserved well deserved well deserved global warming doesn't exist for, uh, for, for, warming doesn't exist. For, for esteemed accomplishments in knowing the 13th amendment yes. uh lecture fan i i concede to you mm -hmm. thank you brilliant Brilliant. Uh, lecture fan. Really had to never, pick a uh, the just panel. so we're clear, that was never actually a question, Vosh. Okay? Never actually a question. Oh so God. so lecture fan, as as Victor tonight, do you have any any words you want to say? I would I would just like to thank my wife. I would like to thank my family, my mom and my dad. Uh thanks for raising me and, and teaching me the truth. Uh, and, and that's all I've got to say. Amen. 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 Roll on, man. Roll on. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in and being a part of today's Hippy Dippy Rumble Anniversary Edition. Uh, it was really cool to have all these people on that, you know, I haven't seen in a very long time. I've been over in Ukraine getting shot at a little bit, and it was really nice to do this. It felt like uh, it felt like uh, taking a, a chalice and, and dipping it into the pool of my youth, you know, going back a little bit. It was, it was fantastic. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'll think about doing this again in the future um i i'm really happy with how it went today i think it went, it went pretty well thank you so much for coming a lot on. Of fun. did you oh did dylan, you know one the, more thing one yeah, more thing dylan oh, dylan yeah love you bro love you too okay it's okay. got ukraine colors All right. thanks dylan <laughs> oh it does have ukraine colors bye-bye everybody bye-bye